Standing tall and evergreen in the middle of the gateway to the north is our valiant mother who cradled freedom fighters such as Andres Malo and Juan de la Cruz Palariz. These local heroes won the battle against the Spaniards in the Nalatongan back in 1760. Known for her fertile lands, she flourishes in the bamboo craft industry and mango agriculture. Thus, making her the mango bamboo capital of the Philippines. A jack of all trades, she also excels in livestock, crop production, inland fishing, pottery, food processing, tourism, and commerce. Rich in history and architecture, she plants historical landmarks such as the 400-year-old St. Dominic Church and the speaker Eugenia Perez, decade for the cash of food. She has fallen many times, burned down but never broken, just bent by the ferocious winds of change. But just like the bamboo she is known for, she remains resolute and strong, tall and proud. She is San Carlos City, stalwart and true evermore. And to reflect in retrospect on the recent world changer that is the COVID-19 pandemic, San Carlos City has no doubt taken the heavy brunt of its complications. From the health sector to the socioeconomic aspect to the education front, San Carlos City may have suffered blows, but she proves to be resilient nonetheless. And now that the opening of school year 2020 to 2021 is looming and is about to begin, the education sector is now taking the lead in dealing with the pandemic. That is why, amidst the country's ongoing battle with COVID-19, the San Carlos City Division Office continues its service in the education front, fully equipped with educational resources and manpower, ready to serve the San Carlinians through various learning modalities. Face-to-face -face classes are no longer the main mode of transmitting knowledge. With this, the school's division office of San Carlos sees to it the different possibilities and strategies when it comes to the delivery of learning. Because the school's division office of San Carlos places high premium on the health and safety of the San Carlinian learners. Together with the San Carlos City, together with all of the officials of our education sector, we plan and we prepare. We are already uh, preparing for the purchase of uh, of machines for the use of module uh, for the printing of modular items to be used by our students, and we are also preparing for the procurement of all of the radio transmitters to be required by the end. With that, po, ang San Carlos City local government is in full support. City rises up with the steadfast advocacy to meet the expectations of the challenge posited by Dr. Leonor Magdolis Briones. Armed with the information gathered through a massive survey of the populace and with the resolute guidance of the new school's division superintendent, Dr. Lourdes Di Servito, school's division office of San Carlos City launches the model part of the module. Because we're combining modular and e-learning. The model stands for modular and electric.
Teachers will make a follow-up on students' progress of learning. They use a communication channel such as text, call, and the like. In case the learners need further supervision, the teacher will go to their house and guide them in answering the modules. Teachers may do home visitation in extreme cases when the learners need the presence of teacher's class supervision and guidance in understanding the lesson and answering the modules. Number six, parents will return the answered activity or answer sheets to the school for checking. Thus, parents shall follow the scheduled date. Number seven, if the learner met the desired learning competencies, the teacher will give comments or suggestions for enhancement through text, call, and other modes of communication. Number eight, if the learner did not meet the desired competencies, the teacher will give remediation and enrichment activities to the learners. Number nine, after successfully studying and accomplishing the activities in the modules, the parents will be given the next set of modules and the process shall be repeated. For electronic or online distance learning, number one, teachers will serve as online learning facilitators who will be simulating an actual teaching scenario using cell phone, laptop, and desktop with the aid of internet. Number two, the teacher will create a group chat including his or her students for them to have a means of communication. Number three, the teacher will orient the learners whether synchronous or asynchronous learning will be used. Send your name and write notes up to the note of sending back. You can raise your hand if you want to help. And I will recognize you. Okay? Number four, for synchronous learning, both teachers and learners will be guided by the usual teaching and class program. The teacher will pass a link to using the chosen platform. Number six, if the learner met the expected learning competencies, the teacher can now give further instructions for the next lessons. Number seven, if the learner did not meet the desired learning competencies, the teacher will give the learner the needed remediation or enrichment activities through the learning management system to keep private conversation regarding the lesson. Number eight, of the teachers and the learners which can be used anytime. It is where the teaching and learning materials can be uploaded. Number 11. In a synchronous learning, the learners will be given a chance to cope out with the lessons or activities they missed during the synchronous learning based on their schedule. Number 12. After doing all the required online lessons and activities, the teachers and learners will proceed to the next set of lesson and activity and will follow the same process on the online learning. This program ensures that no San Carolinian learner will be left behind. At the end of the day, the only question remains, what drives the school's division office of San Carlos City to push forward? It is our commitment that drives us. It is our passion for work that moves us. And, with the careful and meticulous guidance of our school's division superintendent, Dr. Laura, it is our synergistic belief that work is a gift and that learning is a blessing that moves us to weather this pandemic and situate that education is best served to the thousandfold learners of San Carlos City. The learning modalities that we will use are not really one size fits all. To equip our learners with the most essential learning competencies, 
our teachers will need to use mixed modalities. We are so thankful for the support of our local government unit. Our LGU has already allocated an amount of 4.5 million for the reproduction of our modules. We already have coordinated with the parents and other stakeholders with regards to the modalities that we will use in teaching. I hope that our learners and teachers will enjoy their journey to the new learning modality, the model modality, unique for San Carlos City Division. Happy teaching and enjoy learning. Like a bamboo, we push forward because we do it out of love. The genuine love for a learner. For as long as there is a child willing to learn and willing to have a better life, the school's division office of San Carlos City will continue to grow and stand strong. Sulong Edukalidad. We rise as one. Para sa bata, para sa bayan. August 5, 2020, a remarkable day to recognize and celebrate a new way of learning in a new normal way. We conquer, we grow, we develop, we nurture, and we support in the name of genuine service. Para sa bata, para sa bayan. This is the tryout of Project Modal. The model stands for modular and electronic learning. With this flexible and inclusive learning modality, each child is assured of modules to use in all learning areas, combined with digitized instructional materials that can be accessed online or offline using any electronic device the child has. It is a convenient and seemingly personalized modality that suits the needs of all learners. Out of 94 schools, both elementary and secondary, Three schools were chosen to do the pilot testing.
now, the division of St. Carlos City, spearheaded by our very own school's division superintendent, Dr. Lorde Servito, with the assistant school's division. Gloria, we'd like to acknowledge and recognize the men and women behind the success of Project Mono. They are the backbone of every. Sir Bernard Rosario, Sir Alfie Bugayong, Sir Morrison Aquino, and Ma'am Raquel Garcia. With Head Teacher 3, Sir Eddie Cabantan, Assistant School Principal 2, Dr. Lyndon Garcia, and School Principal 4, Dr. Marites Cabantan. Turak National High School, Pilot Teachers, Ma'am Annalyn Tulagan, Master Teacher 2, Sir Lester Season, Teacher 1, Support Staff, Sir Ray Aldicoa, Ma'am Janeline Balachay, Sir Ryan James Cancino, Ma'am Arlene De Leon, Sir never stop doing our share because we are all teachers less for ourselves
Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is well. A friendly reminder to everyone. May, you may turn on the camera, but set to mute the microphone all throughout the webinar unless otherwise. Any clarifications and inquiries may be raised through message on the chat box or through audio. For the meantime, that would be our friendly reminders. Again, see you later. Hello, welcome back. A blessed and more merriest morning to everyone. To our superintendent, Mom Lourdes D. Servito. To our assistant superintendent, Mr. Josdado I. Kayabyab. To our CID chief, Mom Edith R. Pridas. To our SGOD chief, Mr. William R. Q. Gloria. To our administrative officer, Mr. Nelson B. Peralta. To all our PSDSS, EPSS. To all school heads, assistant school heads, head teachers, and to our dear teachers, and to everyone who are with us on this webinar, again, a blessed morning, and we wish everyone is safe, relaxed, and by this time, we are prepared to embrace the new normal. We are fortunate amidst this public health situation brought by COVID-19. Our sleeping talents was awakened. We became more resourceful, creative, and innovative as well. As family of educators, we are determined to deliver quality education accessible by our dear learners while taking into consideration the safety of everyone. We are gathered in this webinar or in this live uh, activity for us to efficiently implement the distance learning delivery mode and to provide support for our continuous education. As we always hear, Education can and must continue. And to formally start our activity, and I hope everyone is at their comfortable position, may I call our education program supervisor in science, Ma'am Jesusa Makam, to lead the prayer. Let us close our eyes and invoke the presence of Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty and loving Father, creator of heaven and earth, we adore you, we glorify you and praise you. You are the King of kings. We humbly ask your forgiveness for our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord. May we ask for your blessing and divine providence that the activities set for this division webinar be successful and effective. Send us your Holy Spirit to be our guide and give us the wisdom to understand every topic that we are going to discuss. Enlighten our minds and let your love be upon us. May this webinar training bring success, unity, and growth to all of us. We thank you, Father, for this precious time that you have given us. All this we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you, Mom Jesusa, for the fervent prayer. To give us a warm but merry as welcome, may we request our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Mr. Josado Aikayabel. Sir? Hey, uh, good morning to Hello, all sir. To our Schools Division Superintendent, Madam Lourdes uh, Di Servico, uh, the two chiefs, Sir Villamor Quinto for the SDOD, and uh, Madam Edita Pridas for the CID. The different uh, education program supervisors, public school district supervisors, school heads, head teachers, ideal teachers, and all division personnel involved in this uh, webinar. Pleasant morning to everyone. Aloha. Okay. Welcome to this uh, division webinar on uh, the different strategies in the implementation of the different learning uh, modalities. You know, my dear friends, there are lots of emerging uh, learning strategies nowadays, or what we call the learning management systems, platforms, I should say, that can be used by our teachers in the implementation of uh, distance learning. Uh, to mention some, first, you're already very familiar about some of these uh, learning management systems. So we can mention uh, Google uh, Classroom. We have uh, the model. Hindi yung model natin na model. The model, it's, it's an application software. Okay? can be used by our teachers. And recently, I have discovered uh, one, uh, yung tinatawag nating uh, canvas. Uh, I found this very flexible and very useful, which can be used both by our learners and our uh, students, and uh, our teachers, in the implementation of uh, distance learning. So you can try it, uh, siguro you can research it in the net. Uh, nakita ko siya sa kwan, sa, ano ito? Uh, yes, sa net, okay? Particularly in, uh, anong kwan na yun? Mm, Facebook yata, or yeah. Uh, basta you can just search in the net. Hello, okay? So, I know that our teachers have already exposed to different uh, uh, strategies before there are a series of webinars, division webinars that we have already conducted uh, as regards the different strategies, uh, learning uh, management systems presented to them. And I know that our teachers are very good and they are very resourceful. Also our school heads, they are resourceful in looking into the different uh, strategies, learning management systems that they can use in uh, their classroom in the implementation of uh, distance learning. So I salute our teachers for their initiative. Okay, so napakagaling. Alam ko napakagaling ang mga teachers na natin. So yeah, saludo po ako sa inyo mga teachers. Okay. So, pagpatuloy nyo ang ganyang uh, inisyatibo para sa ganun ay lalo nating uh, may deliver kung ano man ang dapat nating may deliver na quality education para sa ating mga mag-aaral. So, itong webinar natin ngayon, uh, this is still uh, very useful and needed and timely because this will uh, further enhance your uh, skills, your competencies in uh, the delivery of uh, lessons, the topics through distance learning. Okay. So, napaka-importante po ito ngayong umaga, itong webinar workshop natin, o webinar natin, 
because this will help you. This, this will help you a lot. Okay? And for this day, okay, you will be uh, walk through the different uh, learning strategies. Okay? So, so, to mention some, na natin yung programa, uh, na yung uh, assessment strategies. Uh, isa yan sa napaka-importante ngayon. Okay? Paano ba natin i-assess yung mga estudyante natin on the on on online learning? Okay? Unlike in the face-to-face, -face, napakadali ang assessment. Okay? Pero ngayon, it's a challenge for all of us. So, you will be, okay, walk through, you will be given uh, some techniques on how we'll do the assessment of our uh, learners. Okay? Assessment, assessing their uh, learning. Okay? And also, okay, I've seen the program, uh, you will also be uh, walk through on how to do, how to uh, make an individual learning plan. And the home learning, uh, individual learning plan, yes, weekly home learning and individual learning plans. And a lot more. Napakarami po ang mga topics na na store for us this morning. So, yeah. So, I expect that everyone should focus and listen to all our speakers for this morning so that you can gain confidence in... Uh, facing or opening the new school year, school year 2020-2021. So, I hope, once again, I hope that you will make the most of it, okay? So, you listen to our speakers, okay? Ang daming inputs na makukuha nyo sa kanila, okay? So, at this juncture, I would like to commend and recognize the program proponent of this uh, webinar course headed by uh, the CID chief, Dr. Edeta Pridas, and all the, together with all the APSS and PSDSS. Okay? And I would like to recognize also the support of our technical uh, directors. Of course, we have here uh, Sir Roldan Eden, uh, Sir Dexter De Guzman, Jerry Tagulao, Really more Trinidad. Okay. Thank you very much for your technical support to this webinar. And also to our moderator, Madam Gail Galban. Okay. Napagaling na moderator si Madam Gail. So thank you, Madam Gail. And to all of you, my, my dear teachers, school heads, department heads. A pleasant morning once again, and welcome to this division webinar on uh, the implementation of the different uh, strategies that can be used in the distance learning. Maraming salamat po. All right, thank you so much to our ASDS Jusdado for the warm welcome, recognition, and giving us a gist on what's in store for us in this webinar. Again, sir, thank you so much, Paul. All right, to proceed our and to present our participants and introduce our learning facilitators for this activity. May we request our Senior Education Program Specialist in HRD, Ma'am Evelyn Morillo. Hello, Ma'am Evelyn. Hello. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Merry Christmas. Sana ako yung unang babati ulit sa inyo ng Merry Christmas. Today, uh, our webinar for today is the vision webinar on the suggested strategies in the implementation of distance learning delivery modes. Sana po, naka-online na po lahat dyan. Please lang po. Okay. To our beloved superintendent, Madam Lourdes D. Servito. Good morning po, ma'am. Our assistant superintendent, Sir Just Dado Kayabia. Good morning, sir. 
and to our chiefs, Sir William or Gloria, GOD, Ma'am Edith Prida, CID Chief. Good morning po sa ating lahat, mga DepEd family, lahat po from, from school, from kung saan man kayo dyan. Good morning, San Carlos City, DepEd. For our learning facilitators for today, headed by our beloved Dr. Edita R. Pridas. Then the EPS, Dr. Lilibet Imagtang, Dr. Vivian Ofanda, Dr. Elizabeth Vistro, Dr. Arlene Casipit, Dr. Minerva Munoz, and Dr. Alan S. Macarad. Sila po yung mga learning facilitator natin. Ang participants for today, lahat po ng DepEd teaching related and teaching personnel. From elementary and secondary teachers, together with us and speed teachers, elementary and secondary principals, head teachers, maski na department heads, kasama din po dito, high school, second and elementary po ito. The PSD is po public school district supervisors, kasama din po. At sa mga EPS na hindi facilitators, kasama din po sila. Lahat po tayo sa DepEd ay kasama dito sa webinar na ito. Good morning again and blessed, blessed morning po ulit. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Alright, thank you Ma'am Evelyn for the acknowledgement and introduction of our learning facilitators and of course for greeting us a merriest Christmas. And to give us the merriest aloha and inspirational message. Ah, okay. Thank you for that info, sir. So I guess we have a minute of commercial break. So what's in store for us for today? May I read to you the program for our training proper uh, to discuss the guidelines and considerations in distance learning delivery modalities. Uh, it would be our, our dearest Dr. Edita R. Pridas, our CID chief. Uh, our MELPs and preparing teachers and head teachers for the multiple LDM. It will be discussed by our Dr. Lilibet A. Magpang uh, to discuss strategies, assessments in K-12 and adaptation for learners and disabilities. Uh, it would be Dr. Vivian B. Panda, our EPS in Filipino. Uh, updates and concerns for our ALS curriculum, it will also be discussed by Dr. Elizabeth P. Vistro, our EPS in Kinder and ALS, uh, to, to discuss learning resources for the LDM. Uh, it would be Dr. Arlene B. Casipit, our EPS on LRMS. And of course, uh, for to discuss our weekly home learning and individual learning plans, uh, it would be Dr. Minerva A. Munoz, our EPS and ESP and SPED, and Dr. Alan S. Makareg, sorry, um, our EPS in Araling Panlipunan. So that would be our program proper or training proper. For our house rules again, uh, may I you may also uh, may I remind everyone you may turn on your video, but you have to at least mute your microphone. Okay, and if in case there are quali uh, clarifications, inquiries, concerns, or you, you would just like to greet us also a merriest Christmas, uh, you may uh, send it through our chat box, uh, put it into message, and maybe later I could read on it uh, to recognize everyone. Okay, are we ready, sir? Shall we proceed? Again, we are live on FB, Deped Tayo SCCP, and YouTube SDO SCCP TV. So, sana po, uh, marami na po tayong uh, mga nanunood. Marami na po tayo at present. 
currently we are 750 and more. Sana po, madagdagan ng 750 live. Tama po. There is a shout out. Any shout out po sa inyo so I can read? Okay, from um, Josephine Rufo. Good morning po. Watching from Central 2 Elementary School. Okay, Central 2, good morning. How are you? From Sir Franz Adrian Doria Lopez uh, from Malacanang National High School. Hello, sir. I hope everyone is safe. From Mom Gilrom Lopez Peralta. Good morning. Watching from Bulingit ES. Hello po sa mga Bulingit Jan. Kumusta po? From Mom Janice Abon. Good morning po. Watching from Central 1 Elementary School. Hello po sa mga Central 1 Elementary School. From Sapphire Peralta. Good morning. Watching from Bulingit ES din po. Headed by Ma'am Emilita G. Peralta. Yes, good morning Ma'am Emilita. Sana po magkakasama po tayo lahat dyan. From, from, from Sir Francisco Balbiran. Thank you so much to our beloved ASDS Jezado Kayabeb. Mabuhay po kayo. Yes, kayo rin po, Sir. Mabuhay po tayo. Mabuhay din po kayo lahat. Another po from Ma'am Margie Acosta, morning po, watching from Kuliling Elementary School, District 2B. Good morning po, mga taga Kuliling Elementary School. Another from Miss Jen Ambito Benitez, good morning po, from Tarese Integrated School. Taga Tarese po ako, hello po sa aking mga kabarangay dyan. Kumusta po kayo? Another po from Ma'am Jessie, the twin Lambinia. Good morning po. Watching from Lilimasan ES. Yes, thank you so much um, sa Lilimasan ES. Uh, Siyempre, dadaanan niyo muna kami bago mapunta ng Lilimasan. Tama? Okay. Another one from um, Jonalyn Fernandez Samera. Good morning po, School Division of San Carlos City. Watching from the Young NHS. Good morning po, the Young NHS. Kumusta rin po kayo dyan? Another from Ma'am Jeanette Bataan de la Cruz. Good morning po from Agdao Integrated School. Wow, Agdao, kumusta po? Sir Jerry, kumusta po kayo dyan? Another shout out, sino po po? Ma'am Marichu Angeles, good morning po. Watching from again, Koliling Elementary School, District 2B. Kumusta po kayo dyan? Another po, another shout out. Sige, is ilagay niyo lang po lahat ng mga shout out niyo. Good morning everyone. Watching from Malacañang, another from Malacañang National High School. Good morning po again. Another po from Alma the Twin Dulay. Good morning po from DVGF. Don Vicente Ferrer, if I am correct, tama po, elementary school. Mar maraming maraming salamat din po. To our, uh, another shout out from um, Harry Elizabeth Tamundong. Magan, uh, gandang umaga. Watching from, wow, Mabalbalino NHS. Thank you so much. Kahit na malayo po. Maraming maraming salamat po. At tayo nanunod dyan. Good morning to, good morning din po from Panguluan ES family. From Mamondades Ira Pinla. Good morning po. Wow, mukhang marami tayong shout out. Gising na gising ang San Carlos City Division Office. Okay, from um, Joy Claire Season, watching from Balitisur ES. Good morning po sa lahat. Thank, good morning po sa mga barangay Balitisur ES. Good morning. Another shout out po from Ma'am Marilu Rosario de Guzman. Good morning po, watching from Palaming ES. Okay, good morning mga pa sa mga Palaming. Mukhang lahat na po ata on live. Grabe. To our, uh, another shout out po from Mr. Bartolome Irespe. Sana po, tama po yung pagkabanggit ko. Good morning, watching from Parayao ES. Thank you po. Another shout out from uh, Madeline de Guzman. Good morning po. Watching from Turak SCC, Turak ES. Good morning po. 
Good morning din po kay Sir Sir, Sir Samuel, ang ating magiting na school head. Uh, from another shout out from Mom Lourdes Bautista. Good morning to all watching from Wow sa another malayong school po ito sa Linap Elementary School. Uh, I remember sino nga po ulit si Sir Naku, sorry sir, pero kilalang kilala kita sa mukha. Anyway, uh, sorry po, hindi ko mabanggit yung pangalan niya. Anyway, another shout out po from um, Susan Paningbatan Rasco. Wow, kilala ko to si ma'am. Uh, good morning po, watching from Bulusan Kaingal. Yes, thank you po. Barangay Bulusan Kaingal ES. Thank you po. From Ma'am Rachel Ilalo Baniket de Guzman. Good morning po, watching from Tandok ES. Kalapit ano lang po ito ng SDO, Tandok ES. Good morning po. Another shout out po. Ito po, sabi niya pa kay Ma'am Virginia Aquino. Pa shout out po, Ma'am. Ay syempre, isa shout out ko po to Ma'am. Watching from Miss Tiso Norte. Yes, syempre. Kay Sir Rolando, thank you so much po sa inyo. Again, from another from Sir Elmo R. Quiros Jr. Pa shout out naman po yung mga teacher sa Don Vicente Ferrer ES. Yes, sir. Lalo na po kay Sir Namin ng Masipag at Guapo. Okay, thank you sir. Masipag at Guapo daw po. Another shout out from Ma'am Marian Clauna Samera. Uh, watching from Siliu. Siliu po ba? Tama po ba? Ng Gulo. Gulo Integrated School, District 4A. Good morning. Malayong school din po to. Maraming maraming salamat din po. Uh, another from Ma'am Aimee Janine. Giza, pa shout out po sa mga birthday ko po ngayon. Wow, happy birthday po sa inyo, ma'am. Thank you po. I-celebrate na po natin to virtually. Ma'am Christina Nisperos of AIS and Sir Bernardo Rosario of Sepnas. So maraming maraming and a happy 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 birthday po sa inyo. From SDO, we give you our love po. From Sir Severino Manuel Puki, hello sir. Thank you po sa shout out. Ang sabi po niya, good morning po from Turak National Family. Nice hair po ma'am. Wow. Thank you so much Sir Severino. Merry Christmas din po sa inyong lahat. Thank you po. Thank you po. Okay, mukhang ready, ready na po tayo. Again, siguro mamaya for our break, I will read all your shout out para po ma-acknowledge po tayo. Okay? Moving forward with our activity, to give us the merriest aloha and inspirational message, may we request our dear superintendent, Ma'am Lourdes D. Servito. Good morning, ma'am. Am I in now? Hello, ma'am. You may take aloha. Nice. <laughs> Wow, my flower I say with love and gratitude to all of you. I wish to meet everyone personally, but uh, well, this is our situation. So I'm so glad to be with you today. But I'm fresh from the garden. <laughs> but that is right, you know, so... I always have to do my morning exercise, uh, cleaning, cleaning the garden, of course, uh, uh, planting. I always plant something every day, you know, every morning. So it's really a good morning, a blessed morning, an aloha morning for me, and I hope it does also for everyone. So that helps, that really helps me feel fresh and, uh, you know, that give me some, that, you know, that, that morning activity, which I always do, really gives me the strength, the stamina, and the energy to work uh, day by day. So, good morning once again, and uh, aloha everyone. I really wish to see everyone personally, face-to-face, um, -face, but right now it's not possible. So... Let's just be contented uh, having an interaction online or through this webinar. So I would like to congratulate our division officials 
of course, uh, together with our assistant school division superintendent, the Moy Gopito, Dr. Justado Kayabiab, who uh, has initially uh, given his welcome remarks to all of you. Uh, I think that there are around 1,000 K participating participating in this webinar. We, it is almost one five already. So I hope everyone is listening. <laughs> you have registered, but hopefully you are giving your full attention. So after acknowledging our ASDS, let me also acknowledge our division chiefs <clears throat> who have, have initiated this division webinar on the suggested strategies in the implementation of distance learning delivery modes. Of course, we have our memorandum from the regional office regarding this matter, but this activity in the division level was organized uh, under the baton of uh, the chief of uh, the CID, the Curriculum Implementation Division, led by Dr. Editha Predas. And of course, um, I would also make mention of our chief of the School Governance and Operations Division, uh, Chief Amor, or William Moore Gloria, and uh, our administrative officer, uh, Sir Nelson Peralta and all other division personnel uh, who have helped in organizing this division webinar. Of course, we have our local talents who will be giving you the lectures related to this training in order to capacitate all our school officials, of course, our school heads and principals, the teachers. And this is all about the designing and execution of non face-to-face -face learning delivery options. So once again, we remind everyone that uh, in the upcoming opening of classes for school year 2020-2021, no face-to-face -face session is still allowed. So we are moving heaven and earth to really come up with uh, learning modalities, strategies, and approaches in order to engage our learners uh, through distance uh, delivery, uh, distance learning delivery modes or modalities. So I'd like to congratulate our resource persons and speakers for this webinar, again led by Dr. Editha Pridas and also our Education Program Supervisor in Charge of English and MTV, Dr. Lilibeth Amantang and our EPS in Filipino, Dr. Vivian Ofanda, our EPS in charge of Kinder and Owls, Dr. Elizabeth Vistro, our EPS also in charge of Learning Resources Management, Dr. Arlene Bika Sipit, and the EPS in charge of ESP and SPED, Dr. Minerva Munoz, and of course, the Education Program Supervisor in charge of Alpan or Arabin Pandipuna, Dr. Alan S. Maharag. So actually, we have an overdose of doctors in the Schools Division office of San Carlos City. And that would really mean that we have a powerhouse of talents. We have very talented uh, school officials, as well as division personnel, as well as, of course, division officials. So uh, not to be outdone, I know that uh, in my rounds, even if I've just stayed here in this division for about two months, I know that we have a lot of talented teachers. And this is a time I'm referring to the new normal for us to be able to uh, unleash or bring out the best in us. This is the most challenging time. And so we really have to bring the artists in us to bring, uh, bring out um, the critical thinking skills, critical thinking and doing it that. You know, I always mention the 21st century skills because these are most needed at this very hour. Um, we expect everyone, especially all our teachers, to be exuding with the different um, 21st century skills, basically the four Cs. Again, I will, I will enumerate I won't stop saying this because uh, these are the skills that we need to develop in the learners for them to be able to cope with the challenges of the times. 
not just mere challenges, but actually extreme challenges. As you can see, we are not just we are not just in the midst of a pandemic, which is about the global health crisis, but at the same time with other concerns related to this. So uh, that would be also related to the economy, as well as to uh, peace and order in the country and all over the world. So there are a lot of uh, consequences and impacts of uh, this global pandemic that we are in. So we really need to brace ourselves. We have to be strong, we have to be courageous, and we need to pray for added wisdom so that we'll be able to do what we need to do at the very time and at the right time, at the right place, uh, wherever we are. So then, uh, right now, our main focus is to come up or to be oriented and be familiarized as well as master the different strategies in the implementation of the distance learning delivery modes. Uh, as you know, we have launched our division initiative, which is entitled Project Model. Well, we hope everybody to become a very good model, not just in terms of dressing or whatever, but in terms of character and in terms of uh, creativity, in terms of their communication skills. As I was saying, the four C's, critical thinking and doing, and of course the collaboration skills or collaborative skills. So everything that we do right now is uh, to be done with others and with the cooperation of others. So we really need the skills of collaboration. So then um, I was saying that uh, we have launched project model as the basic and preferred learning modality to be used at SDO Synchralo City. And that is a combination of modular instruction as well as the use of electronic learning. And when we speak of electronic learning, we refer to the utilization of online and offline resources. So if our learners uh, have internet connectivity, then we can go through the online process or we can use a lot of apps and tools to get through and engage with our learners through online. But if, of course, this is not uh, within our control, that some of our learners or some of the households are not capable of connecting to the internet so that uh, we should be able to just the same engage the learners through the use of uh, offline resources. So we have organized our educational media powerhouse, which is a pool of talented teachers, administrators, and supervisors, uh, which are now in charge of uh, producing educational media materials, um, especially so that we're also developing the other approaches of distance learning, and that is uh, the radio and TV-based instruction. So right now, our TV-based uh, activities are, are being done or aired through our TV YouTube channel. So I am surprised, you know, and I'm amazed that with our powerhouse of uh, talents in the division office, we're able to come up with our own TV YouTube channel. So congratulations once again to our CID and uh, of course our technical directors. Yes, I, I hope to uh, give, uh, give credit to them. And let me take this opportunity to mention our technical director, special for this division webinar. In the person of uh, Roldan Eden, our PDO2 for LRMS, Dexter de Guzman, teacher two of the Maya National High School, Jarek Tagulao, teacher three of Libas National High School, and Reli Mar Trinidad, teacher one of SEPNAS, or speaker Eugenio Perez, National Agricultural School. So indeed, we have very talented teachers and personnel at SDO San Carlos City Division. So that we're coming up with various offline resources. These are pre-recorded materials that we can use in our model 
learning modality, which is also a kind of distance learning delivery mode or modality. And this is going to be supported by uh, eventually radio and television instructional materials, which we are currently working on. And our teachers also are being trained uh, to become teacher broadcasters. So I'll be looking forward to uh, a pool of wonderful and very talented teachers with all the trainings, with all these webinars that we're having. I really, I really hope that you're going to make the most out of this. So if you have registered, we can see online that we have 1,500 or more. So hopefully this is going to be very productive and uh, this is going to happen only if you're willing, only if you really would like to do your job. So um, making the most of it will, will be giving your full attention, being able to take notes of uh, the key points that will be discussed to you because uh, uh, you really need this, we really need this, and we're working on this because we want to give the best to our learners. We want to uh, really engage them fruitfully and productively, even if we have this hindrance of not being able to meet them face to face. But we know what the ways would really um, embrace them, give them virtual hugs through the way we engage them through the way we teach them, we give our best and we put into all our creativity so that uh, teaching and learning will still be very enjoyable and very meaningful and very fruitful at that, even if we are uh, far away from each other physically. So we really need to master our distance learning delivery modes. So right now, we already have 1,738 registered participants, and I'm congratulating everyone for joining this um, SDO, San Carlos City Division, uh, San Carlos City Pangasinan TV YouTube channel. So we are live, and we have to be alive. And uh, really, I'm wishing everyone a very pleasant morning and a very productive uh, webinar. So, as I always say, what happens next after this will be more important. What you do with what you, with what you learn. So I always differentiate knowledge from wisdom. Of course, knowledge is what you get out of um, giving your full attention to the to this webinar, and wisdom would just come in when you are able to apply properly what you have learned. So. I think that would be just uh, for now. And uh, once again, I'd like to say I'm, I'm really excited to meet you all um, personally, but this time we have to be alive. And everyone is encouraged to be a subscriber. Oh, yes. Uh, we're all encouraging you to subscribe and like our YouTube channel. San Carlos City, Pangasinan TV, YouTube channel. Uh, we encourage you all to please subscribe and like our own, our very own YouTube channel. So will that be okay? Uh, could I, could I uh, receive some uh, reactions? Maybe, uh, hopefully your thumbs up or some of you could be on cam, on cam, open cam. So I'd like to get some reactions. So please subscribe and like our YouTube channel. So with that, I say once again, aloha everyone with love and gratitude and good morning. God bless us all. All right, thank you so much. Uh, to our dear superintendent, your inspirational message surely boosts our morale for us to efficiently deliver what is expected from us. And of course, share the love to everyone. Again, uh, to our dear superintendent, thank you so much, Paul. And Marius, aloha to you too, Paul.
Okay, Merry Christmas too. Happy Christmas time. Yes, uh, Merry Christmas. Christmas. It's Christmas time in the Philippines. Thank you yes. so much, Dale. Yes, um, thank you too, ma'am. For this division webinar. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, moving forward to our training proper. Kailangan na nating magumpisa. Kaya dapat uh, ganadong ganado na po tayo at gising na gising ang ating mga sarili. Sabi nga nila, sabi po from our ASDS to our SDS, sabi po nila this would be a very productive webinar. Kaya dapat po makinig ang lahat at, ma at tayo rin po ang makikinabag sa webinar na ito. So moving forward to discuss uh, the guidelines and considerations in distance learning delivery modality. May I now call on our dear CID chief, Dr. Edith R. Pridas. Ma'am? Thank you so much, Emil. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, we shall be arranging our uh, mic. Mukhang malabo po daw ata ang bosses ng ating dear CID chief. So let us uh, wait for at least a minute or two. Uh, Diyan lang po tayo habang nagaantay. Pwede po tayong gumalaw-galaw, sumayaw-sayaw. Ayan na. Okay, again, thank you so much to our very competent uh, MC, Ma'am Gail, to our school's division superintendent, Dr. Lourdes Servito, our ESDS, Sir Dado Kayabyab, the SGOD chef, Sir Amar Gloria, fellow education program supervisors, PSDSs, dear school heads, department heads, fellow educators, of course, to our technical team, spearheaded by Sir Roldan, division personnel, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Isang mapagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat. Kumusta po kayo? We are not used to Facebook Live. Parang, kasi ang alam ko sa Facebook Live, ang mga nandyan lang, mga artista. So this morning, artistahin pala tayo, no? artistahin pala kami. So pwede na po kami gumawa ng fans club. Uh, with that, again, uh, we're not used to it, but this is part of new normal. So tuloy po. Okay. So friends, it's September. And since it is September, it's Christmas time. May I then greet everyone. Maligayang Pasko. Sabi nga po ni Ma'am Superintendent Karina, Christmas in the Philippines. So Christmas will continue despite the pandemic kahit po may coronavirus. Tuloy po ang Pasko. With that, I'd like to greet you all again. Maligayang Pasko. Kung tuloy po ang Pasko, tuloy din po ang edukasyon. Kaya nga po sa October 5, tuloy na po, tuloy, tuloy na po ang pag-aaral ng ating mag-aaral. With that, we have sulong edukalidad. Sulong po ha, mga kapatid. Hindi po tayo mag-withdraw. We have to pursue with this uh, sulong edukalidad. And with that, para po maisulong natin ang edukalidad, we have to have, you know, handang isip para sa handang bukas. We have to prepare our minds. Sabi nga po nila, you know, we cannot give something we don't have. That's why we really need to prepare ourselves, dear fellow educators, dear school head, so that we can fully implement our curriculum as well as we can fully implement our division and it's called learning continuity plan. With that, friends, allow me to present to you the suggested strategies in implementing distance learning delivery modalities 
or the DLDM. As we all know, wala pong face-to-face, -face, no F to F. Okay? So, we, what shall we do? In October 5, we shall have DLDM. And in my session, I will be mentioning DLDM instead of distance learning delivery modality. And these strategies will be adopted for school year 2020-2021. So, handa na po ba tayo para pakinggan yung mga strategies natin for 2021? Sana po handa na po tayo. With this, okay, this uh, suggested strategies actually is in compliance with the uh, DepEd memo from curriculum and instruction numbered 00162 series of 2020. And this is in accordance with the directive of the Office of the President that no face-to-face -face classes shall be held until the vaccine for COVID-19 becomes available. And that DLDM shall be implemented this is school year 2020-2021. This issue once covers descriptions and considerations for each DLDM, the map of learning resources for each DLDM, and proposed actions to address potential challenges in implementing DLDM. Furthermore, should the vaccine become available, in red ink po, in emphasize po sa DepEd memo po na to, that parents and learners are still given the discretion to continue with distance learning as long as there is a qualified learning facilitator who shall guide and supervise the learner at home. Okay. What are these DLDM? Actually, there are four types po, apat po yan. One is modular distance learning or MDL. And there are two types under MDL, the print and the non-print or the digital. The second one is online distance learning or ODL. C is TV video and radio-based instruction. And the last is blended distance learning. I will discuss this in detail later. Allow me first to present to you the other guidelines. So as is stipulated in Deped Order Number 7 series of 2020, entitled the school calendar and activities for school year 2021, schools and community learning centers, ito po yung para sa ALS, under the supervision of the regional offices and SDOs are authorized to decide on the specific DLDM which may be deemed appropriate in their context. In San Carlos City, in our survey, ang lumabas po na preferred learning modality ay dalawa po. Number one is modular. And the second choice is, or the second preferred LDM is online. Second, as we implement modular and online, we shall be guided by omnibus guidelines on the implementation of community quarantines issued by the IETF, as well as the directives of the Office of the President. The learner's context, and when we say context, it is the situation in which something is learned or understood. Access and readiness, as well as the context or situation of the area where the schools are located shall be taken into consideration. So pag gumam pumili po tayo ng LDM natin, we should always consider the learner's context, access, and readiness. Likewise, the choice of modality or modalities of the parent and or learner may also be considered. The DLDM adopted by the school or chosen by the learner or parent may be changed. So anong sinasabi po ng DepEd memo na to? Patuloy po ba tayong gagamit ng modular? Patuloy ba tayong gagamit ng online distance learning? Ang sabi po sa memo, the DLDM adopted by the school may be changed when deemed necessary and possible based on but not limited to any of the following. One, 
the health and physical distancing protocols. Second, availability of public transport. Number three, changes in the health status of the learner. So halimbawa, nagkasakit po yung ating mag-aaral at hindi niya po kayang pag-aralan yung module, itutuloy pa rin po ba natin? As I said, it may be changed. Number four, the learner's assessment results showing that the learner is not doing well in the learning delivery modality chosen. So for example, po, online and ginagamit natin, but we found out that the child or the learner is not doing well in this modality. Or mahina yung internet, shall we proceed with online? And the last, indications and reports of negligence and abuse validated through home visitations. These are the five conditions po na dapat po natin consider if we would like uh, to change our DLDM. Next, ano po material na gagamitin po natin comes October 1st that shall be used are the self learner sample pictures of SLM. Ito po yung pre-print nyo po sa school, grades 4 to 6, 7 to 10, and senior high school, weeks 1 to 3. So, ito po talaga ang primary learning resource natin. Though you are printing po yung weeks 1 to 3, yung, four to, uh, yung sa grades 1 to 3 po, pre-print po in-house sa division, grades 4 to 6 po ay sa inyo, yung weeks 1 to 3, but weeks 4, onwards or week four and beyond, ito po ay nasa competitive bidding po. So mayroon pong gagawa para sa atin. Specifically po, the winning bidder. Okay. Now, in addition to the SLMs or self-learning modules. Ito po explain din ni Ma'am Arlene Mamaya, our LR supervisor, but may I just mention in passing that we can also use textbooks, okay, learners' materials, MELS aligned teacher-made videos. I would like to mention na sa ating pong SPED at sa ating pong kindergarten ay nag-prepare po tayo ng mga videos, specifically po sa reading, sa phonemes, kasi po we will teach the, the learners how to, we have modules, activity sheets, and interactive e-materials that will supplement the learning resource. That's why we have the project mode or the module development, which is the brainchild of our SDS. And of course, with the help of our EPSS, and of course, you dear school heads and dear teachers who are part of this uh, project mode, mga writers natin and layout artists, illustrators, and quality assurance team. Ito po yung sa atin. Ito po yung tinatawag natin, atin po ito. Okay. For number six, I would like to mention that, of course, our learners are unique. So, hindi po lahat ay fast learners. So, with that, we have to consider a set of time frame to undertake a lesson or accomplish an activity. Paggagawa po tayo ng uh, weekly home learning plans, which also will be discussed later. Please be guided by the suggested time allotment, a MELT can be mastered. Learners who are not meeting expectations, bigyan po natin po sila ng remediation. So tulad din po ng ating practice, sa ating normal, no? under the new normal, mayroon pa rin pong remediation. And for those who are, you know, who can accomplish the task, we shall give them enrichment activities. Uh, don't worry po, uh, I know mag magaling po tayo lahat dyan and we can make use of our uh, available resources. We should also ensure that learners are on task and are guided. So ano po ba ang dapat pag-aralan sa day one, so October 5, October 6, etc. And that teacher shall prepare a weekly home learning plan. As I mentioned a while back, we will be giving you examples later from kinder, from elementary to senior high school, including ALS. And that 
in case there are legal celebrations or holidays, as well as cancellations or suspension of classes due to normal and man may calamities. Kunwari po may bagyo or Christmas, then there will be adjustments in that time frame for accomplishing learning tasks. So tulad din po dun sa normal yung pong dati nating nakasanayan, when there are suspensions of classes, there are make-up classes. So during this new normal, there will also be what? Adjustments in our weekly home learning plans. For our division, we are encouraged to organize our own mechanism to ensure that all learners receive copies of the SM in print or digital format. And we would like to help. We would like para po tulungan po tayo sa pag-distribute po ng ating uh, modules. I heard there's one school buying a car para po gagamitin nila sa pag-distribute ng module. But I would, I will not mention the name of the school kasi po hindi pa nabibili yung grandia. But I, I would like to appreciate that effort of the school buying a car. With this, I, on the screen, ito po yung module that are modules and answer sheets which are initiated in our division office, which are developed by supervisors, specialists, and teachers. And this will be used to supplement po yung SLM na galing po sa central office. And I would like to mention that these modules initiated in the division are aligned with with this uh, in red ink, again, contextualization shall allow flexibility. That's why I would like to mention at this point in time that the modules for kinder to grade three po ay kinontextualize po natin. Kasi po, the medium of instruction is Pangasinan. Kaya po yung galing sa central office, Tagalog po yun. And that's why our very able supervisors came up with contextualized and localized modules for grades one to three. And soon, our target, we will distribute them very soon to you. Okay. Next, sino po ba ang kasama ng teacher na magtuturo sa mga bata? The fact that it is a distance learning, wala pong F to F. We need an LF, a learning facilitator, or a household partner like parent, guardian, sibling, or community members who are responsible adult. Okay? So, kailangan po natin talaga ang tulong ng ating mga parents. The learning facilitators, however, and I would like to mention, na itong mga parents na to, itong mga responsible adults, they will have a capacity building program. We will have a training for them kung ano ba talaga ang gagawin ng mga parents or a stakeholder po during uh, the delivery po, doon sa pag-aaral po ng bata. Okay. How about those learners? Just like me, I don't have time for my daughter. This is an irony, no? I'm a teacher, but I don't have time for my daughter. So for learners without available learning facilitators at home, anong gagawin natin? Subject teachers, cluster learning facilitators, make home visits following social distancing protocols. Or kung hindi po pwede, well, communicate through text. Okay, you can make calls, you can have GC, live chats, and other forms of communication to provide assistance or remediation. Okay. We know, alam ko, alam na alam nyo na po ito, that may mga hindi po pwede exempted from home visitation. But quickly, may I just tell you, sino po ang mga to? Teachers who are 60 years old, mga senior citizen, teachers with immunodeficiency, Comorbid, uh, yeah, comorbidities or other health risks, pregnant, severity classification in their area. Pag wala pong example lang po, uh, kulang po ng teachers kasi nga po, they are exempted from home visitation. Who will do the task? 
The DepEd memo spells clearly that dear school heads, PSDS, EPS, and responsible community stakeholders may be assigned to attend to the organized clusters of learners. Ibig pong sabihin po para po mag-handle ng mga bata din. Okay? And we can only, I mean, we will only do this in the absence, ah, in the absence po ng people who can do the work. Okay. In this case, may I also mention that we have two. We, school heads, teachers, we should have, we should establish a strong partnership. Okay. School administrators, department heads, teachers, guardians, community parents shall provide adequate and appropriate guidance and support for the learners. This is new normal. This is a new experience for our learners. Therefore, let us please provide our learners appropriate guidance and support. While mass gathering is not yet Allowed, a school shall initiate online orientation program for parents. Kasi may mga iba nagtatanong, sabi niyo ma'am, kailangan makapacitate namin ang mga parents. Eh di po ba bawal, wala pong F to F. So what shall we do? Just like what we are doing right now, let's do online orientation for parents. Okay, we have to have online trainings for our LF or webinars on whom school partnership. Basta may GC, sino nga pa po ba ang wala pang cellphone ngayon? Parang lahat, di ba? Or messenger. So I hope I, kaya po natin to. Okay? May I also mention that we shall be guided also by DepEd Order 40. And what is DepEd Order 40? Policy Guidelines on Protecting Children in school from abuse, violence, exploitation, discrimination, bullying, and other forms of abuse through their duties and responsibilities is stipulated in Section 7 to 10. So kahit po wala po tayo sa school, a school shall likewise review the composition of the CPC or the Child Protection Committee. Okay, And let us also coordinate with our Barangay Council for the protection of our children. Okay. So with that, uh, I have presented to you guidelines and considerations. Allow me this time to present to you the descriptions and considerations for each DLDM. Okay. Let me first define distance learning. Ano po ba si distance learning? Minsan kasi nalilito tayo, no? Natanong natin, uh, ano ba yung distance learning? At, at ang impression ng lahat as I see it ay paggamit ng internet. Kaya everybody, many people are, you know, they are, they are uh, into buying laptops, buying cell phones. At balita ko nga po eh, mahal na raw po ang cell phones ngayon. Nag-increase nag po ang presyo ng cell phone. And when I pass by Rizal, no? Ang daming tao sa Converge. When I went to CSI, ang daming tao sa USAT TV. When I went to Globe, ang daming tao and other networks. Parang ano po ba talaga si distance learning? Distance learning refers to a learning delivery modality where a learner is given materials or access to resources and he or she undertakes Self. Kaya po distance, wala po sila sa school. No? They may be in, uh, in their homes or in another venue. As long as po na mayroon pong uh, place for learners to, to study. Okay? So, di po ba, nakita niyo po ba yung patalastas doon po or uh, infomercials sa TV? Yung bata, di ba? Yung nag-aaral doon sa iba abaw ng aeroplano. Soon, baka malay po natin, gagawa din po tayo ng infomercial. At dahil distance learning yung bata ay nag-aaral sa silong ng kaunga. 
Okay? So from the four corners of the classroom, it may be now be learning may take place in the four corners of our respective homes or in other venues. And that's distance learning. So under distance learning, well, there are four types, as I mentioned. Number one, modular. Ano si modular? Well, it refers to a learning delivery that is in the form of individualized instruction where learners will use SLMs or SELMAT. Sa iba pong ano, resources, ang sabi po nila dito is not digital but instead it's called uh, what's this, uh, print or non-print. Okay. Paano po siya since SLM bibigyan yung bata ng module? Who will guide the, the learner? Una po, sabi po dito clearly, with the guidance of any member of the family or other stakeholder in the community. At nired ko po yan kasi po i-underscore that it should be, the, the, the facilitator should be trained. Kaya po, uh, one of these days, we will train the parents or other stakeholders on their roles and responsibilities in the implementation of DLDM. Okay. So, yung another one, a learner may adopt either, pwede pumili yung bata ng digital or non-print or print. Pero siguro doon sa mga bata na may laptop, desktop, tablet, siguro po ang gagamitin na lang po ninyo ay yung digital. Di po ba? Okay. Yung SLM po, yung pinakita ko po na picture kanina, yung pong modules na galing sa central office at po yung modules na galing po sa division office, yung ginawa sa DO. Pag sinabi ko pong DO, hindi po dito sa opisina po ha. Ibig ko pong sabihin, ginawa po sa ating division. And you, many of our teachers, are writers and these SLM are K-12 compliant. Okay. And there are a lot of activities in our modules to provide ample time for mastery and sufficient practice to ensure that the targeted most essential learning competencies are achieved. May I just mention again in passing na yung pong focus natin ngayon sa ating lessons are based on the milk. And this will be discussed by Dr. Magtang. Okay. Okay, next. Learners, as I mentioned a while back, are, you know, they are unique. So, pag sinabi po natin unique, no? wala po one size fits all. That's why yung module natin, although uh, isa pong module, there are activity sets that will fit our learners. And it is suggested na yung time frame to work on their assigned task, kailangan po ay may flexibility po tayo. So kung yung magaling ay kanina, bigyan po natin ng enrichment. Pero po kung yung bata ay nahihirapan po sa ating module, let's give more time for that learner to secure mastery of the learning content with the help of the teacher, of course. Now, we shall also monitor learners' progress. So, hindi po natin pababayaan yung mga bata na pag naibigay na natin yung... Well, after giving the modules to our, uh, to our parents or the guardian, we shall monitor the learners' progress. Okay, and do, when we do uh, monitoring, we should do it timely, okay, and do appropriate monitoring and feedback for consultation and intervention purposes. So, how do we do this, teachers? How are you going to monitor? How are you going to provide feedback? And how are you going to do consultation? So, well, as I said, the moment nandagbigay uh, na po tayo ng modules, for example, Monday, then we followed up the, the learners. So, we text them. Oh, and then we ask, oh, kumusta ka na, Dexter? Are you able to answer the prayer test? Okay. My problema ba? Is there any difficulty? So, Kailangan po uh, mag-text mag po tayo na teachers or as, 
uh, uh, audio, video call, and it does not mean that we require students to have internet. Because, you know, text messaging or your call, yung using our cell phones, may not really require uh, internet, okay? So we always have to consider the situation of and resources of our learners, okay? So we have flexibility, and then members of the family and other stakeholders within the community who, who are again in red ink, kasi po nakalagay po to siya, CR, the members of the family should be trained learning facilitators and shall be engaged to provide learners with instructional support as needed in the absence of a classroom teacher. Kasi po, dati po, no? the teacher is always there to help the learner. But this time, there's no teacher in their homes. No? Wala. So there should be somebody at home to guide the learner. Okay? And that is the learning facilitators. For online distance learning naman, yung po yung module, ha? yung dalawa, print and non-print. Okay. How about the second uh, modality? Online distance learning. It refers to a learning delivery modality where the teacher facilitates learning and engages learners' active participation using various technologies connected to the internet. This time talaga po, kailangan natin ng internet. Okay. While they are geographically remote from each other. So we are far from each other. The learners are not within our reach. So we will reach them out through the use of phones, through the use of internet. And that the internet is used to facilitate learner-teacher, learner content, and peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Okay, online learning may be through a synchronous or a synchronous platform. Alam po natin tong synchronous at asynchronous. Uh, synchronous, real time, no? So, magsiset po tayo ng time sa mga bata. We'll meet at 8 o'clock and our learning area is English. And so, please join me in Zoom or Google Meet. And then, the learners are all there. The teacher will teach. And there will be interaction, real time, that's synchronous. For a synchronous, well, pwede po na, hindi, po, hindi na po real time to. Yung mga recorded videos po ng mga teachers natin. Just like what we are doing now, no? This can be watch replay, no? Okay? So, but I underscore that as a requirement for online distance learning, there must be a good and stable internet connection. Likewise, teachers should be aware of the LMS. At alam ko magagaling ang mga teachers dito. And the use of depth and commons and LR portals. Okay. Still on online distance learning, paano po yung schedule ng klase? A class adapting online distance learning shall follow the regular planning standards in the organization of classes set by DepEd. Okay. Itong number two po in passing lang. So ano pong mga kailangan sa online distance learning? Of course, we need digital devices. Laptops, tablets, smartphones, desktop computers, and of course, internet connectivity. Gagamit pa po ba yung mga bata ng SLM, yung module? Eh, online naman po sila. Yes. The learners will still be using the SLMs. The learners will still be using the textbooks, the primer lessons, activities. Yes. And other supplementary learning materials like the OERs. So for those teachers who develop OERs, yung pong mga ating digitized instructional materials, well, they are, these materials will be very helpful sa online distance learning po natin. If you, if you want to have a copy of this uh, videos and other OER spot, just go to our LRMS uh, unit. Please get it from Marco Reyes, our librarian, okay? Para po mag and I recognize and thank all our writers, our developers, kasi po malaking tulong po ito sa ating mga mag-aaral. How about yung printed copies of SLM? The principals may ask, Ma'am, 
our request for for modules kasi po online may i mention dear school heads department heads and dear uh, school that even if po online we, st we will still be giving the printed copies of slms okay kasi po what if brown out Ano po ang pag-aaralan ng bata? So, we will still be giving printed copies. And likewise, yung pong SLM po ay napakalaking tulong po sa mga mag-aaral. Because as they go online, as they do online, pwede po nilang basa. I read to you the screen time guidelines by age as recommended by AAP or American Academy of Pediatrics and World Health Organization. Alam ko po, uh, you are doing your LDM2 and as you read your modules in LDM2, nakapaloob po ito. But may I just mention, for key stage one, kinder to grade three, ilang maximum, one hour lang po for kinder. How about for grades 1 to 3? 1.5. What about for grades 4 to 6, which is under key stage 2? Up to 2 hours. So we cannot go beyond 2 hours. What about key stage 3 or grades 7 to 10? For grades 7 to 10, mga high school, junior high, no? up to 2 hours. And up Four hours, po yung four hours na diretsyong nakaupo yung bata. So, we will have two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. How about for key stage four or for senior high school? At most, maximum, four hours then, two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. Okay. In preparation of the weekly home learning plan and class program, Please, dear school heads, please comply with the recommended screen time, okay? And online activities shall be complemented with locomotion, motor sensory, and audio tools, which will support subjects related to the performing arts and clubs. So, mayroon po tayong napakagandang OBS uh, na ginawa po, may video po na ginamita ng OBS app. At yun po ay actually po ginawa ni Sir Dexter de Guzman sa MAPI po. And you can borrow this, no? And we also have activity sheets. And we're just waiting for the regional office to give us the activity sheets, no? And be given performance-based tasks to accomplish. Ibig sabihin po, kung may nakita na po akong video na nag na PE po na ginawa ng ating isang teacher, if I may mention, si Margie, Margie Beltran, at pinanood ko po yung video, and there was a performance task. Nag-jumping nag jack sila, and nag, uh, how do you call this, jog in place, etc. po. So nag jog in place, naka-video si Ma'am Margie, and then she will, and she enjoyed the learners to join her as she, you know, as she do the jumping jump. Okay, so kahit po nasa bahay, learner, sabi ko nga po online, pero mayroon pa rin pong uh, performance. It's not all written. Okay. Ito pa ulit-ulit, no? Sa modular, kailangan ng parents. Again, on online distance learning, kailangan pa rin natin si LF, si na parents, guardians, responsible adults at home, to what? Supervise to guide and monitor the screen time of the learners. And what is the recommendation? 20, 20, 20 rule. And what is 20, 20, 20? Hindi po August 20, 20, no? Anong ibig sabihin po yan? The learner needs to look away from the screen. So kailangan alis, ano? Alisin niya yung mata niya sa, ano, or ibaling yung kanyang mata sa ibang mga bagay every 20 minutes and focus on an object at least 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. So pag every 20 minutes, okay? Mata, lipat muna sa mga magagandang tanawin, 20 feet away and for 20 seconds. Okay? It is also recommended that children should walk away from the screen for at least 10 minutes every hour. So, okay? And we must ensure that our learners 
uh, learning facilitators, I should say, the parents are oriented. At sasabihin po natin ito sa ating mga mag, sa ating pong mga LF. Okay. This one, uh, okay. Learners and parents shall be capacitated on the use of LMS, LR portals. Okay. And as we do this, we request our uh, school heads and our school officials to supervise and should provide orientation for learners and parents on navigating online platforms. The schools may organize professional development. Ito po yung mga lock sessions. I will not discuss this because Dr. Magtang will discuss this later. So, but I am just telling you that schools are actually uh, encouraged to organize PD or professional development. Okay, and online materials may be designed for collaborative tasks that will engage learners to work in real time. Okay, so we need online materials, online tools, and these tools may be used for virtual collaboration. Okay, and it could also be used of giving feedback, comment, rating, and even posting of grades or scores. Although Sinabibigay po ng grades or scores po, uh, yung pong, uh, how do you call this, uh, principle po siya assessment that we shall observe ethics po sa pagbibigay ng grades or scores. Actually, nobody should see the grade of the learner except the learner and the parents or the authorized guardian. Okay, so careful, di po dito, okay? Uh, but we're saying we shall provide pet bugs by giving grades or scores, but Again, we have to follow policies on, you know, uh, data privacy. Okay. For your LMS, kailangan po yung LMS natin na gagamitin po sa online should be user-friendly. May I also mention, dear teachers, who will be adopting the online distance learning, that you are also expected to give assignments and learning tests. The quantity of online activities is not equivalent to quality. It the number of online activities will not guarantee learning. Okay. Will not, you know, but instead, what we shall do, yung sinabi ko po ng nauna, sulong edukalidad. We are after quality. We are not only after quantity, but we are after quality. Therefore, dear uh, fellow teachers, please assign learners, give them assignments so that, you know, uh, Learners will, you know, move away from their devices. Kasi po, pag maraming oras, alam nyo na, so parang yung anak ko, TikTok ng TikTok. Para pati ako ay TikTok. Pero ngayon, kapasukan na po, sabi ko sa anak ko, uh, we have a rule, sorry for giving my daughter an example, but I told her, uh, anak, I have to capture your cell phone because you have your assignment. Do the same as, you know, Teachers, we are local parents. We are second parents, no? So we have to care for our learners. Okay. So for synchronous, you can use, you know, uh, live webinars, video conference, chat, Google Meet, no? And then for synchronous, yung synchronous po natin, uh, nasabi ko na po yung oras kanina, pero ang sinasabi po dito, at least once to a maximum of three times per week. Hindi po, kung pwede po, hindi po araw-araw yung ano po, real time. It should be at least, at least as minimum of once, but a maximum of three times per week. Okay. For asynchronous kasi po, eh, ito po ay recorded, so the learners can use self-paced learning. So, uh, just like me, parent, na I'm not actually at home all the time, no? So, siguro I can, we can do this, mga you advise the parents na are not available during daytime to, you know, to have this asynchronous online platform. Yung asynchronous po, panoorin po nila yung video with their, with their children because asynchronous online platform is for self-paced learning, okay? Self-paced, okay? So, teachers, how are you going to present your lessons? Please, my dear, ha? Huh? Uh, kailangan po, uh, we, kailangan yung may variation po sa ating pag-present ng lessons, no? We should make our lessons very interesting, especially to the lower grades, okay? 
much to uh, to address diverse learning profile. You know, our learners are very unique. Yung iba ang attention span nila very short. No, yung iba mahaba. No, so what shall we do? No, we should make our our lessons interesting. Okay, and we can have more than one format. Hindi po PowerPoint ngayon ay PowerPoint naman bukas. Baka pwede naman pong may mga video-video din pa yung tayong ipapanood. Okay? And teachers, you, del you can deliver lessons by text. Or baka sasabihin nyo, ma'am, apagasa, malakwa nyo matawa. No, may mga student, text at latex, tawa at tawag. So what will you do? Actually, kahapon, I was thinking of recording this, this lecture of mine. You can actually have a recorded video or voice. Okay, so technical nyo, play nyo. Ah, yun na yun. Okay? The third modality, and I'm on the third modality, and these are, dalawa na lang po, my session is about to end. We have TV-based instruction, radio-based instruction. Baka tatanungin nyo po sa akin, Ma'am, is it not that our preferred learning modality in San Carlos is module and online? Why are you presenting TV. Alam niyo po ba that our division has planned po to have this TV-based instruction and radio-based instruction with the help of partners from SGOD, you know, Ma'am Vilma, you know, you see na Ma'am Gail and among others po na nagkaroon po sila ng, you know, uh, how do you call this, uh, Contract signing po, MOA, sa USA TV, etc., hindi ko po alam, na magkakaroon din po tayo ng TV-based instructions. So, teachers, uh, magiging mas lalo kayong artistahin po doon, TV na to. And obviously, pag sinabing TV-based instruction, radio-based, you will use, of course, the use of TV or radio programs and channel. And this may not be considered as a sole learning delivery modality. And don't, don't conclude that baka po magkaroon ng misconception. Ah, so pag natuto yung anak ko, nanood ng TV, nagturo ka, anak, manood ka sa TV, makinig kayo sa radio, that's all. No. Very clear in this DepEd mo, uh, memo that this modality should be combined with other distance learning. Kailangan pa rin nila si module. So, habang nanonood, ah, ah, ito yung nasa module. Ah, ito pala. Oh, and the module says, oh, in TLE, what are the, uh, what is this, uh, table appointments? Drawing doon sa module, no? But you see in the TV, wow, these are the table appointments. So, in addition to the, the TV, well, we have modules, okay? So, hopefully, hindi ko po alam kung ano pong network ang gagamitin natin, okay? But surely, these, uh, the lessons that will be presented in the TV and radio are actually also our SLM modules, okay? Uh, but they are they are also aligned with the MELCs, pero igagawan po ng script, yan. And we have our ABLE supervisors. Actually po, naka, naka, ano po dito, yung mga supervisors po natin because there will be script. Hindi po to basta-basta na tumayo ka sa TV at ano po, and you have to present your lesson. We have to prepare a uh, script, no? Okay. And as I said, they are aligned with the MELCs. Okay. And likewise, pagkatapos mong manood sa TV, makinig sa radio, still, I would like to tell you that we are still giving learning activity sheets to learners that will serve as assessment tools. So mayroon pa rin po silang sasagutan. So hindi po tulad ng you watch, uh, it bulaga bawal ang judgmental, that tapos na si bawal ang judgmental, that's the end of the show. No. In TV, RBI, there are activity sheets and there are still assessments, okay, in printed form. Again, this will be discussed by another supervisor, uh, Dr. Afanda later. On. But kung sa module ay bibigyan natin ang mga bata ng weekly home learning plans, okay, dito, bibigyan din po sila dito sa TV, RBI, and we should also give the parents the broadcast schedule of lessons para alam po nila kung anong oras sila manunood. Okay po. Okay. And then, Enhancement of understanding of key concepts and clarification on possible areas of confusion. Well, this is true, no? 
There may be children who will be confused as they watch the, the, the lesson in the TV. That's why teachers will still provide enhancement to, you know, to better explain the lesson. And we may do again home visits or since hindi po tayo sa safe sa home visits, again, tulad sa module, we will do phone calls, live chats, text messaging. And again, guidance from parents or learning facilitators during viewing. So mapapansin nyo from, for each modality, from modular to online to TV, RBI, that the presence of LF or parents is very necessary. And as I said, we have to train these people on what to do uh, in the implementation of the DLGM. Okay. The last, my friends, are you still there? Baka tulog na po kayo. Pag naman sana. Okay? Blended. Blended, well, pag titignan po natin sa Google, it is a combination of, you know, distance learning and it requires face-to-face. -face. But since face-to-face -face is remote, we cannot do it at the moment. So, anong blended ngayon? It could be a combination but not limited to ODL, PMDL, ODL, what is ODL again? Online distance learning, P, printed modular distance learning, ODL, online distance learning, uh, DMDP, okay, TV video. Ibig sabihin po, you teachers, you know, learners can have a combination of two distance learning. Pwede online siya at mayroon pa rin siyang printed module. Pwede siyang gumamit ng TV, tapos mayroon din siyang online distance learning. Pwede po siyang mag-radio at mayroon din po siyang module. In other words, parang kape, blended. There is a combination. Hindi lang po tayo kape lang. Mayroon po creamer. So there's a combination. And of course, this blended will always be, again, an option of the learner. Hindi po natin pwedeng sabihin na, anak, do the online kasi ako in, uh, magaling ako sa internet. But again, we always have to consider the resources of the learner as well as the parents. Okay? So, and of course, please, uh, if there are schools who would like to adopt this in the future, because as I said, di ba sa memo sabi niya, we may change. Pwede po tayong magpalit. So baka... Isang araw, magpapalit po tayo. Sabi nila, walang forever. So, we may, you know, we may change and adopt any of the above combinations. Pwede mangyari po yun. Okay? With that, uh, I think uh, I'm done with the modalities. I would like to say Thank you, everyone. I actually po, mayroon po akong isang screen na si Nave, pero bukhang may problema, hindi po siya lumalabas. Pero sasabihin ko na lang po kasi alam ko po yung sinulat. At ko doon. At yan, ang sinasabi ko po ay, friends, thank you so much for your time. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. God bless. At ibabalik ko po sa unang slide na sinabi ko. Kapatid, dear uh, fellow educators, hawag kamay, sulong idak kalidad. Let's prepare our mind. Ano, handang isip para sa handa bukas. Good morning, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Thank you to our uh, CID chief, Dr. Edith Pridas. Very well said po. And I hope everyone out there made their written notes on the key points. Marami po tayong key points. Kaya itong mga key points na to, ito ang mag-guide talaga po sa atin relative to the guidelines and considerations of the DLDM. Okay. Uh, time check. We are now at 10 24 a.m. So I guess a break, a three-minute break para naman po makapagtimpla tayo ng kape. O di kaya, baka sa inyo may naiihi na dyan. Okay? Pero wag po tayo maglalagout ha. Stay tuned pa rin po tayo kahit for the three-minute break. Okay? Are we live for the three-minute break, sir? Hello, hello po tayo. Three minute break.
Or kung may gusto po kayong yakapin sa tabi nyo, do it na. Para itong, I think, malamig po ba? O mainit-init? Hello again! Kumusta? Siguro naman, nakapag-CR na tayo. Nakapag-timplan ng kape. Ano pa pong gusto nyo gawin? Nayakap nyo na po ang inyong mga mahal. Okay? Siguro sa 3-minute break na yon na uh, nagalaw-galaw tayo ng konti at ready-ready ulit tayong makinig para sa ating uh, susunod na speaker. Okay? To discuss the MELCS and preparing teachers and head teachers. For the multiple LDM, may we request for Dr. Lilibet A. Magtang, our EPS in English and Mother Tongue Bilingual. Uh, Lilibet? Hello, Mac. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Before I proceed or before... Okay. Again, thank you so much, Gail. And before I start... I would like to greet everyone who, uh, who is present in this webinar, especially, of course, to our SDS, uh, Ma'am Lourdes Servito, our ASDS, Sir Dado, or Sir Just Dado Kayabiab, also our two chiefs, uh, Chief Edith of the CID and uh, Chief Amor for SGOD, to the men and women behind the webinar, uh, the tech team, to my colleagues in the division office, and to all teachers and school heads participating in this webinar, a pleasant morning to everyone. So listening to Dr. Prida, so we have, I'm sure, no, we have a lot of takeaways, and uh, she was able to do a very encompassing discussion of what are in store for us uh, in this school year 2020-2021. 
amidst this difficult time. Okay, so the topic assigned to me, as uh, mentioned by Gail, is about the most essential learning competencies and the lock. Okay, so I would like to request the technical director to share my uh, present my screen. Okay, thank you so much. So may I start with uh, the MELT, no? the most essential learning competencies. Uh, this is something or this is a topic which is not really very new to everyone or most of us, no? because uh, I think this will just serve as a refresher or this will refresh you of what you already know about uh, the most essential learning competencies. Why? Why? Because uh, number one, I think uh, most of the teachers uh, by this time already have a copy of their most essential learning competencies in all grade levels and in all learning areas, maybe as per advice or as per instruction of their school heads, no? So, kailangan lahat tayo, lahat ng teachers especially, mayroon ng hawak-hawak na milks. Okay, why? Because this will now serve as our Bible in the preparation of our uh, weekly home learning plan. Okay, number two, uh, many of you, many of the teachers have been participating in webinars especially conducted by the central office and the regional office. So uh, I'm pretty sure that this will just uh, refresh you of what you already know, your prior knowledge of the MELCs. Okay, after all, ang sabi nga ni uh, Aristotle, no, in the context of Philippine, uh, in, in the context of education and the role of repetition in learning, ang sabi ni Aristotle, it is frequent repetition that, okay, that, that will uh, make things natural or that will produce a natural tendency. And also this is supported by a lot of theorists like Skinner, also Bell, and Thorndike. So napaka-importante that we hear something repeatedly para maging part na po ng sistema natin. So by this time, dapat ang milks ay... Uh, parte na po ng ating sistema and we know it by heart so that uh, when we finally start the class or school year 2020-21, we are very much ready to utilize our MELCs. Okay? So the objective of this session is to familiarize all the participants about the features of the most essential learning competencies. Okay, so... Why did DepEd decide to come up with the MELCs and how did they come about? So here, we're not be we will not be talking about MELCs per se, what they are, what the contents of the MELCs uh, are, but we will also try to uh, discuss or maybe uh, talk about the reasons why our department decided to come up with the most essential learning competencies and how. How did the department do it? Okay, so to answer our question about this, we have the development and design of the MELCs. This is a write-up or a text which is in the internet, so everyone can just access. And for those who have participated in the DLM 2 or course 2, this is actually an attachment to module 2 of the DLM course. Okay, so... I think those teachers who are participating in that uh, LDM course have seen this already. Uh, these are our cream of the crop or maybe cream of the cream or creamers of the cream. Nakita na po nila ito. Okay. So we can have clues also from the right, from the first word of our topic, which is streamlining. And anyone, does anyone know the meaning of Streamlining. Okay, so when we say streamlining, what do we mean? Uh, streamlining means uh, facilitating or simplifying our method 
of method of doing things you know, for us to be able to perform our tasks more efficiently and effectively. Okay. So may I invite you to read this question? This is actually a rhetorical question. Let us reflect on it. So is there anything wrong about the curriculum or the curriculum standards that we used to follow before this pandemic? Remember our K-12 curriculum guide? So we, we have the standards which were really before the, before the department released that, talagang pinag-aralan, binusisi, but in your opinion, is there anything wrong with it? Bakit kailangan nating uh, humantong talaga, no? humantong sa pagkakaroon ng most essential learning competencies? Okay, so I think many of us will say maybe yes, there is something wrong, or others will say, there's nothing wrong. Uh, well, my my contention no, on this is that there's actually nothing wrong with the standard set in the curriculum guide or the K-12 curriculum guide. It's just that uh, our experts, our academic experts think that that's too, the curriculum is too congested. No, that's why we really have to decongest the curriculum a little. So even, even before the pandemic, even before COVID-19, meron na pong effort na ginawa ang Department of Education para ma-decongest ang ating curriculum. So remember when the K-12 curriculum first uh, came out, ang sabi po nila, uh, the reason for having that is to make or to make the curriculum inch wide and miles deep. Ibig sabihin, binawasan na po ang learning competencies doon. But because of the difficult time that we are in right now, because of this pandemic, we really need to further decongest our curriculum. Okay, now let us think more deeply about these questions. Number one, what are the general and specific purposes of the development of MELKs? Okay. How does curriculum review aid in the identification of essential learning competencies? What is the difference between essential learning competencies and desirable learning competencies? By the way, this is competencies and not competencies. Okay. How were the most essential learning competencies identified? What were the decisions made in order to trim down the number of essential learning competencies further? And the last question, what is the importance of the MELCs in ensuring the delivery of quality instruction? Okay, so these are very important questions that at least we should have answers in our mind. Okay, maybe if not from the webinars, maybe the answers could have come from uh, your readings, no? Because Everything now is circulating in the internet. So kahit anong oras, kahit anong question, pwede po natin uh, itanong kay, kay Google. Okay? But our main source of information or answers for this question is, like what I have said, that text or that write-up on the development and design of the most essential learning competencies. It's right in the DepEd website. Okay? So the next or the succeeding, uh, the subsequent, I mean, the subsequent slides, I borrowed all, I, I just borrowed them, but I could not just easily or read, I could not just simply let go of them because this is very important. Ito talaga yung essence ng pagkakaroon natin ng MELPs, okay? The Department of Education affirms its commitment to sustaining the delivery of quality accessible, relevant, and liberating Philippine basic education services anchored on the Sulong Educalidad framework. So remember the four pillars of the Sulong Educalidad framework. So it's like magic that uh, DepEd or the Department of Education was able to anticipate, para lang, no? para lang na-anticipate ng DepEd na magkakaroon ng ganito. Why? Why did I say that? Because uh, DepEd is already... Uh, 
doing things or have has been doing things in preparation for well masamang sabihin na in preparation for something like this but ang uh, ang concern ng DepEd is to adhere to its commitment to sustain the delivery of quality, relevant, and liberating Philippine education. And that even before 2020, uh, in the middle of 2019, uh, isinulong po itong programa or framework na sulong edukalidad wherein four pillars or fee are uh, four key reform areas were introduced to us. No? Ito yung may symbol na kite. Kite, how do we spell kite? K-I-T-E. And napakaganda po nitong symbol na ito because it means that, syempre alam natin, the kite is, of course, soaring high, no? Amidst the challenges or kahit na anong pagsubok na dumating, ang talagang objective ng kite ay mapalipad ito and it source it source high uh, even beyond the clouds no, no? okay so what is k that is k to 12 review and update so ginawa na po ito ng department of education kahit wala pa po itong covid-19 so its purpose is not just simply to review but uh, more importantly because of its commitment to really deliver quality education. Kaya kailangan continuous po ang pagre-review ng learning competencies na ihahain po natin sa mga bata. So it will continue to strive to produce holistic Filipino learners with 10, 21st century skills. Consequently, the Bureau of Curriculum Development ensures the learning standards are relevant and flexible to address the complex, disruptive, volatile, and ambiguous impact of COVID-19 in the Philippines, particularly in the basic education sector. Okay? So DepEd came up with the MELC to be used nationwide by field implementers by school year 2020 to 2021. Now, this is very, uh, take note of this. The release of the MELC is not just a response to addressing the challenges of the current COVID-19 pandemic, but is also part of the department's long-term response to the call of sustainable development goal, that is SDG4, to develop resilient education systems, most especially during emergencies. So the release of the MELCs, take note, is not, to, is not to downplay the set standards in the curriculum guide, no, uh, K-12 curriculum guide, but... Uh, Yun nga, it's a response to the call of Sustainable Development Goal 4. Ano ba ito? Alam po ba natin yung SDG 4? Actually, there's a story behind this one. No, ang sabi ng UNESCO, uh, education cannot wait. No? If learning stops, then uh, we also paralyze the growth of our human, uh, human capital. So meaning to say, whatever whatever cha the challenges that uh, may could be hindering us from delivering educa uh, quality education dapat ay ma-surpass po natin, ma-overcome po natin. So SDG 4 is on uh, education goal and it aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for, for all. Okay, so this is the process, uh, the flow no, na pinagdaanan po ng ating department or ginawa ng ating department to come up with the most essential learning competencies. Alam ko pa ulit-ulit na po ito, pero as I have said, uh, when we hear it a number of times, when we hear something repeatedly, then it becomes part of our system. And even with our eyes closed, we can explain, paano ba nagkaroon ng MELCs? Bakit hindi na CG kung hindi MELCs na ang ating pinag-uusapan? Okay, so let's start from the first box dito sa left. So review of intended curriculum that was done, as I have said, by the Department of Education, specifically the Bureau of Curriculum Development, uh, CSDD, Curriculum Standards Development Division, 
in collaboration with uh, ACT RC, that is uh, Assessment Curriculum and Technology Research Center, if I'm not mistaken, that is based uh, at the University of the Philippines. Okay, so pinag-aralan na po nila ito, nareview nila ito, uh, because this is part of the kite or the Sulong Edukalidad Framework. Okay, who worked with them? Sino ang mga tao sa likod ng pagre-review ng ating curriculum guide? We have uh, the bureau specialists, no? Uh, the the academic experts and the field implementers. So they did this in the middle of 2019. Okay, nagkaroon lang po ng uh, uh, pandemic starting, uh, if I'm not mistaken, take in February ba yun? February or March? <laughs> March, okay. So as a result of the review of the intended curriculum, they came up with the essential learning competencies. So ito na talaga yung ihahain nila sana sa DepEd, no? We have the ELCs. Okay, putulin natin sandali yung diagram na yan for as of this time, balikan natin yung MELP. So here, the review covered the following. Ano ang ginawa nila? They did mapping of the essential and desirable learning competencies within the curriculum. So what they did was they did horizontal and vertical articulation of all the competencies, the learning competencies across learning areas and across grade levels. Okay. And then they did identification no? of what? Identification of prerequisite knowledge and skills needed to prepare students for essential learning competencies. Okay, and then after identifying, they, anal they analyze no? analysis of the interconnectedness of prerequisite knowledge and skills among the learning competencies for each subject area. So notice that talagang mabusisi po ang panilang ginawang pagre-review ng ating curriculum. No? It's, not, uh, it's really not a joke. So kailangan ng mga eksperto para gawin yan. So what is the difference between essential learning competencies and the desired learning competencies? So when we speak of the ELCs or essential learning competencies, these were defined as what the students need, considered indispensable in the teaching learning process to build skills to equip learners for subsequent grade levels and consequently for lifelong learning. So, yun po yung essential learning competencies. Ang keywords po dito ay what the students need. They are indispensable or so important in the teaching and learning process. And, importante po ito for their subsequent grade level. So, ibig sabihin, uh, they will do better, they will perform better in the subsequent grade levels if they have really achieved or, yeah, they have mastered the competencies in the present grade level, okay? And eventually for lifelong learning. Now, what is its difference to the desired learning competencies? So the DLCs were defined as what may enhance education but may not be necessary in build, building foundational skills. So ibig sabihin, importante, pero hindi masyadong kailangan sa pagbibuild ng foundational skills. And what we need now are really the most essential because of the challenges posed by, by uh, the pandemic or global pandemic. Huh? Okay, and so kailangan natin ng ELCs. So how did the experts uh, identify the learning competencies which they considered essential? So ang sabi po dito, Learning competency is essential if it is aligned with national, national, state, and or local standards and frameworks. For example, scientifically literate Filipinos. L the learning competency is essential if it connects the content to higher concepts across content areas. Okay. 
is to acquire the competency after he or she left the particular grade level, and if it would not be expected that most students would learn this through their parents, communities, if not taught at school. Okay, so saan kinuha po itong mga indicators na ito no, ng uh, ELC? This was taken or adopted from uh, a U.S. Developed Competency Validation Rubric, which is intended to assure that learning competencies can reach the highest level of quality and comparability across schools. Uh, and this was contextualized. Big sabihin, uh, finit po nila sa konteksto ng Pilipinas. So it was not really totally adapted as it is, but it was context contextualized to uh, our context, the Philippine context. Okay, so these are the characteristics of ELCs. Okay, going back, meron na tayong ELCs. Bakit kailangan pa po ng most essential learning competencies? Binusisi na, kaya okay na sana ang ELCs, but why did DepEd still had to come up with most essential learning competencies? Well, uh, maybe we can have answers na dyan, para dyan, sa ating sarili, dahil alam na po natin ang nangyayari ngayon. So, to, to really uh, adhere to our commitment for quality education and given this difficult time, uh, marami marami pong challenges ngayon. So, we really have to come up with the most essential learning competencies. Okay, ano ba yung kailangang kailangan, kailangan na matutunan ng mga bata? And paano po tayo nagkaroon ng MELCs? Okay, so DepEd, in collaboration with the ACT-RC, okay, itong ACT-RC, it's really working on uh, things na makakabut, especially in education. I, I, I once, uh, once I was given a chance to be working with them when the mother tongue-based multilingual education was just starting, I also had the chance to sit with the people uh, within that one, the research center, and they really talagang mabusisi, tinitignan nila yung lahat, lahat ng detalye, to the extent of going to the actual place and uh, studying through, through the people in that place, at saka, of course, yung mga data, database. No? So, depth and... Uh, in collaboration with that ACT RC, had this uh, primary determining factor. Paano sila uh, naka, how did they come up with the MELCs? This endurance, ang tawag po nila doon. Okay, syempre, endurance from the word endure or enduring, no? So ano ba yung ibig sabihin po nito? Okay, so... The endurance was considered the primary determining factor. So a learning competency is considered enduring if it remains with learners long after a learning, long after a test or unit of study is completed, or if it is useful beyond a single test or unit of study. For example, um, learning competencies like research skills, research, no? research skills, reading comprehension, writing map, uh, writing, map reading, and hypothesis testing, among others. So ito yung examples ng mga competencies na kahit tapos ka na sa pag-aaral mo, tapos, tapos mo nang i-test, uh, kailang, kailangan pa rin. It's really, they, these are really very important. So, yun ang kinonsider nila in identifying our most essential learning competencies. So, the department identified the MELPs across all learning areas through the application of these understandings. Ano po ito? Anong kinawa nila? Uh, yes. So, as a general rule, learning competencies are ito. So, either retained if the learning competency satisfies the endurance criterion, 
which greatly contributes to lifelong learning and is a prerequisite skill to the next grade level. If that is so, the learning competency is retained, no? What about merged and clustered? They also do, did this. If they have the same objective or learning intention, thus can be combined into one comprehensive learning competency. So marami po silang minerge and cluster. That is why, like for example, in Araling Panlipunan, doon po sa dating 500, total number of 500 learning competencies, naging 300 plus sa ELC or essential learning competencies. And when this was further reviewed, uh, naging 200 plus, if I'm not mistaken, for the most essential learning competencies. Also in English and mother tongue in Filipino, these are uh, in the languages, no? In the languages, that is ating curriculum guide, there are a number of domains of literacy, no? Uh, 14 lahat, no? Starting from the first key stage, we have about 14 domains of literacy. Pero ngayon, magtataka ka. Nung mayroon na tayong most essential learning competency na gawa po nilang i-reduce to a very minimal number ang ating learning competencies. And we are assured that kung ano man po yung nandyan, ang naritin, ang kinluster, these are the most essential learning competencies. So the, there were also learning competencies that were dropped. Ibig sabihin, tinanggal. No? Ano yung uh, reason for dropping these LCs. So if they are too specific and the articulation is similar to that of a learning objective, if it is deemed appropriate to be introduced in an earlier quarter or grade level or move to a later quarter or grade level, or if it is recurring. So ibig sabihin po, uh, if we try to look back and try to review the old CG, detalyado masyado, no? To the extent that there are learning competencies na parang objectives na, learning objectives. And there are uh, learning competencies that are really repeated a number of times. Kaya ang ginawa po ng DepEd, tinanggal po nila yung repetition. So, um, minimal lang po yun. Minimal lang po yun in the current uh, key stage, no? Key stage. Pwede siyang mag-recur or mag-repeat sa mga succeeding key stages. Okay. And then some of our learning competencies were also rephrased no, to be more concise. Okay, so let's take note of this. In order to systematize learning activities and effectively address, address the varying needs of learners, and the challenges of instructional deliveries, we are encouraged to unpack the curriculum standards into learning objectives through the MILFs. So unpacking of the curriculum standards is not also new to all of us. I would say all of us, especially the teachers. Kahit na nung CG pa ito, nag-a-unpack na po tayo ng curriculum guide, nag-a-unpack na po tayo ng learning competencies. Ano ba yung unpacking? How do we do unpacking of the curriculum standards? Sometimes, uh, the learning competency is too broad. Sometimes, it's, it's, it looks like parang very general. So, what do we do? We unpack. And we come up with learning objectives. And we do this practically in all learning areas, okay? So we, are, we don't have ample time para itakal po yung unpacking. And the best persons to, uh, to discuss unpacking in the different learning areas are the learning area supervisors. Okay, but... Uh, Let me just give you an example para sa unpacking siguro. What do I have here? So example sa Araling Panlipunan, for example, ang retained LC sa most essential learning competency ay 
natatalakay ang konsepto ng bansa. Ito ay ang uh, Araling Panlipunan 4, Quarter 1. Ito po yung MELC no, na, na retained from the CG. Paano natin to iyan pa? Kasi if we have this as our learning objective, parang it's too ambiguous or it's too general, it's too, it's too encompassing. So we really have to unpack. Ibig sabihin, uh, i-chop po natin. No? I-chop po natin. Paano natin ihahain sa mga bata? You cannot just do it na, yun nga, natatalakay ang konsepto ng bansa. So, paano natin ituturo yun? How do we actually teach it? And how do, do we actually bring it and write it in our uh, weekly home learning plan? So, magiging learning objectives like na ibibigay ang kahulugan ng bansa. Na iisa-isa ang mga katangian ng bansa. Na paghahambing ang kahulugan ng estado at bansa nakapagbibigay ng halimbawa ng bansa, nakabubuo ng sariling kahulugan ng bansa. Okay, so doing this or having this learning objectives, maituturo pa rin natin ng mas mabuti ang learning competency na natatalakay ang konsepto ng bansa. So practically, this happens in all learning areas. So pagtitignan mo yung LC at sasabihin mo, the question is, I'm... Well, I'm referring to the teachers, no? So, sabihin mo, how will I actually teach this to my students? How will I actually make them master this learning competency? So, i-break down mo ngayon to small bits yung learning competency. That is what we mean by unpacking the curriculum. And as I have said, no one else can do this better with you but Uh, the learning area supervisors, and we agreed that we will find time to meet the teachers who are teaching the different learning areas uh, to to talk about yung how to unpack the milks, no? That will happen siguro later on. Okay, so thank you very much. This is the end of the presentation on the most essential learning competencies and As I have said, may I say it again, uh, kailangan, we know this by heart. So we know this by heart so that uh, when we prepare our home weekly, ano, weekly home learning plan, this will be facilitated later by Dr. Min Minerva and Sir Alan. Uh, alam na natin, kabisado na natin ang ating milk, ano yung pagkakasunod so that paano natin i-break down ang ating mga milks, Okay. Now, pahahapyawan ko lang po itong uh, next topic, which is planning for continuing professional development and lack planning. Actually, for those who are participating in the in the LDM course 2, LDM 2 course, pagbabalik ko, LDM 2 course, our master teachers and some representatives from the different districts and our school heads are participating in this LDM course. This is actually module module four. No? So amidst the pandemic or amidst this difficult time, uh, we cannot tarry. No? Hindi makapaghihintay ang pag-grow natin professionally and personally. So we really have to uh, have this commitment to continuously seek for uh, development, professional development. And what can help us or write the guidelines that can help us are, of course, DEPED Order 35, Series 2016, which remains to be the, the Bible of the DEPED sa pagkakanda po ng lab. This is the learning action cell as the case to continuing a uh, uh, school-based continuing professional development professional development for the improvement of teaching and learning. Okay? So, ito ay napakatagal na pong nasa DepEd noong 2016 pa po and all the schools are already conducting LAC. So, by now, alam na po natin yung mga key features or salient features of this DepEd order. So this remains to be our Bible. So we should know this by heart, especially our school heads who serve as our lock leader in lock leaders in in our schools. Okay, and in the LDM, 
nagkaroon kami ng LDM course one, LDM one course. Uh, kami mga supervisors po, and this time mga school heads natin and teachers in school, they are having the LDM two course. Okay, and in this courses, meron po yung discussion ng luck. Okay. Another one that will guide us is the DepEd Memorandum number 50, Series 2020, and this is DepEd Professional Development Priorities. Okay, we also have Continuing Professional Development Guidelines and the NEAP recognized programs. And of course, uh, hindi na ma hindi mawawala ito sa lab, yung individual development plan. And if the schools, uh, school heads can remember last year, yeah. Last year, uh, during the start of the school year, 2019-2020, we uh, released a template, a template on the development of the LAC, no? yung planning for the LAC. Ano yung mga uh, priority topics new for the LAC? Na-spell out po lahat doon sa inyong uh, general... Uh, general plan or general learning action cell plan. Okay? And then, yun yung general, yun, yun lang po yung magsisik po kayo ng signature sa division office. But if you conduct the specific LACs, then no need to uh, seek the signature or to have, the, have that signed. Basta yung general na sign na na po. Now, by this time, let us be guide national development guidelines and we have priority topics no okay so the professional development priorities of school leaders that will result in natin yung kite ni uh, secretary briones Nasaan po itong teachers upskilling and reskilling? Ito po yung letter T, no? Uh, by the way, na-skipan po natin yung I. So yung K, uh, K to 12 review and update. I stands for improvement. Uh, what is that? Improving uh, the learning environment. And then T is teachers upskilling and reskilling. Reskilling, okay? So we have to reskill and we have to upskill. So, nandiyan din yan sa ating kite. So, saan nang galing itong PD priorities? For the teachers, ang priorities ay galing po, ang basihan po ay ang Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. For our school heads, hindi lang po kasi ang teachers ang kailangan mag-upskill and reskill, including the school heads and the supervisors. No, based on the Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads and for Supervisors from the Philippine Professional Standards for Supervisors. Okay, so I think uh, if we look at the list, no, Hello, everyone. We're having technical difficulties. Uh, hindi po natin alam kung sa net or, uh, or I mean sa connection po ba or baka meron tayong konting delay. Pero as a break, pwede tayo ulit magbasa ng ating shout out. Kaya mag, bato na po tayo ng mga shout out. Hit it. Shout out to... 
Sino kaya ang unang maswerte? Yes, to Ma'am Leslie Castaneda. Good morning po. Watching from Turak NHS. Yes, good morning, Ma'am. Ma Turak. Uh, Sir Rahel ito. Um, again, from Sir Edward Torrio. Good morning po. Watching live streaming at wow! Isang malayong school din po ito. Supo Elementary School. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you at good morning din po sa inyong lahat. Another kay Ma'am GK Demaranan. Good morning po. Watching from STC Apunit. Yes, yes. Good morning po mga taga Apunit dyan. Again, another from Ma'am Cynthia Redona. Good morning. Watching from Tanawan Leyte. Wow. Hanggang doon po, Tanawan Leyte. Thank you po so much for listening to us. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo, Ma'am Cynthia Redona. Again, wa to our school head, Ma'am Jeannie Netnet Tuazan Verseles. Hello po sa lahat ng Kobol NHS. Good morning po, Ma'am. Another shout out from Ma'am Cheryl Soriano de Luna. A shout out to Ma'am Gail from Tandok NHS. Good morning po and thank you po. Yes, ayan, shout out from Tandok NHS kay Sir Tomas. Okay, miss na miss ko na rin po siya. Okay, another shout out and I think last na po ito kay Ma'am Rosalinda Garcia Adelia. Good morning po ma'am. A shout out po sa Paluspos ES. Yes, good morning po sa, sa mga taga Paluspos ES. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Grabe, na-amaze ako hanggang late, may nanonood. Thank you so much po sa inyo. And now, Ma'am Lilibet is back. Hello, Ma'am. Okay. Okay. What about my presentation? And so, I'm back. Okay, so. Nakat po ako in my last two slides. Okay, so may I repeat? So where did the, where were for, for the teachers yung priorities po natin ay galing sa Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. For school heads, uh, these were based from the Philippine Professional School uh, Standards for School Heads. And for supervisors, these were taken from the Philippine Professional Standards. supervisors simply come from nowhere but galing pa rin talent as supervisors so pag titignan po natin yung listahan uh, uh, this is in deped order memorandum number 50 series 2020 this is actually an enclosure to that deped memorandum so for the ppst there are seven domains no review lang po natin so we will be moving from proficient teacher to highly proficient to distinguished teacher yun po yung aim po natin no to continuously grow. For school heads naman po, uh, there are uh, five domains and the teachers, uh, the school heads are expected to move from career stage one to career stage two to career stage three and career stage four. And for uh, the supervisors, we have four domains and just the same, uh, just like the school heads, we are expected to move from career stage one to career stage four. So, uh, how do we how do we do this? So, the PD priority shall adhere to the provision provisions defined in item six, number sixteen to eighteen of Deped Orders zero zero. One, series 2020. So the policy states that PD priority shall allow flexibility for specific local needs, priorities, and emerging developments in teacher and school lead. We have priority or we have local needs. No, yung pangangailangan po natin sa mga schools po natin in our district, in our division, then uh, we can be flexible in our plan. So kagaya po nung uh, 
guideline natin last year, even, even though we have the general lock plan, and in that general lock plan, we already identified the, the priority topics. Uh, in cases wherein we need to tackle uh, certain topics na kailangan-kailangan, urgent, no? P pwede natin po siyang isingit. We could be flexible. Okay? So, ito lang po siguro. This is my last slide for, for today. Okay? So, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to our dear uh, uh, Mom Lilibet, Dr. Lilibet A. Magtang, in thoroughly discussing the uh, what is MELX, its existence, its difference, up to its development, as well as the planning for the continuing professional development and block planning. Thank you so much, Mom Lilibet. Moving forward po to our next top. Uh, to discuss strategies, assessment in K-12, and adaptation for learners with disabilities, may I now call in Dr. Vivian V. Ofanda, our EPS in Filipino. Ma'am Ma Vivian? Okay, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Malapit na po ang tanghalian. Oh. Nakakaya na eh. Sa ating pinakamamahal na school vision superintendent, Ma'am Lourdes Servito, Sir Disdado Kayabiab, sa ating si ID Chief, Madam Pidas, Sir Amor, sa ating si SGOD Chief, sa mga ating PSDS, at sa mga minamahal nating mga teachers na nandyan pa rin, nanunood, nakikinig, mag- Magandang magandang umaga po. The topic assigned to me today is about learning strategies and modalities. Okay. Learning strategies means ano ba yung mga uh, strategia na pag, sa pagkatuto sa panhong ito ng pandemia of new normal na ating isasagawa. According to the David Order Number 12, Series 2020, in consolidating the input, we were guided by the principles flowing from the directive that Secretary, the objectives identified by the response plan of the administration's strength, and the reform agenda embodied under Sulong Dukalidad, one of the principles is to ensure learning continuity through K-12 curriculum adjustment. So, patuloy pa rin ang edukasyon sa kabila ng pandemya at sa panahong ito ng tinatawag natin new normal. And learning strategies should be anchored to the learning delivery modalities that was chosen based from the survey. Uh, in adapting strategies, teachers are advised to respect the unique context and diversity of learners in terms of their readiness, learning interests, and learning profiles. So, nandyan pa rin ang differentiated instruction na makikita natin sa ating mga modules that is manifested by giving respectful activities, interesting, engaging, challenging, through on level tasks, above level tasks, and below level tasks to various groups of learners. And this allows groups to access the varying levels so that every learner is appropriately challenged and comes away with pivotal skills and understanding. Kinder to grade three strategies. Ano ba ang ating uh, gagawin sa para matuto ang mga mag-aaral sa kinder grade one and then grade three? The early grade three learners are the most vulnerable to inaccessibility to education. Ibig sabihin, ang mga kinder, paano kaya sila matututo? Grade one, di ba? Hindi naman sila, bawal naman sa atin ng face-to-face. -face. Paano kaya ang pagtuturo magagawa? Sabi nga ni Ma'am Edith kanina, 
mayroong mga nihahandang uh, videos na gagamitin sa grade kinder at saka sa grade 1. The delivery of instruction for them should be anchored on the principles of developmentally appropriate practices. And what is developmentally appropriate practices? Teachers make decisions based on their knowledge of child development, taking into consideration the individual learning differences and social cultural influences uh, in order to provide the best learning and also it should be age appropriate isa alang-alang natin ang mga uh, edad ng mga bata so the learning strategies must be suitable for the age group 5 years old it also it should be individually appropriate it supports the individual child's growth and development. Hindi po pare-pareho ang ating mga mag-aaral. So, uh, activities na ipapagawa natin ay dapat hindi po pareho. And it should also socio-culturally -culture appropriate. Appropriate to the way of life and the social economic status. Example. In online delivery, in online distance learning, we should provide one example video. In grade one class, for example, there is a show and tell live describing their pet, pet, their favorite toy. And what will the parents will do? The parents video records him, uh, their children, write and perform plays, create, cook recipes, conduct interview and submit this through video. Ito po ay magagawa kung ang school, ang, ang kanyang ang delivery, learning delivery mode ay distance, uh, online distance learning. In current kindergarten class, we, we have doing a play-based activities, matching, sorting, classifying. What the, what the parents will do? The parent guardian will call again video and requires the activity and submit the same to the teacher for proper documentation. So, hindi lang po basta ipapanood ang mga video na ito. Kung, uh, hindi, uh, may gagawin po ang mga mag-aaral kasama ang kanilang mga parents or guardian that will serve as their learning facilitator. And this also may serve as informal assessment the continuous and going assessment of the learner in a different developmental domain. Okay, there is also our workbooks and drawing. Use workbooks and paper-based tasks instead of laptops to reduce learner screen time. So, hindi pa rin po mawawala ang paggamit ng workbook o kaya ay activity sheets o kaya ay mojo. Learners may be asked to draw or write on a paper and what, we, uh, what will be the learning facility will do, they take a picture of their completed work and upload the photo to submit and share it with the class. Or pwede rin na uh, ibigay ang mga picture na ito, pwede rin ipret, ibigay sa picture, pagkukuni na yung, alimbawa, may, sa, kung may module na ibigay sa dito sa mga uh, grade 1 to grade 3 pupils. Teachers will present lessons in more than one format in the learning's capacity. This is to address the diverse file of learning comes to understanding and perceive information if teachers, if teachers deliver lessons by text, they need to have a visual or voice recording with it. Sabi ko natin, mga kinder, uh, kinder pupils ito. So, mas matututo sila kapag nakikita nila ang kanilang pinag-aaralan. Oh, likewise, if they deliver lessons by a webinar and teleconference, they are advised to have a text version ready as well. So, early grades learners need adult guidance. That's yung sabi natin, kailangan ang patnubay ng kanilang mga magulang, guardian, o kung wala talaga, pwede ang mga teachers. Oh, sa ngayon, oh, we have module learning at home that may be employed or uh, modular business learning digitized. 
For module learning at home, okay, the guidance of trained para teachers is required. And a facilitator's guide shall be made available to para teachers. So we have orientation also to this. Uh, parents as learning facilitator. How about the learners with disabilities? Ito yung mga special children oh, na naka-enroll sa special education. Paano pa kaya sila matututo in this time of pandemic? Adaptations as, as closed captioning. Oh, we have transcribing to Braille, sign language, interpretation, or providing different format options. It shall also be considered for learners with disabilities. And these materials for learning success, but not limited to self-learning modules or other print materials. Of course, we have TV clips, videos, mostly ito yung gagamitin nila. And online materials that can be designed to be accessible to learners with viewing visual and or, uh, any other impairments. So may inihahanda ang ating uh, EPS uh, sa SPED, kung paano matututo ang ating mga uh, special children. Okay. Ito na po ang ating tampok sa uh, magang ito, assessment. Paano nga ba ang assessment? So we have a review on what is an assessment. Assessment, an integral part of instruction as it determines whether or not the goals of education are being met. Importante talaga ang assessment or evaluation para makita natin kung mayroon bang pagkatuto na nagaganap sa kanilang ginawang pag-aaral through online or through modules. Assessment affects decision about grades, placement, advancement, structural need, curriculum, and in some cases, funding. This is according to George Lucas, 2008. There are some principles of assessment. Assessment should be well aligned to educational standards intended for learners. So we're assessing uh, the pupils if they perform or nagawa ba nila ang mga kasanayan na kanila uh, andoon yung module. Formative assessment is to scaffold students in the summative assessment. It means that uh, formative assessment, we know that it, it, it is recorded, but it's not graded. Tutulong lang siya para uh, the pupil will work better in summative assessment. Assessment should become more like instruction. Okay? Assessment results needs to be used by teachers to help students uh, better. Because uh, the results of the assessment is the feedback whether uh, the pupils learn. Kung hindi, kung hindi maganda ang resulta sa kanilang formative test o sa kanilang summative test, mag-reflect ang teacher kung uh, tama ba ang kanyang ginawang uh, learning strategies in this time. Assessment is not used to treat and intimidate students. If the, uh, this apply when there is a face-to-face learning. In the debit order number 12, series 2020, it is said that classroom assessment, namely formative and summative assessment, shall be conducted by the teacher to track and measure learners' progress and to adjust instruction accordingly. Adjust instruction accordingly. It is, it is uh, based or dependent from the result of the assessment. This shall be done in paper based offline or online assessment format, whichever is appropriate to the context and needs of learner to enable them to participate fully in assessment process and assess fairly. So paper based offline or online assessment formal. The learning outcomes in the form of knowledge, skills, and strategies will be assessed. Hindi natin ma, ma itatatuwa yan na dapat talaga the learning outcomes will be assessed or else hindi natin alam kung mayroon bang pagkatuto na nangyari. Learners shall prepare their portfolio. It could be 
a portfolio to include legal works and performances and products, whether hard copy, soft copy, or combination of both. Kung babasahin po natin ang ating mga module, lalong lalo na sa junior high school as sa senior high school, mababasa doon na may mayroong uh, pagsulat ng talata, pagsulat ng ng tula, pag ito ang magiging laman ng kanilang portfolio. This because they are the written works and products of their learning. Whether it could be hard copy or soft copy to be passed to the teachers. The portfolio or e-portfolio content will be assessed okay, using rubrics. Again, pag nabasa ninyo ang um, ating mga modules, meron doon mga kasamang rubrics. Kung walang kasamang rubo, ang teacher ng kanyang sariling rubrics. Okay, that capture the evidence of learning. And that is time is of parents also and other adults, including the community leaders, aside from the teachers, they also considered in the assessment. So isa alang-alang pa rin natin ang mga testimony ng mga parent kasi sila ang kasama ng mga mag-aaral sa kanilang pag-aaral. Kung, kung hindi nila maintindihan, sabi nga nila, pwede nilang uh, i-chat or i-message ang kanilang mga teachers. So a learning portfolio, e-portfolio is a post for postful collections of the students' work that comprehensively demonstrates not only academic achievements but also the effort toward by the students as well as the demonstrated progress in achieving learning outcomes. Uh, maraming nagsasabi, paano daw, oh, ito yung quote-unquote, paano daw kung hindi, hindi yung bata ang gumawa ng kanyang mga sulatin. Dito nasusukat o dito natin natises ang pinatawag nila ting value of honesty. Okay? So the e-portfolio is a digital collection of student work samples where teachers can include the use of technology-based tools and that's where document graphics, sounds, and videos. So pwede rin hard copy and soft copy. Where face-to-face -face learning and blended learning is possible, or if possible, kung summative tests will be administered in school. Sabi dito, if possible. For learners who are on distance learning, summative tests may be administered when physical classes shall be allowed in the respective respective areas. Hindi pa natin alam kung kailan mangyayari. So, as of now, uh, ang magagawa natin ay ang pag, pagkakaroon ng formative assessment. Uh, we should take note also that national examinations are are a necessary part of quality runs and provide important feedback on the system's performance as regards curricular reforms, professional development of teachers, and educational le leaders. So, ibig sabihin, meron pa rin ang ating math. O, kung kailan, hindi pa rin masasabi, kaya kailangan talaga na magkaroon ng pagkatuto ang ating mga mag -aar. Kung sakaling may kakaroon ng national examination. That the administration of national examinations shall continue amidst COVID-19. Talagang so, sabi natin, tuloy ang pagkatutu, tuloy ang edukasyon sa kabila ng pandemya ng COVID-19. The Ed shall issue specific guidelines on assessments taking into consideration the physical limitation imposed by the COVID-19. Okay. In the matrix of requirements of the distance learning delivery modalities, kinuha natin ang assessment na ito. Ano ba ang uh, gagawin natin sa, uh, halimbawa, in different learning modalities. For example, in online distance learning, informative tests administered in the form of online learning class, of course, it is an online distance learning, so it is in a form of learning, online learning tasks. Summative assessment, either online or in school, when physical classes are permitted. Maybe we could use online platforms like quizzes, 
Google Forms, whether it's of other sites as Moodle and Schoology. Wala pa tayo dito sa Moodle and Schoology. In online distance learning, okay, somehow we, we conduct some of the tests. Tests to be conducted in a time-restricted manner. So the learner is being monitored live via oh, Zoom, ano pa, Google Meet, while taking the test. Summative assessment to be conducted sa Barangay Community Learning Center or school. It is when feasible and allowed. Okay. If it's not allowed, uh, it is attributed online. For performance or product-based assessment, nandiyan pa rin natin ang nating portfolio. In modular distance learning, dalawa po ito, the digital uh, modular distance learning. Ano ang, ano ang papagaw natin sa format? Test. Okay, nandiyan pa rin yung ang exercises, uh, this activities, activity sheets in digital module. While in summative test, it is also again conducted in Barangay Community Learning Center when feasible and allowed. So mostly makikita natin, ang magagawa talaga natin ay formative test. Oh, nandito tayo sa module, uh, modular distance learning printed wherein we have the printed uh, modules. In our printed modules, there are sizes and enrichment activities are indicated, or this is also indicated in the weekly home learning plan. So, makikita natin sa ating mga module that we have uh, K2 correction. Kasi nga formatted test. Titignan nila, at the end, kung tama ba na, i-confirm nila if their answer is correct. Kaya meron tayong susi ng pagka- uh, uh, key answer sa ating mga modules. While summative test in the module printed to be conducted again in Barangay uh, Community Learning Center if allowed. Okay. Okay. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Edit Kaniya, we will have in the future the television and video. Okay. How we could assess na nanood sila, magkaiba yung pinanood ng mga bata, hindi yung talaga yung uh, pinapanood ng teacher. So we will provide activity sheets for TV lessons, exercises, and enrichment activities in the SMS. So this also uh, guided by the uh, learning facilitator, whether the parents, the guardian, or Whoever uh, the person be with the people. And formative assessment incorporated in SMS or stated in the weekly home learning plan. And, uh, weekly home learning plan will be tackled this afternoon by um, Dr. Minerva Munoz. Okay, how about summative test in TV video? It is again conducted in feasible and allowed. Iba naman itong TV, video, radio-based instruction. TV and video, uh, SLM-based, uh, again, we have activity sheets. Who will uh, do the activity sheets? Of course, the teachers. Okay. Activity sheets, whether exercises, investment activities, uh, these activities, activity sheets, Depended, uh, depending on the uh, capability of the pupils. We have simple, we have uh, simple, uh, there are some simple exercises, challenging, or the en uh, enrichment activities. Again, summative test, it will be conducted in feasible and allowed. Radio-based instruction. Same, we will have activity sheets for radio-based instruction exercises, enrichment activities in the self-learning modules, formative assessment incorporated in the self-learning modules or stated in a weekly home learning plan. Again, the summative test will be conducted when feasible 
and allowed. Okay. So, kung titignan natin, kung susumain natin, sa assessment, it is more on formative assessment and having the portfolio o e or uh, e portfolio to be submitted by the pupils and by students to the teachers. Okay. So, together, we just face the challenges of the new normal. Formal with a virtual formal courage, faith, adventure, and discovery. Ibig sabihin, tanggapin natin ang hamon ng new normal, mahirap man, madali, kung nandoon pa rin ang ating uh, sipag, at nandyan pa rin ang ating uh, passion sa pagtuturo, katulad ng old normal. Okay, maraming maraming pong salamat. Sana po ay nandyan pa kayo at uh, hindi pa po nagugutom. Alright, maraming maraming po. Kung salamat sa inyo, Ma'am uh, Dr. Vivian Ofanda. Sana po lahat kayo uh, nag-take down ulit ng notes. Bakit? Kasi um, nag-provide po sila ng strategies, adaptation, at lalong-lalo na po na-explain sa atin gaano ka-importante ang assessment. Dahil sa assessment, doon natin makikita kung talaga bang natututo ang mga bata kahit na po ganito ang ating sitwasyon. Alright. So moving forward para uh, hindi po tayo mag-over time for lunch, uh, to discuss the next topic, which is ALS curriculum via AVT by Dr. Elizabeth T. Vistro. Uh, may I call in Sir Roldan to please play the video of Mom Elizabeth? <laughs> The overall goal of the Learning Continuity Plan for us is to sustain the gains of the Duterte administration in the delivery of quality and relevant second chance basic education programs for out-of-school youth and adults while ensuring the health and safety of both learners and teachers during the COVID-19 pandemic and in the transition to normal. The ALS K-12 curriculum will be further enriched and made relevant to address cross-cutting and emerging issues. The learning goals and the recognized prior learning of an ALS will determine the competencies in the ALS curriculum that will be given focus in learning activities and the amount of time needed for coverage and mastery. Training programs that will be relevant as you move forward post-COVID, such as Entrepreneurship in Industry 4.0, Digital Citizenship, Health Promotion, and Agribusiness will be made available. To address the issue of social distancing and limited learner access to internet, ALS teachers shall be encouraged to utilize the following options for the continuance of ALS learning interventions. Number one, Blended approach for advanced elementary and secondary level learners. Number two, face-to-face -face learning sessions for lower elementary and basic literacy level learners. Number three, radio-based instruction or RBI or broadcast of ALS, Ibang Plaza TV episodes from Knowledge Channel. Number four, online learning for learners with gadgets and access to the internet. The existing modules for the advanced elementary and secondary levels are instructionally designed to support self-learning. They are grouped into manageable lessons with pre- and post-tests, have self-directed learning activities, and are written in conversational or interactive style. These modules can serve as a primary source of content delivery. Other available materials can also be used for supplemental learning. 
Learners can report to the Community Learning Center or CLC on an agreed staggered schedule to pick up copies of modules, which they can study independently throughout the week. During their weekly CLC visit, they shall return completed modules for use by other learners. ALS teachers will need to devise a modified library system to manage the borrowing of modules by learners. The ALS teacher's task is to design weekly learning plans or agreements with their individual learners. The existing individual learning agreement template can be used for this purpose. The agreement shall cover specific learning objectives for the week and identify the modules and resources to be accessed, worksheets, radio, TV, internet, and other learning activities that can support attainment of these learning goals. The ALS teachers shall assign weekly assessment tasks for evaluating their learning progress. The module post test can be used for this purpose and supplemented by other teacher-made assessments. The module post test can be supervised by the ALS teacher during their weekly CLC visit or by parents, peer learners, or learner siblings. It is important for learners to practice their writing and higher order thinking skills. To achieve this, ALS teachers can send questions via text message or other messaging platforms that learners can answer. Learners will be given writing tasks on the modules and should be encouraged to submit a weekly written learning reflection. The writing tasks are expected to train learners to practice higher order thinking skills as they document the new knowledge and skills they have gained and what parts of the module they did not fully understand and need additional help for from their teacher. These reflection papers and other learning outputs should be discussed with the ALS teacher during the weekly CLC visit. During the week, ALS teachers may provide remote learning support by answering queries, giving feedback, and providing social-emotional support to learners through social media platforms. Peer learning can also be introduced. Learners can organize online or social media groups. If learners live near each other and their LGU allows small gatherings, they could meet in pairs to discuss their learning activities. The working folder or portfolio will continue to play a very important role in ALS. The teacher will review the portfolio outputs, learning journal or notebook entries, and reflection papers with individual students and agree on the following week's learning contract deliverables and learning strategies. Basic literacy and lower elementary level learners need more face-to-face -face facilitator aided support than advanced elementary and secondary ALS learners. It is difficult to provide this learning support remotely given the weak literacy skills of basic literacy and lower elementary level learners. ALS teachers who wish to continue offering basic literacy and lower elementary A&E classes will have to conduct these face-to-face -face learning sessions on an agreed schedule with learners in an appropriate learning environment. ALS teachers will need to prepare a class program and set a maximum number of learners per session that complies with the physical distancing requirements. If the learning center or location is too small to accommodate all learners, the class may be divided into subgroups with different schedules. Radio-based instruction or broadcast of all Ibang Plaza TV episodes from Knowledge Channel. For RBI, DepEd has developed some audio materials and scripts that ALS teachers can access, download, and store. ALS teachers are also encouraged to develop their own radio scripts based on the ALS K-12 basic education curriculum to be quality assured by the school's division ALS focal person and learning resource supervisor. They would then need to coordinate with their local community radio to secure airtime for broadcasts of radio-based materials. TV, such as the Knowledge Channel, may be a source of supplemental learning given the lack of internet access in some areas. Knowledge Channel videos can also be downloaded for free from their website. Some of these videos have accompanying lesson guides. Online learning for learners with gadgets and access to the internet. Learners with ICT equipment such as computers, 
mobile phones or tablets, and other digital devices and have access to the internet can continue learning through the DAPID Commons, DAPID LR portal, the ICT for All application developed by UNICEF with DAPID ALS teachers and the Aral Muna application. DAPID Commons can be accessed for free through smart and globe networks. ALS teachers can also save the soft copies of ALS modules in their mobile phones or mobile devices of their learners, if available or where circumstances allow. With support from partners, innovations will be introduced to update and improve the DAPED learning resource portals while also securing the integrity of online assessments. For the conduct of accreditation and equivalency test, the Bureau of Education Assessment shall release further guidance on its administration. To better prepare the ALS learners in the a &E test, the ALS Task Force has developed an a &E readiness test to be administered in the CLCs or an agreed venue by the ALS teachers and learners. A memorandum shall be issued on the details of said test. Teacher Training and Support A series of capacity building workshops shall be rolled out for DEPED field officials and ALS teachers on how to implement ALS 2.0 during emergencies and in the new normal. Learner Support for the learners, guidance and career support services shall be introduced to help address academic and psychological issues affecting learning. Such services will help prepare learners for their options after undergoing ALS, specifically in their transition to employment, self-employment, entrepreneurship, or continuing education. Learning Environment it is proposed that ALS learners use existing formal school facilities not only to ensure that social distancing protocols are observed, but also to provide access to WASH facilities for ALS learners. For CLCs that will still be used, disinfecting and sanitizing products should be provided. All right, that's all for our ELS concern or ELS curriculum. Uh, this will end our morning session, and we hope still that uh, on our on our afternoon session you all be back. Uh, how many participants are we? Around six hundred. Thank you so much for the six hundred participants. I hope uh, more than six hundred po ulit tayo. Mamayang hapon. Uh, again, before I end this morning session, let me remind you, uh, please uh, tune in 15 minutes before 1 p.m. this afternoon. And later, we shall be uh, this uh, posting or uh, saying to you the evaluation link. This will be uh, <clears throat> the basis of your attendance for this webinar session. So again, happy lunch. See you this afternoon. And please tune in 15 minutes before 1 p.m. Thank you so much and merry lunch. Bye.
what symbol would be more appropriate to a region that strives to rise from all the social, political, and environmental challenges of the time? The strength and power being displayed by Akaradao shows the perseverance of one to till the land and reduce yields. With its enduring strength and unwavering industry, the Carabao remained as the farmer's best friend and legendary partner of all times. The durability of the bamboo with the outer layer as dense and strong make it flexible. This flexibility allows it to be resilient, which can withstand much pressure. The support that Pilo gets from the bamboo reminds us not only of flexibility, but also of endurance and humility that could inspire the new generation of learners in the region. The horns of Pilo are powerful emblems that highlight the courage of the region to work collaboratively in achieving relevant, liberating, and inclusive education for all, ensuring that all march towards the full realization of mantra, Sulong Edukalidad. These caravel and the bamboo appropriately symbolize Department of Education Region 1. He shall be named Pilo. His name aptly represents Pangasinan, Ilocos, and La Union, the provinces of Region 1. Pilo was the brainchild of our regional director, Dr. Tolentino G. Aquino, and was illustrated by Rodel Remindo of Don Eulogio de Guzman Memorial National High School, La Union Division. Pilo is the official icon of that at Regional Office 1. The two sturdy standing horns with the 14 lines represent the Fordin Schools Division offices of Ilocos Region, composed of five provincial schools division offices, Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, La Union, Pangasinan 1, and Pangasinan 2, and the nine city schools division offices, Alaminos, Patap, Pandon, Dagupan, Lawag, San Carlos, San Fernando, Ordaneta, and Viga. Furthermore, Pilo wears Annabelle, a locally produced woven tapestry cloth which provides warmth to Pilo as the region attempts to preserve its rich culture. It echoes ingenuity and patience of the people of the region. This is Pilo, the fitting symbol of resilient, dedicated, and hard-working people of Region 1. Ang distance learning ba ang tanging gagamitin learning delivery modality? Ang distance learning modality na pinili at napagpasyahang gamitin ng bawat paaralan ay maaaring mabago kung kinakailangan at posible batay sa, ngunit hindi limitado sa sumusunod. Mga protocol sa kalusugan at pisikal na paglayo at iba pang patnubay na itinalaga ng kanilang lugar. Pagkakaroon ng pampublikong sasakyan. Pagbabago sa kalagayang pangkalusugan ng mag-aaral. Mga nakitang kakulangan ng learning delivery modality base sa resulta ng isinagawang pagtataya sa mag-aaral. Mga indikasyon ng pagpapabaya at pang-aabuso sa ginamit na modalidad mula sa pagmumonitor at pagbisita sa bahay. Man sa napiling learning modality, Maaari bang gumamit ng iba pang learning materials mula sa ibang source? Hanggat maaari ang pangunahing gagamitin sa pagkatuto ay ang self-learning modules o tulong aral na ginawa at nilinang ng kagawaran para sa implementasyon ng alternative delivery modes. Ang mga self-learning modules na ito ang pangunahing sanggunian sa paglikha ng iba't ibang pang nilalamang format gaya ng pero hindi limitado sa digital formats ng flat PDF at electronic.
Electronic Self-Learning Module, Video Pang Edukasyon, Radio, at iba pa. Ang mga ito ay i-upload sa Learning Resources Portal at DepEd Commons. Nakabatay lahat ang mga ito sa natukoy na Most Essential Learning Competencies o pinakamahalagang kasanayang pampagkatuto. Ano ang gagawin sa mga mag-aaral na hindi nakatutugon sa itinakdang pangangailangan sa bawat paksang aralin? Maaaring mabigyan ng tulong gabay o intervensyon ang mga mag-aaral na hindi nakatutugon sa itinakdang pangangailangan sa bawat paksang aralin. Ang guro o inatas ng tagapagtaloy ay kasama sa pagsubaybay at pagtatala ng pag-unlad ng bawat mag-aaral. Paano naman kung hindi makapaglaan ng oras ang mga magulang para matulungan at magabayan ang kanilang mga anak sa kanilang pag-aaral? Para sa mga mag-aaral na walang gumagabay sa kanilang pag-aaral, may mga guro o cluster learning facilitator na bibisita sa mga bahay habang sinusunod ang protocol ng social distancing. Basta't gawing bukas sa kungnayan sa guro sa pamamagitan ng text messages, phone or live chats o iba pang paraan ng komunikasyon upang sila'y magapayan at matulungan. Sino ang maaaring tumulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral? Kung walang guro, maaaring sino mang membro ng pamilya at iba pang stakeholder na nasa komunidad o mga sinanay bilang tagapagtaloy ang maaaring tumulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral. Sino ang magtatakda ng schedule ng mga mag-aaral? Ihahanda po ng paaralan ang weekly home learning plan at class program alinsunod sa iminungkayang screen time para sa mga mag-aaral. Gagamit ba ng iisang format ang guro sa paglalahat ng kanyang paksa? Ganito po ang kasagutan dyan. Maaaring ilahat ng guro ang kanyang mga paksa sa iba't ibang format batay sa kakayahan ng mag-aaral upang matugunan ang diverse learning profile ng mga mag-aaral batay sa kanilang pananaw at pakunawa ng impormasyon. At yan po ang mga katanungan at kasagutan hinggil sa usaping pang-edukasyon para sa panorang taong 2020-2021. Muli, ito po si Teacher Rocky. Maraming salamat. Nawa ang video nito ay nakatulong sa ating lahat. Sama-sama po tayo sa pagpapatupad nito at sama-sama rin tayo sa pagsulog ng Edu Kalidad. Magandang araw! Kamusta po kayong lahat? Ako po ang inyong lingkod, Teacher Rocky, na maghahatid sa inyo ng impormasyon tungkol sa panukalang strategiya sa pagpapatupad ng distance learning delivery modalities sa panuraang taong 2020-2021. Ang video nito ay andog po sa atin ng Department of Education, Region 1. Kaya tara at ating alamin ang mga impormasyon ito. Magkakaroon ba ng face-to-face -face na pag-aaral sa taong 2020-2021? Ayon sa Pangulo, walang magaganap na face-to-face -face na pagtuturo hanggat walang magagamit na bakuna laban sa COVID-19. Nakasaat ito sa DepEd Memorandum Curriculum Instruction Series of 2020, number 162. Kung sakaling magkakaroon na ng bakuna, agad bang ipagtutupad ang pag-aaral na face-to-face? -face? Ganito po, kapag nagkaroon na ng bakuna, ang mga magulang at mag-aaral ang magpapasya kung ipagpapatuloy pa rin nila ang pag-aaral sa distance learning. Maaari din kasi itong ipagpatuloy basta't nakasisigurong may magtuturo at gagabay sa kanilang pag-aaral sa loob ng tahanan. Ano ang distance learning? Ang distance learning ay tumutukoy sa sumusunod. Number one, modular distance learning na kung saan ito ay maaaring Digital Modular Distance Learning o Printed Modular Distance Learning. Number two, Online Distance Learning. Number three, Television Video Radio-Based Instruction na may tatlong kategorya. TV Video Self-Learning Module Base, TV Video Most Essential Learning Competencies Map, at Radio-Based Instruction. Number four, Blended Distance Learning. Ano ang Modular Distance Learning? Ang Modular Distance Learning ay modality na maaaring Digital Modular Distance Learning o Printed Modular Distance Learning. 
Sino ang maaaring sumailalim sa Digital Modular Distance Learning o Printed Modular Distance Learning? Ganito po, ang mga mag-aaral na mayroong kagamitan sa bahay tulad ng laptop, desktop, o tablet ay maaaring sumailalim sa Digital Modular Distance Learning. Gagamitin ang self-learning modules na nasa digital formats gaya ng flat PDF, educational video, audio lessons, electronic self-learning modules, at iba pang maaaring ikopya or ilagay sa CD, DVD, USB flash drive, o pen drive. Printed self-learning modules naman ang gagamitin ng mag-aaral na nasa printed modular distance learning. Maaari bang magkaroon ng online distance learning? Maaari po. Maaaring ipatupad ito sa mga paaralan kung saan ang mga guru at mag-aaral ay mayroong digital devices, gaya ng laptops, tablets, smartphones, at desktop computer na may internet connection. Hahayaan ba namin na online ng walong oras ang aming anak para sa kanyang online classes? Huwag po kayong mag-alala. Ikukonsidera ang screen time guidelines kada edad. Batay sa rekomendasyon ng American Academy for Pediatrics at World Health Organization, iminumungkahi ang sumusunod. Para sa kindergarten, pinakamahaba na ang isang oras sa isang araw. Para naman sa grade 1 to 5, pinakamahaba na ang isang oras at kalahati sa isang araw. Para sa grade 6 to 8, pinakamahaba na ang dalawang oras sa isang araw. At para naman sa grade 9 to 12, Pinakamahaba na ang upat na oras sa loob ng isang araw na kung saan dalawang oras sa umaga at dalawang oras naman sa hapon. Saan isasagawa ang implementasyon ng television radio-based instruction? Ang television radio-based instruction ay ipatutupad sa mga lugar na may access sa television network at radio station na makatutulong sa pagsasahing papawid ng programa ng DepEd TV radio-based lessons. Paano malalaman kung kailan magkakaroon ng pag-aaral sa TV radio-based instruction? Magbibigay ang paaralan ng schedule sa mga mag-aaral, gayon din sa mga magulang at learning facilitators para sa broadcast schedule ng pag-aaral. Ang mag-aaral ay manunood ng educational TV program at makikinig sa radio program na pinamumunuan ng DepEd. Ano naman ang blended distance learning? Ang blended distance learning ay kombinasyon ng alinman sa mga subcategory ng distance learning. Ang kombinasyon ito ay maaari, ngunit hindi limitado sa online distance learning at printed modular distance learning. Online Distance Learning at Digital Modular Distance Learning Online Distance Learning at Television Video Self-Learning Module Base Online Distance Learning at Television Video Most Essential Learning Competences Mapped Modular Distance Learning at Television Video Self-Learning Module Base Modular Distance Learning at Television Video Most Essential Learning Competences Mapped at iba pa. At yan po ang mga katanungan at kasagutan hinggil sa usaping pang-edukasyon para sa panorang taong 2020-2021. Muli, ito po si Teacher Rocky. Maraming salamat na wa ang video nito ay nakatulong sa ating lahat. Sama-sama po tayo sa pagpapatupad nito at sama-sama rin tayo sa pagsulog ng Edu Kalidad. Magandang araw po. Alam namin na marami kayong agam-agam tungkol sa kung ano nga ba ang mangyayari sa pasukan ngayong taon. Iyan po ang dahilan kung bakit ako naririto. Ako nga po pala si Sir Dexter ang maghahatid sa inyo ng ilang impormasyong dapat nating malaman bilang paghahanda sa darating na pasukan. Bago ang lahat, ang video ito ay hatid sa atin ng Department of Education Region 1. At narito na ang ilang bagay na dapat nating malaman bilang paghahanda sa darating na pasukan. May bayad ba ang mga modules? Ang mga ADM modules o self-learning materials ay libre. Ang mga ito ay sadyang inihanda ng DepEd para sa mga mag-aaral ng walang bayad. 
iwasan lamang na marumihan o mapunit ang bawat pahina ng module at kailangan gumamit ng hiwalay na sagutang papel. Paano matatanggap ng mga mag-aaral ang mga modules at activity sheets? Ganito po, ang mga paaralan ay may school learning continuity plans kung saan nakalatag ang gabay at proseso sa pamamahagi ng mga module o activity sheets na kakailanganin ng inyong anak. Tiyak na ito ay ipapaalam sa inyo bilang magulang o tagapag-alaga ng mag-aaral. Ang mga paaralan ay maaaring magpatulong sa barangay, local government units, non-government organizations, at concerned citizens para sa distribusyon ng mga kagamitang pampagkatuto at sa pagtatalaga ng drop center. Paano po namin masisiguro ang kalidad ng pagtuturo sa ganitong setup? Ang paglikha ng DELCP ng DepEd ay isang patunay na ginagawa ng kagawaran ang mga nararapat na paraan upang hindi masakripisyo ang pagkatuto ng inyong anak sa kabila ng pinagdadaan ng pandemya. Katulong ang mga tanggapang pangrehiyon at pangsangay, gayon din ang mga paaralan. Lumikha ang DepEd ng iba't ibang kagamitang pampagtuturo na tutugon sa pangangailangan ng inyong mga anak. Gaano kahanda ang mga guru at ang paaralan upang masiguro ang pagkatuto at kaligtasan ng aking anak? Sa kabila ng pandemya, ginanap ang Brigada Eskwela kung saan ang focus ng programa ay para sa pagkahandang gagawin ng mga paaralan para sa darating na school year gaya ng mga sumusunod. Siguraduhin ligtas ang mga paaralan sa banta ng COVID-19. Maghahanda ang bawat paaralan ng mga kagamitang pamproteksyon gaya ng thermal scanner, hand sanitizing equipment, at mga kagamitang pang-disinfectant, face masks, vitamina para sa mga guro at mag-aaral, at iba pa. At magsasagawa ng orientasyon sa mga magulang kaugnay sa kasalukuyang sitwasyon at kung anong paghahanda ang ginagawa upang matiyak ang edukasyon at kaligtasan ng inyong anak. Kailan ako dapat makipag-ugnayan sa guro o paaralan kaugnay sa pag-aaral ng aking anak? Iminumong kahi po ang madalas na pagkikipag-ugnayan sa paaralan at sa mga guro ng inyong anak. Maaari sa pamamagitan ng tawag, text message, messenger, email o pasabi sa barangay kaugnay sa pagkuha at pagsusumite ng mga module. Palaging itanong sa kanila ang mga pangangailangang pang-akademiko at maging ang pag-unlad ng pagkatuto ng anak at sa pagsasagawa ng mga nakatakdang gawain sa bahay. Bukod sa paggabay sa aking anak sa pagkatuto, ano pa ang maitutulong ko sa kanyang pag-aaral? Kayo po ay hinihikayat na maging mapagmasid sa pag-aaral ng inyong anak upang kaagad na matugunan ang suliranin sa kanyang pagkatuto. Itala lamang ang inyong obserbasyon at mga tanong ng anak kaugnay sa pinag-aaralang module at isang guni o ibahagi sa guro ang mga naobserbahang pagbabago sa pagkatuto ng anak. Maaari bang gamitin ng aking anak ang lahat ng modality sa kanyang pagkatuto? Opo, ang mga iba't ibang modality ay nailatag upang magamit ng mag-aaral kung ano ang pinakaangkop na pagkatuto para sa kanyang sitwasyon. Ang mahalaga, natatamo ng mag-aaral ang kasanayang dapat matutuhan sa isang partikular na aralin. Mabibigyan ba ang aking anak ng pagkakataong tapusin ang mga module na hindi niya natapos? Opo, maaaring mabigyan po ang inyong anak ng pagkakataong tapusin ang module kung may sapat at katanggap-tanggap na dahilan kung bakit hindi niya naipasa sa taktang oras ang gawain. Makipag-ugnayan lamang po kayo kaagad sa guro ng inyong anak at sabihin ang dahilan kung bakit hindi niya naipasa ang pangangailangang gawain. Kung nagkataong walang kuryente sa oras na dapat manood ang aking anak para sa kanyang leksyon, paano niya matututuhan ng aralin? Huwag po kayong mag-alala. May mga nakalimbag na module na maaaring gamitin na hindi nangangailangan ng teknolohiya o kuryente. Maaari ding makakuha ng link o file ng mga angkop na digitized materials sa kanyang guro. Kinakailangan lamang 
na may parating sa madaling panahon ang sitwasyon sa kanyang guro upang mabigyan ng ibang paraan ang pagkatuto ng mag-aaral. Maaari ko bang maanyayahan ang kanyang guro sa aming bahay kung may aralin na hindi kayang sagutin? Maaari po. Kung may aralin na hindi kayang sagutin, maaaring isang guni muna sa guro upang makapagbigay siya ng ibang intervensyon at hindi na niya kailangang pumunta sa inyong bahay. Subalit, kung sadyang kailangan at hindi maiiwasan ng home learning sessions, ay marapat na gawin ito sa araw na may pasok or school days at kailangan sumunod ang bawat panig sa protocol na itinagda ng DOH at IATF. Paano kung wala akong sapat na kasanayan upang tulungan ng aking anak sa kanyang pag-aaral? Huwag pong mabahala. Isang guni o ipaalam sa guro upang mas mapaigting ang pagsubaybay ng guro sa inyong anak. Maaaring magpatulong sa iba pang miyembro ng pamilya, kamag-anak, kapit-bahay, malapit na kaibigan ng pamilya o kabarangay. Anong tulong o gabay ang maaaring ilapit o isang guni sa mga opisyal ng barangay kaugnay sa pag-aaral ng aking anak? Maaari pong lapitan ang barangay health workers, barangay poso, barangay kagawad na nakatalaga sa edukasyon at community facilitators upang mamahala sa paghahatid at pagkuha ng mga module. Ang anumang usaping pangkalusugan ng mag-aaral ay maaari ring isang guni sa mga barangay health center. Makakatulong din ang pagkakaroon ng hotlines para sa mas mabilis at organisadong pagbibigay ng mga module. Narito naman po ang mga impormasyon tungkol sa kindergarten. Ano ang gagamitin ng aking anak na nasa kindergarten? Narito po. May nakahandang kindergarten activity sheets mula sa BASA Pilipinas at mga nakalimbag o printed at nakadigital na forma ng self-learning module na ginawa para sa kindergarten upang gamitin. May mga aralin din na nakavideo at nakaodyo at mga interaktibong gawain gaya ng awitin, rima, tula at play-based na gawain. Mayroon pang karagdagang activity sheets na inihanda kaugnay sa programang Aral sa Bahay ang rehiyon. Paano ako makakatulong sa pagtuturo ng aking anak na nasa kindergarten? Ito po ay sa pamamagitan ng mga sumusunod. Sa bawat module ay may mga paraan kung paano ituturo ang aralin. Magkakaroon din kayo ng webinar upang magabayan ang inyong anak sa pagtatuto. Lilikha din ang guro ng chat group upang ipaabot at maturuan ang mga magulang sa wastong gawain at pamamaraan. Magkakaroon din tayo ng tulong mula sa radyo at telebisyon para sa RTV-based na pagtuturo. Paano naman ang mother tongue? Iba ang mother tongue ng aking anak sa early grade, hindi Ilocano o Pangasinan. May module bang aakma sa kanya? Huwag pong mag-alala dahil opo, kailangan lamang na isang guni o ipaalam kaagad sa paaralang papasukan ng inyong anak upang mabigyan ng agarang solusyon ang bagay na ito. Papaano naman sa SPED or Special Education? Ano ang gagamitin ng mga mag-aaral na may kapansanan? May mga kagamitan tulad ng self-learning modules, TV clips, videos, online materials, braille, at mga pamamaraan sa pagsasanay ng kumpas o sign language na pwedeng gamitin na angkop sa kanilang mga kapansanan o pangangailangan. Paano namin maaalagaan ang mental health at well-being ng aming mga anak sa ganitong panahon? Maaari pong gawin ang mga sumusunod. Ang pagtatakda ng mga gawain na katutulong upang maiwasan ang pagbababad sa computer. Maaari din ang pagbibigay ng iba't ibang gawain at pagtatakda ng pagsasagawa. Magkaroon lamang po tayo ng malawak na pangunawa at pagpapakita ng kalinga at pagmamahal. Pakikisali din sa iba't ibang webinar kaugnay rito ay maaaring makatulong. At syempre, wastong paggabay at pagiging huwarang magulang at guro. Narito naman ang mga impormasyon para sa Alternative Learning System or ALS. Paano po maipapamahagi ang ALS modules kung wala pong face-to-face? -face? Sino ang kukuha at saan ito kukunin? 
magkakaroon po ng lingguhang anunsyo sa mga CLCs or Community Learning Centers sa barangay at paaralan para sa schedule ng pagkuha o pamamahagi at pagsusumiti ng module. Dito rin malalaman ang mga karagdagang gabay o instruksyon kaugnay sa pag-aaral. Mangyaring makipag-ugnayan sa guro o paaralan kaugnay sa usaping ito. Ano po ang unang requirement bago makapag-enroll sa ALS program? Narito po. Ang mag-aaral na nagnanais magpatuloy sa ALS ay kinakailangang dumaan sa Functional Literacy Test upang mataya ng guro kung saan level magsisimula ang guro sa interbensyong ibibigay. Paano isasagawa ang learning intervention sa mga ALS learners? Ganito po. Ang ALS Mobile Teacher ay gagamit ng ilang paraan upang mabigyan ng sapat na gabay ang kanyang mga mag-aaral. Maliban sa mga module na gagamitin, maaaring makipag-ugnayan sa pamamagitan ng cellphone gaya ng tawag, text, chat o video call. Kung walang budget, gagawa ng liham ang mag-aaral sa kanyang guro upang iparating ang anumang usapin kaugnay sa kanyang pag-aaral. Ang liham ay maaaring ilagak at kukunin sa mga CLCs or Community Learning Centers. Para sa mga karagdagang impormasyon, mangyaring sumangguni lamang sa DepEd Order No. 12 Series of 2020 at DepEd Order No. 17 Series of 2020. At iyan na po ang mga karagdagang impormasyong dapat nating malaman bilang paghahanda sa darating na pasukan. Muli, ang video ito ay hatid sa atin ng Department of Education, Region 1. Ramdam po namin ang inyong mga pinagdaraanan. Ngunit naniniwala kami na sa ating pagtutulungan, maisusulong natin ang edukalidad. Ako po si Sir Dexter, maraming salamat sa panunood at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Oh, andyan na pala kayo. Ako nga pala si Sir Dexter at narito ako ngayon upang bigyan kayo ng ilang impormasyong dapat nating malaman bilang paghahanda sa darating na pasukan. Handa na ba kayo? Simulan na natin to. Bago ang lahat, ang video ito ay hatid sa atin ng Department of Education, Region 1. At narito na ang ilan sa mga dapat nating malaman bilang paghahanda sa darating na pasukan. May markahang pagsusulit ba ang aking anak? Paano ito gagawin? Ganito po, ang DepEd ay magbababa ng kaukulang patnubay kaugnay sa markahang pagsusulit na agad din namang ipapaalam sa mga mag-aaral at sa mga magulang. Bukod sa mga gawain nasa module, may iba pa bang gawain na ibibigay sa aking anak? Ano ang gagawin sa mga ito? Opo, maibibigay na activity sheets at karagdagang gawain ang guro na sasagutan ng inyong anak upang mataya ang natutunan niya sa bawat module na napag-aralan. Kailangan tipunin lang ang mga gawain ito at minsan ang ibibigay sa guro sa tagdang oras ng paglikom. Sino ang magwawasto sa mga gawain sa module? Karagdagang activity sheets at iba pang mga gawain. Ganito po yan. May mga gawain sa module na mismong mag-aaral ang maaaring magwasto sapagkat ang susing sagot ay matatagpuan sa dulo ng bawat module. Mangyaring paalalahanan lamang ang anak na maging tapat sa pagwawasto ng kanyang mga gawain upang matuto. Iwawasto ng guro ang ibang mga gawain sa module kasama ang karagdagang activity sheets. Bakit nasa module din ang susing sagot sa ilang mga gawain? Makikita natin ang ilang kasagutan sa mga gawain sa module upang mabigyan kaagad ng feedback ang learning facilitator o magulang sa suporta na kinakailangan ng mag-aaral. Mahalaga ito bilang paghahanda sa iba pang mga sasagutang activity sheets at gawain na ibibigay ng guro bilang pagtataya sa natamong kaalaman at kasanayan ng mag-aaral. Paano mabibigyan ng marka ang performance ng aking anak sa distance learning? Simple lamang po, titipunin ng mag-aaral ang mga gawain sa isang portfolio or e-portfolio at isusumite sa itinagdang araw ng paglikom. 
susuriin at bibigyan ng guro ng karampatang marka ang bawat aktibidad na ginawa ng mag-aaral. Para sa mga karagdagang impormasyon, mangyaring dumulog lamang po sa ating debit order number 12, Series of 2020. Ang tabayanan ang susunod pang mga paalala mula sa debit order number 17, Series of 2020. At iyan na po ang ilan sa mga dapat nating malaman bilang paghahanda sa darating na pasukan. Muli, ang video ito ay hatid sa atin ng Department of Education, Region 1. Magtulungan po tayo upang malampasan natin ang pagsubok na ating pinagdadaanan. Sama sa ating isulong ang edukalidad. Ako po si Sir Dexter. Maraming salamat sa panonood at mabuhay tayong lahat. Hi kids! Our story for today is entitled, The Sacred Pets of Gio. This story was written by yours truly, Mrs. Almera S. Zarate, the Education Program Supervisor.
Hello, good afternoon, everyone. We continue with our short now. Uh, but before us, uh, please subscribe to our official YouTube channel that is SDOSCP TV. Okay, ang mga shoutout po natin. Happy viewing po sa lahat ng employees of LGU Malasiki. Hello po sa inyo. Especially sa ex-girlfriend daw po. Ni Sir Roldan. No. <laughs> Meron ba lang ex-girlfriend si Sir Roldan dyan sa Malasiki? Marang, uh, magandang hapon po lahat sa inyo. Another shoutout po. Happy productive day to all the personnel of Tamayo NHS. From Sir Humble Dexter. Okay po, productive day po tayo, sabi ni Sir. Another shout out to all personnel of SEPNAS, to our very supportive principal, Dr. Marites Kabatbat, and our department head in science, Sir Eddie Kabatbat, and whole JHS Science Department. Uh, hello po sa inyo. Good afternoon po. And another shout out dito po from... Sir Jeffrey Munoz, uh, good afternoon daw po from the bus NHS, ang ating isa sa mga guwapong uh, school head ng, ng San Carlos City Division. So, sino-sino pa po? Tignan po natin kung sino pa po ang nagbigay. Uh, from Miss Rosalyn Luces, uh, good morning. Watching from David Moises Memorial High School of SDO Copies. Wow, another uh, malayong lugar hanggang SDO Copies po tayo. Nanonood po sila. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Again po, from Tanawan Tribune Tanaw. Panawan late po. Maraming maraming salamat din po sa inyo. From Ma'am Maria Virginia Gilev de Vera. Good, good PM po. Pa-shoutout po sa mga taga Magtaking. Yes. Hello po sa Barangay Magtaking at Magtaking Elementary School. Maraming uh, good afternoon po sa inyo. Kay Ma'am Isabel Resuelio. Good afternoon po. From Lilimasan ES Family. Okay. Good afternoon din po sa inyo. Another shoutout po. From Ma'am Adaya Masiglat, Payapa ES, watching here. Ma'am Gail, thank you po. Maraming salamat for watching us. Merry Christmas po sa lahat. Mara Merry, Merry Christmas din po sa inyong lahat. Again, from Sir Diego Diokno. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon din po sa inyo, sir. From Ma'am Susan Padlan Castro. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon din po sa inyo, ma'am. Uh, hello, Sir June Toyo. Hello, Sir. Good PM to all Malacanang ES. Yes po, good afternoon po sa inyo. From Sir Mark Mislang Velasquez. Good afternoon po, watching from Kawayan Kiling ES. Yes po, kay Sir uh, Edgar Samera, our school principal. Okay, another from Ma'am Charito Alcata Tamayo. Good PM po. Watching from Abanon NHS. Yes, from Sir, your school principal is Sir Raul. Tama po? Yes, good afternoon, Ma'am. From Ma'am, ah, ah, sorry, parang baliktad po ba ito? <laughs> MMG, ako nga, ay Craig Marian. Uh, pasensya na po, hindi ko masyadong na-pronounce ng mabuti. Pero ang sabi po niya is, good afternoon, watching from Colleen National High School. Maraming maraming salamat po. From Mary Grace Sulamon, good afternoon po sa lahat. From Isla, yes, Isla Elementary School family, headed by Ma'am, uh, headed by Mrs. Marisa and Rosario. Maraming salamat din po. Tria, uh, good afternoon po, San Carlos City Division, watching at home. Sana nasabi po ni Sir Marito, kung taga Santa. Thank you rin po for watching us. And again, from Maria Teresa Rosario Bolatao. Okay, good afternoon po. Watching from Baknar. Yes, thank you po so much. Barangay Baknar. Again, from um, Marita Hermogeno Beltran. Ako, mukhang kamag-anak po ata ito ni Ma'am Vilma to. Ako. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, from Malacanang NHS, good afternoon po. Ay, kumusta niyo po ako sa ating school principal at sa ating guwapong-guwapong head teacher, si Sir Dennis. 
Sorry ya. Okay, po. Maraming salamat po, ma'am. Uh, next, to Ma'am Lolita Payopay. Yes, good PM po, ma'am. Maraming salamat din po sa inyong shoutout. Kay Ma'am Teresita Gonzalez Kahapay. Hello, ma'am. Good PM po sa ating lahat from Bulingit National High School. To Ma'am Queenie Dut Uy, Duterte. Naku, kamagana po ba natin si President Duterte? Kakagulat naman. Peralta, good afternoon po everyone from SEC SEPNAS SHS. Maraming salamat po. Good afternoon din po. Another kamag-anak po ni Ma'am V. Uh, Ma'am Marian Beltran, good afternoon po from Polo, SEC Polo ES. Maraming salamat po. Next, from Ma'am Luz Martinez. Good afternoon everyone. Yes, thank you po. Meron pa po tayong ano, pray amen. From Ma'am Diolita Elumin Bake. Good afternoon po. Watching from Bulingit Elementary School. Yes, maraming maraming salamat din po. Parang marami tayong ano, nanonood sa Barangay Bulingit. Active na active po sila. Okay, another from uh, Ma'am Janet Cabrera Moyano. Good afternoon everyone. Happy viewing po from Kuliling NHS. Yes, from Ma'am Julia Tagulao. Tama po. Maraming maraming salamat po. To Sir Bern Magat, good PM po. Bernard Magat of Baknar NHS. Yes, sir. Maraming maraming salamat po. From uh, Sir Alan Manamtam. Hello po sa mga Sepnasians. Wow. Mukhang avid uh, or baka nag-aral po ito si Sir sa uh, Sepnasian. Or siguro teacher po tayo. Okay. Ay, hi, hello po kay Sir Lado de Guzman, ang ating school head din po. Uh, good afternoon, Ma'am Gail. Pa-shoutout po, Miss Tiso Norte. Yes, sir. Elementary school. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng Miss Tiso Norte ES. From Ma'am Christy Reyes. Good afternoon po. Still watching from Balete Sur. Yes, thank you so much po, Ma'am. At nandito pa rin po kayo nanonood sa amin. Another shoutout from Normie JWL. Okay, WJ. JWL po ba talaga? Okay, good afternoon. Uh, good PM po sa lahat. Thank you, SCCSDO, for this webinar from SEPNAS. Maraming salamat din po sa inyo at nanonood po rin kayo sa amin. Another from Arlene Tala Ablera. Good afternoon, SEPNAS teachers watching po. Yes, thank you po. From Ma'am Milagros Ramos. Good afternoon po. From Abanon. Yes, or uh, NHS. Maraming maraming salamat po. From Ma'am Marian Tamayo, still watching po. Anong school kaya si Ma'am Marian? Pero maraming maraming salamat po. You're still watching for us. Wow, sa ating isang pinakagwapong uh, PSDS, si Sir Benjamin Rismith. Sir, good PM to everyone. Thank you po sa shoutout nyo. Maraming maraming salamat din po sa panonood sa amin. From SCC Talang CS, good afternoon po sa lahat. Especially teachers from Talang Central School. Headed by Dr. Wilson de la Cruz. Yes, si Sir, si Sir Wilson. Napakabayat. Napakatahimik. Sobra. Okay. For another from Arman Fernandez. Uh, Sir Arman, good afternoon po. Watching from Salina, PNHS. Yes, thank you po. Ma'am, ma'am, salamat po. From Sir, um, ma'am po ba? O Sir Nelly Maniebo Baldeo. Good afternoon po. Watching from Abanon, NHS. Maraming, maraming salamat din po. Second po, sa, si Ma'am Jeannie Manson Fernandez. Good afternoon. Watching po from Ano. Thank you po. Uh, mga kabarangay din po namin to. Dadaanan ng Tarese bago mapunta sa Ano. From Sir Cipriano L. Arenas. Thank you, SDOSCC, for initially initiating this webinar on suggested strategies on DLM from Balitisur. Yes, maraming maraming salamat din po sa inyo, sir, at nanonood po kayo sa amin. Another from Mang Pilipinas, Madatu Abela. Good afternoon po, watching from Turak. Yes, thank you po. Maraming maraming salamat. Another from Mang Elvira Agram. Good afternoon po, watching from Central 1. Ang aming kapitbahay dito, Central 1, Central 2. Good afternoon din po. Kay Sir Dong Kanilang. Another from Anafe Mercado Rizuelo. Gandang hapon po. Watching from Pagal. Ay, thank you po. Maraming maraming salamat din po. Ikumusta niyo po ako kay Sir Brando. Okay po. Thank you. From Miss 
Rosalie E. Molina, good afternoon po, watching Rao. Malayong school din po to. Bugawan ES, maraming maraming salamat din po sa inyo. Another shout out uh, from Ma'am Viron Malikdem Maham. Good afternoon po. Baka po may nag-birthday dyan sa inyo, i-shout out yun na rin po. Baka makarating sa amin dito virtually. Ang, ang, ang masarap na handa nila. Hindi, <laughs> joke lang po. Uh, to our IC Sir Marcelino T. Alterado, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat from Abanon NHS. Mukhang kompleto ang ating Abanon family. Uh, ang dami pong nagpapashout, ang dami nag-shout out sa kanila. Another from Ma'am Nova de Guzman Cosme. Pa-shout out naman po sa lahat ng mga teachers ng Salina. Yes, NHS at Salina PES. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. From Sir Ryan Ramos, good afternoon po to all. Watching from, ay, salamat po, CP Gutierrez ES. Maraming sa, malayong school din to. Dadaanan mo pa yung lubak-lubak, pero pagdating mo doon, wow. Ang ganda nung school din. Okay, next, Ma'am Vivian Paliso. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Good afternoon din po sa inyo, Ma'am Vivian. Sa mga may birthday dyan, sa mga nagsaselebrate ng anniversary, ano pa, Ang mga monthly anniversary, weekly anniversary, baka pati day anniversary, sinicelebrate na rin po. Shout out nyo na, may greet po natin, baka mabasa po natin yung mga yan. From Ma'am Nora Prado, good afternoon to all teaching and non-teaching personnel of Tandok NHS. Maraming salamat din po kay Sir Tumas Pere. From Ma'am Virginia Jola, good afternoon po, watching from Tarese IS. Yes, mga kabalanggay Tarese, <laughs> maraming maraming salamat po at nanonood pa rin po tayo. Next. Ako, mukhang wala na po yata. Galaw-galaw po tayo. Mga ilan na po ba ang ating viewers, sir? 385. 385, nakukulang pa tayo. We are expecting about parang kanina, 1-4 po yata na nabanggit ni Ma'am SDS. Kaya dapat i-surpass natin yung 1-4 ng AM session. Gawin natin 1-5. Hikayatin nyo na po lahat ng inyong mga kakilala, pati mga nasa ibang bansa. Baka gusto nilang manood sa atin kahit hindi mo sila, hindi mo sila uh, uh, gising pa. Gisingin nyo po. Pero joke lang po yun. Okay, from Sir Met Nelab. Ah, naku naman Sir, bakit kasi binaligtad? Ayan to, oh, Valentin. Uh, good afternoon po sa lahat. Shout out to all Abanon NHS teaching course and family with our school head, Dr. Raul S. Bautista. Yes, thank you po, sir. Mukhang kumpletong ating Abanon, ha? Another from Ma'am Violeta Kayabeb. Uy, si Ma'am Violeta, our ALS teacher. Pa-shout out, all ALS unit. Good, uh, good PM po. Yes, good PM din po sa inyo, ma'am. Next. Uh, pa shout out po kay ma ay shout out po from Michelle Cayeta Rosario po sa lahat ng nagtuturo ng Salina po okay Salina na naman po tayo NHS especially to our dear school head ma'am yes ma'am Rica San Diego de la Cruz ma'am wow kompletong kompleto ma'am parang talagang gusto yung uh, kompleto ay ng kanyang name at sa lahat ng nanonood maraming maraming salamat po and for our last shout out but not the least, of course, from Ma'am Joyce Lorenzo. Uh, good afternoon po sa lahat. Watching from Setnas. God bless us all and stay safe. Kayo rin po, stay safe. And one Thank last you. shout out. Uh, happy belated birthday po pala kay Ma'am Joey Tagulaw. May nagpa-shout out po sa akin kaninang uh, umaga. Kaso nakalimutan ko. Pero this time, sabi ko hindi ko kakalimutan. Belated happy birthday, Ma'am Joey. Okay? Okay, that's it for our shout out. Mamaya po ulit. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, ha? Okay, moving forward. Yun po yung SDOSCC. Okay po. Moving forward po for our next topic. That would be uh, learning resource for DLDM to be discussed by our uh EPS of LRMS, Dr. Arlene B. Casiti. Ma'am, are we in? Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Ganda-ganda po natin. You may take the floor, ma'am. Ma'am, mukhang nakamute po tayo. Please unmute.
Paki-unmute po tayo, please. Wala pa rin, ma'am. We're waiting po. Sa lower side po natin, ma'am. Lower side po ng ating screen. Meron po dito sa bandang uh, left. Ayan okay. na. Okay na. Okay Are na ba? Okay. okay na ba? Thank you, ma'am. You may take care po. Thank you so much, Gail. Okay, so my greetings and respect to our SDS, Dr. Lourdes Servito, our ASDS, Dr. Justado Kayabiab, our CID Chief, Ma'am Edith, our SGOD Chief, Sir Amor, uh, all the division personnel, mga kapwa ko kawani sa gobyerno, school heads, lahat ng mga participants, teachers. Of course, I would like to mention also the members of the technical directors or the technical team. We have Sir Roldan, Sir Dex, Sir Jack, and Sir Rilmar for doing a great job. Sa atin pong lahat, isang mapagpalang hapon po. Okay, so please allow me to share my screen. Wait lang po. Asa na kaya siya? Okay, so the task assigned to me is to discuss the learning resources for distance learning delivery modalities or DLDM. So I will be using DLDM for this uh, session. All right, so the ongoing pandemic has prompted the Department of Education to employ various learning delivery modalities requiring various learning resources to address the need of the time. So after identifying the preferred learning delivery modality, there is a need to consider, consider the appropriate learning resources to be utilized by the learners. Thus, for this session, the participants are expected to identify learning resources needed for specific DLDM, um, you are expected also to access or access DepEd portals, but of course you will not do that today, probably later. This is just actually a review because I know that everyone uh, knows how to access the DepEd portals like LR portal and the DepEd commons. And of course, the third one is to get familiar with rapid assessment of learning resources. Before we start with the main session, allow me to present the learning resource management and development process framework. Okay, So the ultimate goal of learning resource management and development is to come up with quality and accessible learning resources. So these learning resources are classified as text-based or non-text based, which are compliant to the curriculum standards, contextualized, and responsive to the needs of the learners. Okay, so there are five processes involved in LR management and development, which are needs assessment, development of development and design of learning resources, quality assurance production and delivery, and of course, we have storage and maintenance, okay? So all of these processes undergo continuous improvement based on the results of feedback, okay, gathered from monitoring and evaluation. All of this will redound to improve learning outcomes. So indeed, learning resources are indispensable. Okay, since time immemorial and particularly now that we are dealing with uh, this pandemic where everyone is expected to have distance learning uh, delivery mode or modalities. And so um, after identifying the DLDM, okay, 
it is also proper to choose appropriate learning resources. So the keyword here is appropriate. What is the appropriate or what are the appropriate learning resources given the DLDM or the distance learning delivery modality? So let us try to um, study and try to take a look at this map of the learning resources needed for each subcategory of distance learning delivery modalities, the source of which is from the Office of the Undersecretary for the Curriculum and Instruction. So we have here uh, is the distance learning del delivery modality. The second column is the subcategories of the DLDM. The third column is the applicable grade level or learning area, which is subdivided into three key stages. The first, the key stage or the sub column one is the key stage one referring to K to three. Uh, the second sub column is the key stage two referring to grade, grades four to six. And the third sub column is the key stages three or the key stages three to four, which are actually the junior high school and senior high school okay, levels. So uh, we will notice here that for every DLDM or learning distance learning delivery modality, uh, let me just um, amplify that we are not talking anymore of the face-to-face -face learning modality because there is this rule that if there is no vaccine, there is no face-to-face -face, uh, learning. So we are now uh, solely uh, talking about the distance learning delivery modality as has been uh, amplified by our CID chief this morning. Okay, so uh, um, just the same, uh, let, let us go over uh, what are the needed learning resources for every learning modality. So for the first one, we have the online distance learning, which can be which can either be synchronous and asynchronous, okay? So what are the learning resources required? We have here online uh, self-learning modules. We can also have online activities or exercises. But you notice here that there is there are columns which are uh, in blue, okay? And the other one is green. Okay, I, I hope you see that. If we are not, hindi tayo, wala tayong blind color, ano? Hindi tayo color blind, I should say. So we will see here that for online distance learning, this is applicable, okay, to key stages three and four when uh, where resources are very limited, okay? So ito yung parang priority uh priority key stage nagagamit po ng online distance learning okay so ano ulit yung learning resources required so we have online self learning modules and online activities or exercises okay for modular distance learning modular distance learning can be subcategorized into two meron tayong tinatawag na digital modular modular distance learning, and the other one is printed. So for digital modular distance learning, of course, we will be using offline digital SLMs or offline activity sheets. So in other words, hindi po sila gagamit ng internet, pero gagamit pa rin sila ng mga gadgets, di ba, para mabuksan nila itong mga, uh, mga files. Okay po? So the other one is the printed modular distance learning, okay? So parang dito po tayo naka-fall hours. Cruz Division Office of San Carlos City uh, has actually two preferred uh, learning modalities. The first one is printed modular distance learning and the other one is online distance learning. Pero majority po sa mga schools, uh, they prefer to have this printed modular distance learning. So we have these resources na dapat ay available, okay? So we have printed SLMs uh, and activity sheets. 
for printed SLMs, we already have our ADM, the modules coming from the central office. Um, we are now doing the printing. Uh, I, I believe that schools are printing already the, the first three weeks of quarter one. And of course, we have the um, a division initiated um, modules under the project mode by, of course, the brainchild of our SDS, Mam Lourdes. And we are very happy because um, these um, modules actually uh, supplements or augments the or augment the parang dearth of the ADM because not all uh, ADMs or ADM modules are available. Okay, we, we all know that. But in the in the coming days, we hope that um, um, all the needed self learning modules from the central office will be made available. Kailang ng materials for our uh, preferred distance learning delivery mode. Okay po. Um, for TV or video, uh, TV video or radio-based instruction, okay, distance learning, ito po ay naka-subcategorize into three. We have the TV video SLMs based, TV video melts mapped, and RBI. So what are the needed resources for TV video SLMs based? So we have here the self-learning mod module-based video or activity sheets. Um, uh, the, the Department of Education is actually very busy doing all of these things, uh, preparing all the needed learning resources and uh, ito pong mga SLMs po na ginawa sa central office, ay, they are now being converted into formats, formats in such a way that they can be used uh, in TV-based uh, instruction or whether in radio-based radio instruction. Okay po. So the same goes to MELC's aligned videos and activity sheets. We also have SLM-based radio-based instruction, and activity sheets for RBI. So kung mapapansin natin, um, lahat po sila uh, halos ay may SLMs. Okay po? Even those who will be using or employing online distance learning, they shall be given SLMs. Uh, I believe Ma'am Edith uh, made mention about giving them or providing them printed SLMs, tama po yun, kasi po just in case magkaroon tayo ng mga um, power interruptions or, you know, parang these are the things that will uh, supplement their online learning. So, combination po ang pwede natin gagawin. We are not limited to the use of learning resources as long as sila po ay aligned sa ating MELCs. Okay? At as long as they have undergone uh, quality assurance. So in our division, what we are doing actually is the development and the quality assurance of our modules. Uh, baka ang akala natin ay parang ipiprit na agad, hindi po yun. Um, all of these uh, modules have undergone uh, evaluation, magmula po sa content, content, language, hanggang sa layout po before they will be submitted to the C CID office for printing. Okay po. For blended distance learning, okay, this is actually any combination of the distance learning delivery modality. Okay, so subcategories. For example, it a combination of online distance learning and printed modular distance learning or a combination of online distance learning and SLM-based or TV video uh, distance learning. So lahat po ito ay a combination. So what are the learning resources required? So any of the available learning resource or activity sheets. Okay po. In other words, Bawat learn, distance learning delivery modality dapat meron siyang corresponding 
or required learning resource uh, resources. Okay po? Dapat po ay, uh, ano bang tawag dito? I cannot find the right words. Ano? Dapat sila ay uh, in conformity with each other. Parang right, uh, right diagnosis, right prescription. Okay? So, each modality will be requiring appropriate learning resource or resources. So, uh, we have here some notes. Uh, while teachers are expected to manage distance learning delivery modalities, the presence of a teacher who will facilitate synchronous online distance learning is vital. Okay po. Kasi nga, sabi nga ni Ma'am Edith kanina, synchronous online distance learning is real time. So there should be somebody, the significant other, and that is the teacher who will facilitate this online distance learning. So, yung mga uh, gagawa o mag-employ po ng online distance learning, uh, we should always remember that there should be a teacher who will be there, okay, doon sa, sa room nila, okay, sa virtual room, who will facilitate learning. Okay, the second one is MELC's mapped DepEd textbooks for learner material shall be used as learning resources for all DLDM. Ayan. So aside from the, uh, the minimum requirements or the minimum learning resources requirement dito sa ating map, um, sabi dito, pwede rin gamitin ang ating mga textbooks or learner materials okay, sa lahat po ng DLDM. Okay? When used with activity sheets and learning plans, MELC's map DepEd textbooks or LMs may substitute printed SLMs. Okay? So, pwede daw mag-substitute ang mga uh, MELC's map DepEd textbooks or LMs sa mga SLMs. Pero of course, uh, we are ready with our um, self-learning modules, siguro gagamitin na lang natin ito as supplemental materials. Okay? Parents or learning facilitators guide will be used in all subcategories of the DLDM. So it is important also that uh, self-learning uh, modules will contain facilitators guide Kasama po yan sa standards po natin. Nakasulat dyan kung paano gagamitin ang mga modules. In the case of SPED, uh, I think ang ginawa nila ay uh, parents guide o gabay para sa mga magulang so that they can really uh, guide their child or children as they go through the learning. Okay? Other textbooks or learning materials and teacher-made videos, modules, may supplement the required learning resources for each DLDM. So we are not prevented from using uh, other resources, okay? So um, hindi lang po tayo magko-confine sa kung ano yung meron tayo dito na available. If we think that we can, we can or there is a need for us to use other resources, particularly during the course of our lessons, and we see that our students are lagging behind and we should do some uh, remediations. And we think that the materials available are not actually uh, in consonance with the need of the time. Then we can research or we can uh, use our resourcefulness and creativity to, to be able to come up with materials which are contextualized and tailored to the, to the need of our learners. So, Ang ibig pong sabihin dito, uh, kahit na meron na tayong mga modules na available, activity sheets, which will be provided by the regional office, uh, pwede pa rin tayong tumingin sa mga port, DepEd portals kung ano yung mga pwede nating ibigay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Kung ano yung nararapat para sa kanila because we all know the fact that not all learners have the same abilities, the same interests. So just the same that when uh, when we are doing the face-to-face -face learning, diba, we do the differentiated instruction, we can also 
make use of that. We can also do that. Pati sa assessment po, uh, giving differentiated types of uh, assessment using uh, various um, learning resources. Okay, so kailangan yung creativity natin, ang ating resourcefulness ay palaging nandyan. Huwag lang po tayong makontento kung sa kung ano yung meron sa atin at kung ano yung binibigay sa atin. We can even um, develop our own learning resources pero mamaya uh, papakita ko po sa inyo. I'm going to show you the map of parang ano yung tawag dito? Rapid Assessment of learning resources. So kung, pero, kung meron tayong rapid test, meron din tayong rapid assessment. Mamaya po, uh, I will be sharing with you the checklist para kung sakaling gusto niyong gumamit ng ibang learning resources, you can make use of the checklist para you will be confident that these learning resources are indeed uh, within the national standards or DEPED standards. Okay? So while all subcategories of DLDM are appropriate for all grade levels when managed by a teacher or learning facilitator. Those in green, kung makikita ninyo, green colors, are the priority grades to do the specific distance learning in cases where resources are limited. Yan na po yung nasabi ko kanina. And based on the map here, makikita natin ang printed modular distance learning ay applicable sa key stages 1, 2, 3, and 4 at yung blended distance learning. Okay? Iba po ito doon sa blended learning dati na alam natin na kasamang face-to-face. -face. Ito po ngayon ay blended distance learning which is actually the combination or any combination of the distance learning delivery modality subcategories. Nabanggit ko na rin po yan kanina. So, ang bottom line po dito, every distance learning modality should have appropriate learning resources. Okay po. Next, how do we access learning resources from DepEd portals? Bakit kailangan nating uh, matutunan kung sakaling hindi pa? Pero I know that all of us uh, know how to access learning resources because last year, uh, we have been very active, the LRMS, together with PDO, Sir Roldan Eden, and uh, librarian, Sir Marco Reyes. Uh, we've been going to schools, and um, I think uh, mga 85% siguro, napuntahan namin kasi nagkaroon na ng COVID. Ano po? And uh, I believe that all um, LR coordinators were made Parang were parang assigned as admin so that they can uh, help their fellow teachers uh, access this LR portal. So why do we need to um, know or why do we need to access um, LR portals in DEPED Commons? They are ge generically called DEPED portals. Dalawa po sila, DEPED Commons and LR portal. Bakit kailangan? Kasi po may pronouncement po na lahat ng mga SLMs uh, at lahat ng mga SLMs na converted into formats para mag-suit doon sa TV-based at radio-based uh, digital uh, uh, digital modular learning resources. Okay? Yan po ay i-upload lahat sa ating DepEd portals. I-upload po yan sa LR portal and DepEd Common. So, mag lang po tayo ng announcement. Kaya kailangan alam natin kung paano i-access ang dalawang ito. Okay? So, ano ba itong LR? Alam na natin ito, pero just the same, basahin ko lang, no? pasadahan lang natin. It is a web-based catalog and repository of learning, teaching, and professional development resources. So, it provides access to quality assured. Okay, so makikita natin yung words na quality assured. Okay, resources from the regions, um, divisions, central, cluster, and school level. Okay, so lahat ng mga ito po ay uh, uh, quality assured resources. So it is safe na kumuha po tayo, mag-download ng mga materials coming from LR portal. 
Okay. So, paano ba ang mag, ano, uh, mag-access <laughs> dito? Uh, actually, hindi ka pa naglalag in pag pumunta ka doon sa kanilang site, ay makikita mo na agad ito. You will be able to see this parang homepage or opening page. How do we call it? Okay. Uh, you will be able to browse the resources. Okay. Um, meron din dyang frequently asked questions. Okay, kita nyo dyan, di pa kayo naglalag in. As long as pumunta ka sa site, makikita mo na ang page na ito. And also, ayan po, uh, you will be able to browse um, resources that you would like to um, research on. Okay, may mga K-12 resources, may media gallery. Okay, you can um, enter or the title or the, the the keywords in the search engine and it will generate a list of resources by typing a keyword topic or competency code okay pwede rin tong media gallery okay so selecting the create icon at the home page allows teachers to create their own resource by using deped owned photos and illustrations ito yung sinasabi po namin na sa mga illustrators na pwede kayong mag-download ng mga illustrations dito para gamitin nyo sa inyong mga uh, school-initiated or locally developed modules. Pwede po dito. Pero of course, bago ka maka-download, kailangan mo munang mag-login. Okay? O kaya yung mga hindi pa nakaka-register, pwede silang mag-register. So hindi ko na po ito i-discuss uh, one by one. Nandyan na po yung mga steps. Um, meron naman tayong, ano bang tawag dito, video tutorial na pwede nating i-access dito po sa ating, ah, teka, mamaya, pakita ko sa inyo kung saan natin ma-access para uh, kahit you're alone, you'll be able to do it. Okay? It is important that, teka, Yan. Okay. Bilang member, ano, meron po tayong mga iba't ibang roles. Kaya minsan may nagtatanong, eh, bakit hindi kami maka-download, ma'am? Bakit hindi ako makapag-add? Okay. Ito po ang importanteng uh, malaman natin that we have our own uh, user account. Okay. Pwede po tayong maging administrator, developer, uh, QA for quality assurance publisher, tsaka member, okay? So, ano yung pwedeng gawin ng admin? Pag ikaw ang admin, uh, and usually LR coordinators or ICT coordinators are ano, administrators, anong pwede mong gawin? You can add users or members. You can assign roles to members. You can add or edit curriculum competencies. You can also add or edit language types, okay? So, yun po yung uh, pwedeng gawin ng isang administrator. For the developer, you can add new learning resource. You can create or edit metadata of resource. Okay, for the QA, you can edit metadata of learning resources for review. Okay, for publisher, you can publish, you can review, uh, you can publish, Reviewed resource, okay? And you can also edit metadata. Si Sir Marco po ang gumagawa ng ating metadata. Okay. And of course, ito yung ating generic role, ang member, okay? All of you, kapag kayo ay uh, naka, meron ng account, ang inyong uh, role actually ay member, okay? You can browse. Sabi ko nga kanina, uh, pag hindi ka pa nakalog naka in, pwede kang mag-browse. But if you want to uh, download, uh, mag-log in ka muna. Okay? So you can browse and download published learning resources. So yun po yung mga roles, ng ating, uh, roles natin bilang member po ng, ng LR portal. So uh, if you want to have a thorough review, okay, may I? recommend that uh, you take a picture on this at mamaya explore nyo na lang at uh, tuturuan niya kayo kung paano uh, explore 
to navigate ang ating LR portal. The second one is the DepEd Common. DepEd Commons, palang may SK. DepEd Commons is an online platform for public school teachers to support distance learning modalities precisely to continue the delivery of basic education to our children. Okay. May nakasulat dito is DepEd Commons from the teachers. Actually, napopulate yan ng mga teachers eh. Common siya, so lahat pwedeng maglagay dyan para sa teachers, for the teachers, and for the learners. When I tried to uh, explore the DepEd Commons also, no, parang nakita ko doon, bakit walang, ano, bakit ang nakalagay lang ay, ano, mga schools, okay? Walang SDO San Carlos City, okay? Kasi intended talaga ito para sa mga teachers, at para sa mga estudyante. So, itatype lang sa browser, ang nakita nyo na dyan, https commons.deped.gov.ph para i-access ang DepEd Commons. Anyway, ano, pwede nyo rin itong i-search ulit sa, uh, sa net. No? Yan. So, pipiliin mo kung ikaw ay nasa public or private school. Kaya talagang teachers ang target. Pwede rin ang mga principal. Ayan, so select your school, public or private. And then, piliin mo kung ikaw ay estudyante or teacher. Yan po ang makikita natin. Okay. And of course, easy save. Ayan. I-click ang save button. So, ayan. Pilian ang grade level. Ayan. So, you, you're going to choose the grade level. Okay. So, yan, mamimili ka na kung ikaw ay magda-download. Okay. Sa downloadable resource or a resource from an, an external link. Pero, kabiat po. Ayan. Warning po, uh, links on the DepEd Commons page that require you to access the internet outside the commons domain is beyond this coverage and may incur standard data charges. Actually, makikita nyo pong disclaimer na ito dun pa lang sa opening page niya. Ayan, meron din dyan, spotlight sa ALS K-12. So, uh, practically po, uh, lahat po halos ng ating mga resources ay makikita natin sa DepEd Commons. Ano pa yung makikita natin dyan? Okay. Ayan. So, we can find storybooks. So, halimbawa, um, kailangan natin ng mga springboard for our uh, remedial lesson. Pwede po ito. Pwede po tayong mag-download sa DepEd Commons. So, may storybooks. Meron tayong educational videos. We also have our audiobooks. Okay, electronic books. Okay, we also have presentations. Mostly galing po sa mga iba't ibang teachers all over the Philippines. Okay, we also have, have worksheets and workbooks. Interactive online or offline quiz. So, pwede po tayong mag-download dito. Okay, so yun po. Uh, so, napaka-importante po na malaman natin kung paano i-access ang ating mga DepEd portals. Ulitin ko po, all of these SLM-based or self-learning modules will be converted into formats which will be applicable to all distance learning delivery modalities and they will be uploaded to the DepEd portals. It would be the LR portal and for the DepEd Commons. Kaya kailangan matuto na po tayo kung hindi man uh, na i-access ang mga DepEd portals. Okay. Okay, sabi ko nga kanina, in case we would like to make use of other resources um, other than our available resources provided by DepEd, ano yung mga pwede natin i-consider? Okay? So, 
we have to do this rapid assessment of learning resources. Limbawa, ito pong, is the material connected and relevant to the milks? Okay, is the material appropriate to the grade level and learner characteristics in terms of language or activities? Okay, is it easy to reproduce or disseminate? Is it from a credible source or author? Is it culture and gender fair? Is it free from red flags on possible copyright and plagiarism issues? And is the layout and format easy to read and listen to the eyes? So kailangan more or less perfect na yes ang sagot dito para magamit po natin and we will be confident that indeed these learning resources are within the standards. Okay? So in a nutshell, it is important to identify learning resources needed for a specific learning delivery modality. In our division where majority of the schools prefer printed modular distance learning delivery modality, SLMs from central office and our locally developed modules under the project mode will be utilized with activity sheets from the regional office. Other preferred LDMs may still be employed taking into account the required LRs based on LR map. Remember, sabi ni Ma'am Edit kanina, our DLDM may change. Okay, so dapat po ay alam po natin kung anong particular LRs ang needed sa bawat DLDM. Okay, it is also important that we know how to access LR portal and DepEd Commons to come up with varied materials for the learners. However, we do some contextualization to make these materials relevant, meaningful, and useful to the learners. And should you wish to use non-DepEd resources or other resources like um, locally developed resources or school-initiated modules or resources, um, it is better to conduct a rapid assessment of the learning resources to ensure that they meet the standards of DepEd. Okay, so with that, thank you so much for your attention. Stay safe, healthy, and happy. Aloha afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arlene Kasipit, for the presentation. Yes, aloha to sa inyo po. So by now, they have identified uh, learning resources, know how to access our DepEd portals, and familiarize with the rapid uh, assessment. Again, thank you for the presentation po. Thank you. Good afternoon. Okay, moving forward. Baka may nag... Uh, I expect that we'll shout out pa ako. Maya, maya. Okay. <laughs> so moving forward with our discussion, um, to discuss weekly home learning and individual learning plans. Um, may we request for Dr. Alan S. Makaraeg, our EPS in Araling Panlipunan. Dr. Alan? Okay, good afternoon din. Aloha. Aloha, Aloha everyone. Okay, okay ba nakikita ko, Gail? Yes, sir. Ha, how, how, how do I do? Okay, thank you very much, Gail. Okay. So, thank good afternoon. To each. Okay, Aloha with love. Uh, good afternoon to each and everyone. To our school's division superintendent, uh, officer in charge, Dr. Lourdes Servito. Our assistant school's division superintendent, Dr. Justado Aikaya uh, The women behind this webinar, our very own chief of the Curriculum Implementation Division, Dr. Edita Pridas, Sir William or Gloria, our SGOD chief, my fellow supervisors, and of course, to all the teachers out there uh, of San Carlos City Division and the school heads who are actually here in our division webinar for the implementation of the learning modalities. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Now, at this point, I, uh, my session would focus on the weekly home learning plan and the individual monitoring plan. But guys, open uh, okay, a PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, yeah. 
So my session would actually focus on the weekly home learning plan and individual monitoring plan. But before I'll start, uh, my dear teachers, promise me that after my session, my session and Dr. Mini's session, you have to promise me that you will not raise your eyebrows after this because I, I'm pretty sure na baka mamaya pahirap na naman to sa ating mga teachers. No, this would actually be of help to the teachers and of course to our learners, especially we are in the new normal. Okay, and my session would actually dwell on two things. First is, what are the things to ponder and to be considered in crafting your weekly home learning plan and your individual learning monitoring plan? And of course, the procedures in implementing the weekly home learning plan and the individual monitoring, individual learning monitoring plan. Now, previously, of course, in the previous years, we are actually uh, guided by the DepEd Order Number Forty Two Series of Two Thousand Sixteen. And what is it all about? It is the policy guidelines on daily lesson preparation for K to twelve basic education program. And this provides the legal basis of lesson plan preparation for the basic education. It indicates the necessity of lesson planning as a critical part of the teaching and learning process, which serves as a guide for instructions and contains details of what the teacher, the learners will do in order to meet the required learning competencies. Further, the same order explains how the lesson plan should answer the following questions. What are, the, uh, what are those questions? Number one, of course, is what should be thought? How should it be thought? And how should learning be assessed? Now, these three questions can also be reflect, it's actually reflected in the weekly home learning plan. Now, given the new context of learning and the unique procedures in every modality, the weekly learning plan shall be developed, that shall be developed, will have to follow the procedures. Ayan. So what are the procedures in crafting your individual, your weekly home learning plan? Uh, I guess this has already been started to study by some of our teachers who have been part of the LTM module 2, uh, which is actually spearheaded by Nea, but this is actually for, especially for the teachers who have not any, who do not have any more background of the weekly home learning plan. So the first procedure is of course, number one, you have to refer to your most essential learning competencies in the different subject areas. I know for now all the teachers in the different subject areas, you have all the copies, soft copies of your most essential learning competencies in your area. And after that, if you have that melt at your hand, you have to gather, next procedure is to, have to gather self-learning modules would it be in the, uh, their CO or central office and even the AIRS or the activity sheets and other learning materials needed for the self-paced learning mode, the distance learning, especially the distance learning and the blended learning modality. Next, after this, okay. So using your SLM as a reference, accomplish now your weekly learning plan by taking into consideration the learning competencies the key concepts, essential understanding, and the learning tasks, formative assessments needed to track learners' progress in relation to the attainment of content standards. Now, why is it very important for the teacher to take into consideration what are the learning competences? Because this will serve them to guide properly in tracking the performance and even the, the tasks that should be given to the learners, especially in the attainment of the goal or the content standard itself. And also consider the different formative assessment and the learning tasks as reflected in the module. I guess hindi naman may hirapan ng mga teachers dito because in the module that we have crafted in the DOR or would it be in the central office, meron ng mga different learning tasks na nakalagay doon. And then even the uh, some of the assessment na, got, na dapat natin gawin, eh, nandun na rin siya. All you have to do is simply copy-paste, di ba? But you also have to take note into consideration, of course, the, the differences or the individual learner, uh, learnings of our learners. Next. Okay. Ito. The subject area teachers must collaborate to come up with a set of weekly home learning plans for one entire quarter or grading period. Nako, siguro after I read this, 
marami ang nagtataasan ng kila. <laughs> By integrating all subjects in one learning plan. How is this? Like for example, if I am a high school teacher, I am an advisor. I have to collaborate. If I am an AP teacher, I have to collaborate with the six, uh, with the seven remaining subject teachers para at least ibigay sa akin yung kanilang weekly home learning plans also para makita ko, matrack ko rin kung ano yung ilalagay ko dun sa aking weekly home learning plans. Ganon din sila. Okay? And then when preparing the weekly home learning plan, teachers should be guided with a long-term vision of what they want their learners to master and achieve in terms of content and competencies at the end of the school year. So, ibig sabihin, you really have to focus on what you really want, you really intend to measure, and at the same time, assessing the learning, uh, the task that should be given to our learners at the same time. Okay? Next procedure, I guess, yeah. Teachers are advised, of course, to adopt strategies that, res that respect the unique context and diversity of the learners in terms of their readiness, learning interests, and learning profile. You have also to consider the differentiated instruction that will be manifested by giving respectful activities, such as interesting, engaging, or challenging activities through on-level tasks, above-level tasks, and below level tasks, but an average, above average, and high performing tasks to various groups of the learners. And this allows routes, to, routes of access at varying levels so that every learner is appropriately challenged and comes away with pivotal skills in, and understand. Okay, now in plotting the learning tasks, teachers should strike a balance between academic rigor and socio-emotional aspect of learning. Now, rigor in academic sense uh, should actually, the student should be challenged, okay? Challenged to think, challenged to perform, challenged to grow at a level where, where they were not able to grow or perform previously. And socio-emotional aspect, I think we have also to consider the readiness, the preparation of the learners, and even the available, availability of their resources. So, kailangan balance yan. Hindi lang yung napakataas yung ating expectation palagi na dapat i-accomplish ng mga bata. But we have also to consider other factors, especially right now, na ang mga bata ay wala sila sa classroom. Okay? Since the completion of the learning tasks are done primarily at home, learners should be given the opportunity and flexibility to manage their own learning without sacrificing time-bound attainment of learning competences. Self, uh, Self-paced po tayo sa ating mga learning tasks. Okay? Next, meron pa ba? Yan. Okay, these are now the parts of the weekly home learning plan. I think alam na alam ito ng mga teachers na participants doon sa LDM2 for teachers because one of their output is they already crafted their weekly home learning plan. I think there are four major parts of the weekly home learning plan. One is learning area, learning task, okay? We have learning competencies and the mode of delivery. Now, later on, after my session, Dr. Minerva Munoz will be uh, showing to you a sample of a finished sample of a weekly home learning plan in elementary, secondary, and I think senior high school. Now, when we talk about learning area, of course, alam nyo na yan, that's the subject, okay, prescribed to be taken by learners in a particular grade level or key stage, okay? What about learning tasks? These are formative learning opportunities created for learners to enhance their understanding of the content, which prompt them to engage intensively in the subject matter. Kung so, yung learning task, kung makikita ninyo, if you were a writer, one of the writers ng ating module sa division, Makikita nyo doon sa mga parts ng module yung alamin, yung pagtibay, pagtibay. Those are some of the provided learning tasks. So hindi na kayo may hirapan. All you have to do is to just plot these different parts into a tabular form. Okay? The third part of the weekly home learning plan is the learning competences. Yan. Napakadali na yan. Copy-paste nyo lang doon sa ating mail. This refers to the knowledge, understanding, skills, and attitudes that the learners need to demonstrate in every lesson or learning activity as stipulated to the O8 series of 2015. So, hindi na kayo may because we have been provided you with the milk in all subject areas. 
And the last part of the weekly home learning plan is, yeah, the mode of delivery. Paano itong mode of delivery? Now, this refers to the method of submission. Submission of what? The learning outputs that includes written work, products, and performances of the students or your child, the children of the, your, yeah, the, the students or your learners preferred by the learner or parent based on their context or situation. Example, if the submission is through online, online through email or LMS posting, or through personal submission by parent to teacher in the school. Pwede kaya ang teacher ang pupunta sa, sa bahay. Well, yan na siguro ay nasa decision na yan ng teacher. Kung hindi nagsasabit at walang response ang parent, then that's the time that the teacher will have to get the, pro, the output of your learners. Talagang para sa bata nga talaga. Okay? I think those, those are the four major parts of the weekly, weekly home learning plan. One is the learning area, learning tasks, learning competencies, and the mode of delivery. Now, next procedure here, the weekly home learning plan shall be communicated, okay? Nasa yan, verbally or written, communicated through the parents for their reference and guidance. Copies of the plans for the entire first quarter. Ako, baka lahat na ng mga nanonood sa akin, nagtataasan na naman kayo ng hilay. Sorry po. May be distributed to parents during the first parent teachers association meeting before the start of the school year. They shall be given comprehensive and clear orientation by the school about the contents, purpose, and the use of the learning plan by their children. I guess Nung time ng ating lockdown, di ba, one of the tasks of our teachers is to make their own weekly home, uh, weekly home learning plan as part of their output sa kanilang work from home. So I guess hindi na siguro sila may hirapan. Pero if the question is, before the start or opening po ba ng school year, this comes October 5, eh tapos na lahat ng first quarter. Actually, malinaw ho sa ating guidelines, yes, you have to give the copies and orient the parents. Pero kung hindi naman kakayanin, pwede naman siguro yung first to second uh, week. Second week of your weekly home learning plan shall be given during the opening of the school year. Pero malinaw po sa ating guidelines na ito ay ibibigay or distribute to the parents be meeting before the start of the school year. Okay. Next. Yeah. It is highly encouraged that teachers shall prepare the weekly home learning plans for the first quarter prior to the opening of the classes. Yeah, naulit lang po yung nasabi ko kanina. For the succeeding quarters, it may be distributed in time for the quarterly homeroom meeting. The same process shall be followed in terms of the orientation about its contents, purpose, and use. Okay. Next procedure, yeah. the weekly home learning plan shall aid teachers and parents in keeping track of the day-to-day -day in school and off school general learning processes as they implement the most suitable and feasible alternative learning modality based on context of their school. It creates awareness among learners that they are responsible for what they learn. So that's one of the use of uh, uses of weekly home learning plan to keep the track of the day-to-day -day in the school and office school of the learning processes as implemented by uh, most suitable and feasible learning alternative learning modality based on the context of their school. Okay. The weekly home learning plan shall be prepared by teachers in implementing distance and blended learning. It's very clear. This will be implemented by the teachers who are actually implementing distance and blended learning. So since wala po tayong face-to-face -face learning, output tayo sa debit order 42 2016, wherein you are required to prepare your daily lesson plan. So hopefully, kung mawalan ang ating uh, kinakaharap na pandemia comes January, we'll be back to the normal situation wherein we'll have the face-to-face -face learning. But for now, starting October 5, we have to make use of the weekly home learning plan. Okay. Next one, ayan. 
So we are done with the weekly home learning plan. Anyway, makikita niyo mamaya kung ano yung magiging itsura ng ating weekly home learning plan. Of course, following the different parts and the procedure that will be actually uh, introduced and be facilitated by Dr. Minerva Munoz. Now, the next tool is the individual learning monitoring plan. Now, what is this all about? Now, this is a more specific tool which shall be used by teachers and learning facilitators for learners who lagged behind as shown by the results of their formative and summative assessment. It's very clear. Hindi naman lahat ng learners natin ay gagawan natin ng individual learning monitoring plan. This is only intended for the learners who have or who lag behind as shown. Ito siguro yung mga hindi naka-reach ng mastery level. Okay? By providing intervention strategies for a certain period, the individual learning monitoring plan serves as the document that will show if the learner has shown either mastery of the learning competencies significant progress or insignificant progress. So ano yung sa mastery? Makikita natin mamaya kung paano natin masasabi na master niya yung learning competencies. There was a significant progress in the learning competencies or insignificant progress. Meron po tayong parang percentage uh, bracket for that. Okay. For learners who are given intervention activities, their weekly home learning plan shall be adjusted to suit their comprehension level. They should be provided with tasks that are respectful of their cognitive ability, but with the right amount of challenge until such time that they are prepared to handle the norm learning task. Now, what are those intervention strategies? Depende yan kung saan siya naglalag behind, kung anong particular subject area. Like for example, kung sa English, we might, we might use as well yung yung project ni Ma'am Magtang, yung I read, for example, kung, parang, kung may problema nga, pwede natin gamitin yon. Uh, in AP, I think, kung pwede pa namang applicable sa atin yung project I read, why not? So those are possible uh, intervention activities that we might, we might as well uh, provide to our learners. So be very specific and dapat i-detail natin kung ano yung intervention activities na ibibigay natin sa mga estudyante who, lag, who actually lag behind the perform or the achievement of the learning competencies. Next, individual learning monitoring plan shall be utilized to monitor learner progress based on the given intervention strategies. So parang ito yung, uh, ang plan na ito ay ginagamit to the students or the learners na binigyan natin ng mga intervention strategies. So what are its uses? First, it serves as a feedback data for learners who are provided with intervention activities. So malinaw. Ito ay bibigay lang sa mga learners na binigyan natin ng intervention activities. Bakit binigyan ng interve intervention activities? Because they were not able to meet the standard doon sa ating mastery level. Another use of the uh, individual learning monitoring plan is it provides a mechanism of support to learners who are lagging behind as manifested by the results of formative and summative assessments which may be gathered through their portfolio or collected samples of learning output. Another use of the individual monitoring plan is it makes the parents or guardians aware of the academic progress of their children and encourage them to strengthen their involvement in guiding and supervising the learning of their children at home. Okay, another one, it is to help decide on the effectiveness of the learning modality adopted for the learner and the possible modifications, adjustment that should be provided to improve learners' performance. Yeah. Another use of the individual monitoring plan is, of course, for teachers to be guided in adjusting learning content and tasks based on the characteristics, cognitive ability, readiness, interest, and profile of the learners. You may wonder, at the start of the school year, since wala tayong personal encounter sa ating, ano, sa ating mga sadyante, of course, you might be looking for other means on how to profile your students because profiling of your students is very much important, usually at the beginning of the school year, for them to know their 
of course, their distinct characteristics, each distinct characteristics, their level of cognitive ability, their readiness, their interest, and uh, that would actually think of you of what particular learning style or pedagogy or strategies that you might be using in your subject areas. Kasi syempre lahat sila ay nasa kanilang mga bahay. I think I'll have to lay that to our teachers on how to profile our learners. Of course, in designing our weekly home learning plan. Okay. So these are now the parts of the individual learning monitoring plan. I guess there are also four major parts of the individual learning monitoring plan. And these are the following. One is the learner's needs. Okay. Now, when we talk about the learner's needs, it refers to the gap between the required knowledge, skills, and attitudes described in the learning standard and the current status of the learner as evidenced by assessment results. These are the areas where learners need help in a form of intervention to help them meet the required learning competences. So in bullet form lang siguro ito, kasi naka-table din ito, uh, first column, ayan, learners need. Makikita niyo mamaya yung sample that will be shown to, show to you by Dr. Munoz. Okay? So next column would be the second part of the individual monitoring plan, which is the intervention strategies. Ito na yon. So I, as I've said, be very specific what intervention program or strategies are you going to use to answer also to cater to the needs of your learners who lag behind the attainment of the learning competencies. Now, these intervention strategies are these are program or set of steps to help the learners improve at areas they struggle with. Intervention strategies may be any of the following form, but not limited to extending time of completion of the task, adjusting the level of difficulty of the learning content or task, providing more guided activities before proceeding to independent activities, seeking for more supervised time with learning facilitator and giving sample prototype learning outputs or models to serve as reference for his or her own work. And the third column or the third major part is yeah, the monitoring date. It refers to the date when the teacher has evaluated the results of the learner's assessment after the sufficient time of implementing certain intervention strategies. Siguro naman, you have also to give ample time uh, to yourself in monitoring the said learner. Para naman at least maka, makaisip tayo ng paraan on how to reach them out. Learner's assessments may be through portfolios to include learning outputs such as written work, products, and performances evaluated using, of course, rubrics. Testimonies of parents, guardians, and learning facilitators regarding the learner's progress may also be considered as a matter of holistic assessment. And I think the last column or the last part of the individual learning monitoring plan is ito na yon, the status, the learner's status. Kung ito ba ay nasa three levels lang ito. It could be under sufficient progress, insufficient progress, or under mastery levels. Now, this refers to how well the student learns as a result of the teaching learning process in the learning delivery modality that he has chosen. It is determined after the assessment of the learning and completion of sufficient and appropriate intervention strategies. As what I've said, under this learner's status, tatlo lang yung ating pagpipilian dyan. And these are the following. In significant progress, ito yan. When do we say that it is in significant progress? Ito na yon. It refers to a status where a learner did not, may I emphasize, did not meet expectations doon sa learning competencies, doon sa milk of the learning standards and received a grade of 75 and below for the first quarter and did not improve performance in the succeeding quarters. So that is insignificant progress. The second level is, of course, opposite of the insignificant, significant. Okay. Significant progress referred to a status where a learner has significantly improved, take note, has significantly improved performance after provision of intervention strategies by meeting learning standards as manifested by an increase in his assessment result. 
Example, from did not make expectation doon sa insignificant in the previous quarter to fairly satisfactory with a grade scale of 75 to 79 in the su next succeeding quarter. So 75 below, insignificant. 75 to 79, that's significant progress. And the last level, of course, is the mastery. But it refers to a status where a learner has reached a level of mastery after provision of intervention strategies by meeting learning standards as manifested by an increase in the assessment results. Example from did not meet expectation or fairly satisfactory in the previous quarter to satisfactory with a grade scale of 80 to 84 or very satisfactory with a grade scale of 85 to 89 in the next succeeding quarter. Okay, so malinaw po, no? Under insignificant, pag sinabi natin insignificant, uh, did not meet expectations of the learning standards and received a grade of 75 and below for the first quarter and did not improve performance in the succeeding quarters. But significant, of course, it has actually, what, meet the this, this learning standards as manifested by increase in his assessment did not meet expectation in the previous quarter to fairly satisfactory with a grade scale of 75 to 79 in the succeeding quarter. Whereas the mastery level naman, of course, there is actually a, an increase in the assessment result from did not meet expectations or fairly satisfactory to satisfactory with a grade scale of 80 to 84 or to a very satisfactory with a grade scale of 85 to 89 in the next succeeding quarter. Okay, so that's individual learning monitoring plan. Ito lang naman importante na dapat nating matrack sa ating mga estudyante. Estudyante na binigyan natin ng mga intervention and strategies. Hindi lahat ng learners ay bibigyan natin ng ganitong individual monitoring plan. Only those learners who lag behind the expected learning competencies na dapat nilang ma-accomplish at the end of the lesson. Okay, the next one, still under individual monitoring plan, it should be noted that the individual learning monitoring plan is used only for learners who are not showing progress. Ayan, parang na, naulit ko lang. Not showing progress in meeting the required learning competencies. Teachers with these kinds of learners are advised to prepare the individual monitoring plan and communicate with their parents regularly through a home visitation. So malinaw, kung lalaroin nyo, di mas maganda nilang ipasa nyo na lang sila, joke. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So teachers with these kinds of learners are advised to prepare the individual monitoring plan and importante, you have to communicate with their parents regularly through a home visitation visitation. So kayo ho ang pupunta sa mga kabahayan nila. But of course, huwag nyo nang sabihin in advance na dapat may merienda kayo pagdating sa bahay nila. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> okay, para naman medyo lighter ang ating discussion. I think I have, uh, I am on my next, uh, last two slide. Teachers may also call the parents for a meeting, ayan, to discuss the intervention strategies and what they can do to strengthen their involvement in their child's learning. But in case of a face-to-face -face meeting, it's not possible. Teachers may communicate, ayan, may communicate with parents through emails. Pero lahat, hindi naman lahat ng parents, especially under remote areas, may email sila. Or through phone calls, ayan, usong-uso naman. Lahat siguro ng mga tao ngayon may, may cell phone. Social media, private messages, through people. SMS or any other. 
Hello again. Hindi natin maiiwasan ito <laughs> ang magkaroon tayo ng uh, abirya sa ating connection, lalo-lalo na ngayong hapon. Sige, tuloy tayo sa ating shoutout. Sino-sino na po ang mga nagbagong shoutout natin? Babalik po si Dr. Alan Macareg. Once na naayos na po nila ang kanilang connection, our apology for the moment. Kaya tuloy po tayo sa mga shoutout natin. Okay, nakikita ko po dito si Sir Jeffrey Munoz. Sana po makakuha kami ng saglit. Nagkaroon ng marami. <laughs> Natabunan tuloy si Sir Jeffrey. <laughs> saglit lang po. Makakuha kami ng copy ng mga slides ng topic. Sige sir, itake no, uh, sabihin po natin, request po natin sa kanila. Sabihin po natin kay Chief Edit. Next po, uh, pa-shoutout po, happy birthday kay Sir Bernard Rosario. Happy birthday po, virtual celebration. Sana makarating po ang inyong virtual um, handa. De, joke lang. Okay, moving forward. Mukhang okay na po si Sir Doc Alan. Okay na po. Pwede na po nating ituloy ang ating discussion. Ten. Slide 10. Slide 10. Nasa na slide 10. Sorry yeah. po. Okay It na po, sir. It was kanina. I was not aware na nakat pala yung aking session. Okay lang yun, sir. Uh, hindi na Light natin natin uh, uh, connection po ito. Okay. Okay, take the floor, sir, Alan. Okay, saglit lang po. Medyo nag-aayos ayos pa sila kaya na Okay. okay. Uh, number 10. Pwede na po. Okay, Gail, diyan ka ako sa slide number 10. Yes, sir. Diyan po. Ah, slide number 10. Okay. So, I'm back. <laughs> yes. I was not right. aware na at pala yung aking ano. Uh, in close kasi ako nag-session. In, uh, inspired kasi. Inspired. Joke. <laughs> okay, so for number 10, still on the individual monitoring plan, uh, take note that this individual learning monitoring plan is used only for learners who are not showing progress in meeting the required learning competencies. I repeat, not all learners will be actually given or doing a, an individual learning monitoring plan ng mga teachers. Ito lang ay intended doon sa mga learners or estudyante natin who are not really showing any progress at all in meeting the required learning competencies. Teachers with these kinds of learners are advised to prepare the individual monitoring plan and communicate with their parents regularly through home visitation. Take note, the teacher again are advised to communicate this individual monitoring plan sa mga parents regularly through a home visitation. So ayan, parang alam po dagdag trabaho sa atin. Uh, wala tayong magagawa. We are under, under a new normal, but let's embrace the new normal. Okay? So samahan nyo na rin siguro kapag punta kayo ng bahay nila, you give them a text na may merienda kayo. <laughs> so lang, pampapawi. Bawi lang sa pagod. Okay, next. Teachers may call the parents. Ito naman yung another way of, of communicating the individual learning monitoring plan. They may also call the parents for a meeting to discuss the intervention strategies and what they can do to strengthen their involvement in their child's learning. But in case a face-to-face -face meeting is not possible, teachers may communicate with parents through emails. Siyempre, hindi naman lahat ng mga parents, especially those living in a far-flung area, sa mga remote areas, they don't have email. So you can actually have the phone call, the social media private messages, sa kanilang messengers, sa Facebook, SMS, or any other modes of 
communication available. Okay, I think that's the last slide I've got for this individual learning monitoring plan. Okay, on that note, thank you very much, Gail. Okay na ba? Thank you very much. And to show you the sample of the individual learning uh, monitoring plan as well as the weekly home plan essential. Maraming maraming salamat again and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you Dr. Alan Makarev for the presentation on the things to ponder and consider in crafting our WHLP and IMP, their parts, their delivery and procedures as well. Maraming maraming salamat po. Sa ating lahat, huwag po kayong uh, magtaas ng kilay. Take it one step at a time, okay? Uh, akala lang po natin, mas mahirap gawin. Pero pag one step at a time po, marirealize natin, mabilis lang po natin gawin ito. Okay po? So again, moving forward with our uh, the same topic but with different um, learning facilitator. May I now call in Dr. Minerva A. Munoz, our EPS in ESP and SPED, to continue the discussion of our uh, WHLP and ILP. Hello, Ma'am. Ma Thank you so Thank much, Ma'am. Thank you, Ma'am. To our ESP and SPED. Um, I'm um, Lorden Servido, our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Justano Kayabiag, and our two chiefs, Dr. Editha Bridas and Sir Omar Gloria. And to all of you, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Okay. So after this, the discussion on procedures on how to craft and develop the weekly home learning plan and the individual learning plan, I will show you some samples of this uh, weekly home learning plan and the uh, individual monitoring plan. Okay. So, in my slides, it's a sample weekly home learning plan for grade 7. Uh, this was developed by Mom Anna Falcon of DepEd BLD. This is a sample weekly home learning plan for modular distance learning. So this is for grade seven. Week one, quarter one. Uh, let us edit the September 7 to, to 11, 2020 kasi ang mag-start mag po tayo ng klase ay sa, sa October 5. Pero uh, parang hindi pa yata October 5, mayroon pang gagawin ang mga bata for, those, for that week. Okay? So... Let us assume na October 5 po yan, mag-start tayo ng October 5 to October 9, okay, for the first week. Okay, so uh, Dr. Allen discussed about the different parts of the weekly home learning plan. So the first part is the day and the time. So it is there, nakalagay po dyan, nakikita po natin from 8 to 9 o'clock. And then another part is the learning area or the domain. When we say domain, this is for kindergarten or and the SPED, for the SPED, okay? And we have also the learning competencies or the, the learning competency. Ano ba yung MELP na gagawin o dapat nilang ma-achieve for that week? And then the learning tasks, the different activities and the mode of delivery. It was discussed by Sir Alan kung ano po ang mga nakalagay po dyan. And this is a sample. From 8 to 9, uh, sabi nga natin, ang, ang weekly home learning plan ay dapat i-coordinate natin o i-communicate natin sa ating mga magulang or guardians. Okay? Take note na hindi po lahat ng ating mga parents ay uh, magaling o Marunong magbasa ng English o nakakaintindi ng English. Ano po. So, pwede po natin i-contextualize ang nakalagay po dyan sa from 8 to 9 o'clock. Wake up, make up your bed, eat breakfast, and get ready for that awesome day. So, pwede natin uh, i-translate po yan, i-contextualize.
natin. Kung mas ayusin yan, uh, palitan natin. Or if Filipino, pwede rin pong uh, palitan po yan. Or ilagay na lang sa close parenthesis. Okay? So, kung makikita natin, hindi ka agad-agad magka magkakaroon ng uh, pag-aaral ang bata at the start of 8 o'clock. So, very friendly po ito. Hindi po pinipressure ang bata sa ating uh, weekly home learning plan. So, meron pa siyang hanggang 9.30. 9 to 9.30 is about uh, have a short exercise, meditation, bonding with the family. So, parang i-condition pa yung bata natin, ay yung mga, mga anak nila. So, hindi basta-basta ibibigay ka agad yung mga modules o yung mga learning, yung mga pag-aaral nila for that intended day. Okay? So, let us take note na uh, this weekly home learning plan ay hindi natin sila ibobombardize or hindi natin sila bibiglain on terms of academics but it should be balanced. So, meron na siyang exercise tapos uh, i-condition muna natin siya then we will give or ibibigay na po yung unang subject at, at 9.30 to 11.30. Okay? So, for this weekly home learning plan, sa Monday pa lang, sa Monday, we have the schedule at 9.30 to 11.30, that is uh, to 9.30 to 10.30, 10.30 to 11.30. So that means two hours, two hours niyang gagawin yung subject na naka-assign for the morning. And that is, here in the sample, is about the Araling Palipunan or under the learning area, Araling Palipunan. Grade 7 po ito, mga kasama. So, Etong learning competency ay kinopya po natin, kinopya po ni Ma'am Ana doon sa MELP, yung diniskas po ni Ma'am Ma Lilipes kanina. Okay? But we have to unpack this also kung hindi kaya ng bata. Okay? So nakalagay po dyan, sample po, yung first week po ng Araling Palipunan na, ipaliwa, na ipaliliwanag ang konsepto ng Asia tungo sa paghahating geographico Silangang Asia, Timog Silangang Asia, Timog Asia, Kalurang Asia, Hilagang Asia, at Hilaga o Gitnang Asia. So, yan po yung learning competency for that week. Okay? The, uh, how about the learning test? Okay. So, sa learning test, we will uh, write the, the title of the module. Kung ito ay module na galing sa central office or ito ay locally developed, under the, our project, project mode, or pwede rin pong mak, uh, kumuha din po sa uh, DepEd Commons and LR portals. But here, ang i-priority po natin ay yung galing po sa central office. Okay? So ito po yung binigay na lesson. Araling Palipunan Module 1, Lesson 1, Quarter 1, Week 1, uh, Katangi ang Pisikal ng Asia, Ito yung title ng module na yan ay galing, ito yung galing sa central office, okay? So, it was emphasized a while ago that Sir, uh, with, uh, emphasized by Sir Alan a while ago na isusulat po natin yung mga learning tasks, okay? Anyway, sabi niya, nandyan naman yung modules. Yun po yung first, uh, yung isang step doon, isang step na dapat bago tayo gumawa ng weekly home learning plan, we have the learning resource or yung modules na gagawin ng bata. So, Kapag na, naka, meron na tayong modules, malalagayan natin po natin yung learning task. Okay? Mailalagay natin yung mga gagawin ng bata following the parts in the modules. Okay? So, nagbigay pa ako ng sample dyan. Nung binrouse ko po itong, itong module ng Katangiang Physical ng Asia, uh, meron po siyang gagawin ang bata. Nandiyan po, sinulat ko po dyan. Sabi nga rin, rin ni Sir Alan, itab lang, itab lang natin kung ano yung gagawin ng bata o yung learning task na gagawin ng bata. Halimbawa, tukuyin kung saan lugar matatakuan ng mga larawan. Okay? So, kinuha ko pong lahat itong mga task na ito doon po sa module. Okay? Punan ng tamang uh, salita ang kaugnay sa larawan or paggawa ng concept organizer. So, yung paglalagay po ng tinang learning, ta learning task ay naka-ampla naka po ito doon sa ating modules na nandoon sa pinagkuhanan natin. But make sure na lahat po ng mga task na yan ay, ay aakma sa learner natin. Kasi sometimes hindi po natin maiwasan, may mga slow learners talaga tayo or may difficulties, may mga learners tayong may difficulties at hindi niya kayang gawin yung mga task doon. 
So then that's the time na pwede nating palitan or uh, i-modify yung mga task na nandun sa module at isusulat po natin dito sa learning task. Okay? So, ito pong weekly home learning plan na sinasabi, ay sinasabi namin ay bibigyan po ang mga magulang. So, alam po ng ating mga magulang kung ano yung gagawin ng kanilang anak. Kung paano sila i-guide. Okay? So, if ever na meron pong additional additional activity po tayo doon sa kanilang anak kasi nga magkakaiba po yung learner isusulat po natin dito sa learning test okay po uh, uh, in terms of mode of delivery nakasulat po dyan personal submission by the parents to the teacher in school so pwede pong personal o pwede pong ilagay sa drop box kung ano pong uh, mas prefer po ng school o ng community na pagsasubmit ng kanilang output. Okay po. So that is Monday morning, 9.30 to 11.30. Ang ating, ang nakalagay po dyan ay araling panlipunan lang po. Okay. Let's go to the afternoon. Afternoon ng Monday. Okay. Uh, nakasulat po dyan 1 to 3 o'clock. Meaning to say, 12 to 1, dapat meron lunch break ang bata. At pati yung mga magtuturo sa kanila. By the way, ta, uh, sa... Sa new normal ngayon, uh, tayong guro ay facilitator at ang partner natin as facilitator ay ang mga parents or guardians. So, facilitators din lang, pero partner natin sila. Okay po. Sa hapon po ng lunes ay edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. Itong, mga, itong learning competency na ito ay nandun din po sa MELC ng ESP natatanggap ang mga pagbabagong nagaganap sa sarili na may pagtataya sa mga kilos tungo sa maayos na pagtupad ng kanyang tungkulin bilang nagdadalaga o nagbibinata. Okay? So, so, dito naman sa ating learning task, isusulat po natin yung module at kung ano yung title ng module at mga learning task. Ang mga learning task na isinulat ko dito so ay nandun po sa mga module, sa, nandun sa module na ako ngayon ang title. So yan po, mula sa self-learning material, sagutin ang subukin, sumulat ng paliwanag o dahilan sa napiling talata sa journal notebook, gumawa ng profile mo noon at ngayon, basahin mabuti ang palatandaan at pagpapu at pag ay palatandaan ng pagunlad sa panahon ng pagdadalaga o pagbibinata sa iba't ibang aspeto. So, yan po ay mga mga sample lang po. Marami pa pong mga learning tasks na, na ilalagay po natin dyan. Sabi nga doon, sa, mamaya makikita po natin yung nakalagay sa notes po, kung ano yung ilalagay dyan sa learning task. Okay? So, and then, dito naman yung mode of delivery sa ESP, personal submission of by parent to the teacher in school. So, yun po ay sa sa lunes. Okay. Punta na tayo sa Tuesday o sa Martes. Okay. Uh, dito sa, Mar sa, sa Tuesday naman o Martes, uh, ganun pa rin ang gagawin nila 8 to 9.30 yung, yung uh, wake up, make up your bed and so on, have a short exercise and so on. Okay. So mag-start po sa Martes ang Filipino, sa umaga Filipino 9.30 to 11.30. Ito po yung mo, um, milk sa Filipino sa first uh, week. Nahihinu, nahihinuha ang kaugalian at kalagayang panlipunan sa, ng lugar na pinagmulan ng kwentong bayan batay sa pangyayari at usap, usapan ng mga tao. Okay. So, ang nakasulat po dyan ay title lang po ng, ng module hindi ko na po nailagay yung mga learning tasks na napaloob po sa module. Pero ilalagay po natin yung mga gagawin ng bata dito sa learning tasks na nakaayon po doon sa module. Okay? Take note po yung sinabi ko kung ang module o may mga parts ng modules na hindi po akma sa ating learner. Halimbawa, eh, mayroon doon gumupit ng gumupit ng larawan ng iyong pamilya, eh alam mo yung bata na hindi po siya makapagupit dahil wala siyang kamay, pwede po natin siya, pwede pong palitan. Okay? So pwede pong palitan yung mga 
uh, nandoon sa module sa ta- sa learning sa uh, pwede pong palitan yung mga nasa module na hindi kaya ng ating mag-aaral. Okay? So we have to consider our learners also. Okay? So yan po personal submission by the parents to the teacher in school. Ganun din po sa hapon, mag-start pa rin po ng 1 to 3 o'clock. Okay, English for English. I, uh, ang ang milk dito ay identifies real or make believe fact or non-fact images. Okay? So ito po yung nakalagay na module doon sa binigay ng central office pero wala pong binigay sa field na module sa sa grade 7 na sa English. Uh, kaya ang nilagay ko po dito ay yung yung ating module, yung locally developed natin under project mode. At naitanong ko po kay Ma'am Lily Beth na ang title po ng module ng first week sa English ay about analogy. Okay po. So, if ever na wala po tayong module, gamitin po natin yung ginawa natin sa division office. Okay. Next for Wednesday, again, we will start at 9.30 to 11.30. So, math naman tayo. Andiyan na po yung learning competency. Andiyan na po yung uh, uh, sa learning task, yung modules, sample of, yung, yung title ng modules. But since wala nga po din ang ES, ang, ang, uh, wala pong module from CO sa Math 7, ang pwede natin gamitin ay yung ginawa natin sa division, yung locally developed na module. Uh, and according to Ma'am uh, Mercy Dangat, Milagros Dangat, ang title ng module ay about ay tungkol sa sets and introduction. Okay, so ito po yung yung under the our project mode. Okay. The same mode of delivery, personal submission by the parents to the teacher in school. Next is yung let's go to the afternoon of Wednesday, science. Science naman. So the same Learning competency galing po sa MELP, first week. Then the title of the uh, uh, module na gagamitin po natin. At yung mga napaloob doon na gagawin ng bata, isusulat po natin dito sa table. Very personal submission by the parents to the teachers in school. Okay. Thursday na tayo, Thursday. So sa Thursday naman, uh, TLA. Sa TLA, marami po components siya. At ang sin, uh, sinample po nila dito ay ang beauty care. Okay? So ang MELC po dito, o learning competency po natin for the first week, explains basic concepts in beauty care or the nail care services. Okay? So beauty care, yung title po ng, ng module, if ever nawala po from CO, we have uh, ongoing uh, module, our, our locally developed modules under the project mode. Okay, The same mode of delivery, personal submission by the parents to the teacher in school. In the afternoon, it's MAPE. Uh, sa MAPE po, one component per week. Okay, We all know that MAPE is music, arts, P, and health. Okay? So in this sample, music muna. Music for this week, first week music. Okay, so ang MELC po dyan, uh, ang learning competency po ay describes the musical characteristics of representative music selections from the lowlands of the sun after listening. So yan po yung module na gagamitin natin and the learning task na gagawin ng bata ay kailangan po natin ilagay dito under this uh, title po ng module. Okay, following all the uh, parts of the module. Okay, again, personal Submission by the parents to the teachers in school. Okay. Uh, ito po yung isang isiningit po na napaka-importante po at may guidelines na rin po ito. At uh, this is about homeroom guidance program. It is not a subject but it is a program na meron po tayong legal basis on this. That we have to have the homeroom guidance program once a week, one hour. One hour in a week. Okay, so, 3 to 4 o'clock. So, meron din pong uh, milk po yan. Meron din pong learning competency na nakalagay for the first week. 
recognize that changes in oneself is a part of development. Okay, so ito po yung learning task paggawa ng journal or pagkakaan ng selfie pic and so on. So, uh, mode of delivery, personal submission by the parent to the teacher in school. Okay. So, let's go to the, let's go to, uh, malapit na, Friday na. Okay, so pag napapansin na, then every day may dalawa pong subject ang uh, pag-aaralan ng bata. Okay, so sa Friday naman, ito na po, at 9.30 to 11.30, parehas din po yung kanina ha, 8 o'clock to 9.30, meron po tayong routine na gagawin ng bata. So 9.30 to 10.30, revisit all modules and check if all required tasks are done. Okay, tingnan nyo mabuti. So, umaga pa lang, bago nyo isubmit o bago isubmit ng magulang sa inyo. Titignan nila. Okay? Then, 1 to 4 o'clock, parents or learners meet to return all modules and answer sheets for the week and get and get new modules to be used for the following week. Okay? So, ibabalik po ng magulang o ng bata yung modules na naasagutan niya with the answer sheet at kukunin na rin po niya yung next lesson for the week, yung modules na gagamitin nila for the next week. Okay po. So that is in the afternoon, 1 to 4 o'clock. And 4 o'clock onwards, it's family time. Okay. Magbanding-banding ang mga pamilya and so on. So so makikita natin na well-balanced po. May academics, mayroon pa, uh, may exercise, psychosocial uh, Development din dyan, and so on. Okay. Mayroon pong note dito, nakalagay. Note. Uh, let us uh, uh, read. Under the learning task column, write the title of the module, the task. Okay, ito yung sinasabi ko, yung mga task, gagawin, yung mga gagawin ng bata, consider all parts in the module. So, yung learning task na gagawin niya sa bawat part ng module ay isusulat po natin sa under learning task column. And the teacher may, sabi dito, may prepare a checklist of the module's parts for additional monitoring guide for both teacher and learner. Okay po. So, that's the sample for uh, junior high school grade 7. Okay, for modular distance learning. Okay, this is a sample for a blended distance learning. Uh, sample of weekly home learning plan for grade 7 under the modality of blended distance learning. Okay, uh, blended means uh, itong nakita ko ay online and mo uh, printed modular. Okay, so the same, ganyan din po. Wake up 9 to 9.30, have 9.30 to 11.30. And then po yung learning competency, illustrate well-defined sets, subsets, universal sets, null sets, and so on. Nakalagay po dyan. Yan po ay nasa mail po natin. Pwede na rin po natin i-copy-paste yan if you have a copy of the mail. Okay? So for the learning tasks, makikita din po natin dito. Uh, from the SLM or the self-learning materials, consider the following set. So, nakalagay po dito sa learning task yung mga gagawin talaga ng bata. Okay? Uh, present the following using a Venn diagram. Nakalagay po uh, intersection of B and C. So, so, uh, hello. Kikita po natin dito sa learning task that the Good afternoon po. Nag-choppy po ang ating connection ulit. Uh, ayusin lang po natin saglit. So, continue po tayo sa ating shoutout. Talaga po bang ano, walang magsha-shoutout ng monthly anniversary? 
Ma ano? Ang tawag nila? <laughs> Mansory. Okay. Mansory. Anniversary. Daysory. O baka meron na rin tayong minisory. <laughs> o hindi kaya secondary. Okay? So shout out po. Um, para po sa, akin, sa ating mga katanungan, Uh, maya maya po uh, i-entertain po natin uh, kailangan lang po natin uh, i-kunin lahat ng ating mga inquiries para po maibato natin sa uh, proper authorities na sumagot ng ating mga concerns and uh, issues po so shout out po muna tayo from <clears throat> Ma'am Erlinda Bugayong the twins still watching. Thank you po so much. A while back, about 20 minutes ago, we are we have um, 670 plus participants po na nanunod sa atin. Maraming maraming salamat pa rin po sa inyong lahat at uh, hindi po nyo kami iniiwan. Okay? Alamin po natin na para sa atin naman po ito. Okay po? Another shout out from Sir Christopher Aboy. Still watching from Turak National High School. Thank you so much. Uh, from Mount Flores, Posadas. Uh, still watching. Thank you rin po. Okay, so pwede na po yata si Ma'am Mimi. Atayin po natin. Ma'am Mimi, are we there? Okay, andyan na. Thank you, Gail. Thank you po. Nawala ko. Yes po. So you may take the format. Let us continue. Kanina na-discuss po natin yung, ano, yung morning. Na, ito ay blended, ano po, blended uh, distance learning modality. Uh, so kanina na-discuss natin yung Monday. It's about... Uh, yung umaga, sa umaga ay mathematics. Okay? Ito na tayo, sa Filipino na tayo. Okay? So, gaya ng nasabi ko, Filipino yung learning area natin ng umaga, ay ng hapon ng Monday, afternoon of Monday. And our learning competency, ito po, naihinuha ang kaugalian at kalagayang palipunan ng lugar na pinagmulan ng kwentong ba, parehas din po doon sa dinis, eh, kinuha din natin kanina sa modular distance learning. At ang learning task natin dito, kung makikita natin, ay magkaiba yung learning task nito. Okay? Magkaiba. Iba po doon sa kanina. Okay? Kasi dito, nakalagay na po dyan yung, kasi nga, blended ito, online, or uh, blended and printed. Okay? Printed and online. Okay? So, mula sa SLM, basahin ang alamat ng lawa ng paway na matatagpuan sa, okay, andyan po na po yung link. Okay. Pagkatapos po niyan, ay sasagutin ng mga bata yung mga tanong na isinulat ng ninyo dito sa learning task. Okay. Tapos nandyan na rin po yung mga follow-up o yung mga other activities or learning tasks na gagawin ng bata o ng mag, uh, grade 7. Okay. So, mode of delivery, ganun din. Ang magulang ang magpapasa ng output sa dropbox na nasa eskwelahan sa petsa ng pagpasa bago matapos ang buwan. Okay. Sa petsa ng uh, sa petsa ng pagpasa bago matapos ang buwan. So, parang meron pang allowance. Ano po. Okay. So, sa Tuesday naman, uh, ito, science. Uh, in passing na lang po ang pagsasabi, pag, pag, uh, basa ko po, ano po, kasi meron pa rin po akong itapakita ang mga sample uh, weekly home learning plan sa uh, elementary, sa senior high, sa ALS, meron pong sa ALS, at saka sa special education. Okay, so sa science, ganyan din po. Kung makikita natin, mga learn, uh, yung MELP, nandyan din po, yung learning competency and the learning test. Okay? At saka yung mode of delivery. Sa hapon ng Tuesday, parang nakita ko maganda itong schedule nila. Ano po? Kasi sa umaga ng Tuesday, science. And then sa afternoon, education sa pagpapakatao. Okay? So kung makikita natin, parang maganda yung scheduling nila ata dito sa sample na binigay ng central office. Okay? 
science pinagsama ang edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. Parang hindi masyado mabigat yung sa hapon na. Ano. Mabigat sa um, morning, sa sci- yung sa science, and then sa afternoon, uh, edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. Okay? So, at the same, we have the learning competency. And then here, yung learning task na gagawin nila, nakasulat po siya. Mula sa SLM, kung ito ay galing sa SLM, isusulat po natin. If ever na may papanoodin po sila na video, just cite the site or yung, 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 kung sa anong link nila mapapanood yung uh, gagawin nila. Okay. Andyan na rin po yung mode of delivery. Okay. On Wednesday, uh, English naman. Wednesday morning, 9.30 to 11.30, English. Ayan po yung sinasabi ko. Yung sa learning task, meron po siyang uh, link kung saan nila mapapanood yung uh, lesson o yung gagawin nila. And then, meron din po mga activities na gagawin ng bata. Okay? So, in the afternoon of Wednesday, it's TLA. TLA, Beauty Care. So, sa umaga, English. Sa hapon, TLE. Or your Beauty Care. Okay? Ganun din po. Ayan po yung learning competency and the learning task mga gagawin ng mga bata. Okay. For Thursday, sa umaga, araling palipunan, ito yung uh, learning competency and the uh, learning test o mga gagawin ng mga mga mag-aaral o mga bata natin. Okay? So, because of blended nga, sinabi ko, meron po dyan nakalagay na link na gagawin, panunuri ng mga bata. Uh, in the afternoon of Thursday music naman. Okay. Sabi nga dito one ma- uh, one map eh, component per week. So nilagay lang dito yung mga pagpipilian, pwedeng kunin mo yung music, etong part na ito yung music, sa art ito naman at meron din po tayong PE at saka health. So be bahala na po uh, kung ano po yung uh, unahin niyo. Huwag niyo pong pagsabay-sabay yun po natin yung yung music, arts and PE for that week, isa lang po sa isang, isang component lang po sa isang linggo. Okay, gaya na po ng TLA. Okay, so yan po. Ganun pa rin sa Friday, yan, uh, self-assessment test, portfolio preparation, reflective journal, and so on. And, then, uh, and retrieval, retrieval na, magkakaroon na ng self-assessment test, portfolio preparation, and so on sa afternoon na Friday. This is another uh, sample. This is a sample uh, weekly home learning plan for grade 4. Okay? Uh, quarter, uh, week 1, quarter 1. So, assuming na mag-start po tayo na October 5 to 9. Uh, October 5 at saka until 9, that is one week. Okay? So, yan po. The same, my 8 to 9, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. The same routine, gagawin po nila, I- i-communicate po natin ito sa ating mga magulang or guardians ng ating, ng mga mag-aaral. Sa Monday o sa Lunes, limbawa, edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, ayan po. Okay? So sa grade 4, uh, edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, ito po yung learning competency, ito po yung task, ito yung uh, title ng module, pero under that module or uh, Isulat po natin yung mga task o mga gagawin ng mga mag-aaral o mga bata na napapalog po doon sa module na ito. Okay. So, isinulat ko lang po yung title dito. Hindi ko na po naisulat yung mga gagawin nila dito. So, anyway, uh, bago po tayo gumawa ng learning plan, dapat meron na po tayong modules. Tama po ba? Ma-browse na natin yung mga modules. Mabasa na natin. Makita na natin kung ito ay suited o kailangan bang i-contextualize din. Okay? Kasi galing po sa central office, may iba't iba pong region ang gumawa po noon. Baka pwede po natin i-contextualize. Dito po natin susulat sa learning task. Okay po. Another uh, mode of delivery, personal submission by parents to the teacher in school, and so on. Okay? So, parehas din po, araling palipunan, sa hapon, isa lang, sa hapon. Uh, yan po yung mail, o yung learning competency. Ito yung title. Wala pong binigay ang CO na module. Uh, kaya po, yung gagamitin natin ay yung locally developed in our division under the project mode. Project mode. Okay? Sa Tuesday, ganun din po, dalawang subject. Okay? Sa umaga, isa. Sa hapon, isa rin. 
Okay, so pare-parehas po yan. Ganyan po yung paggawa ng ating weekly home learning plan. Wednesday, uh, Wednesday morning mathematics, in the afternoon science. Sample po ito ha, isample po ito. Sa Thursday, ganun din po, uh, EPP pag elementary, pag secondary, TLE, uh, EPP, NTREP or ICT, ito po, isang component lang po, NTREP or ICT, ang kinuha natin. And then in the afternoon of Thursday, MAPE, one component din, ang kinuha natin ay health. Health la. So, yan po. Pag makikita po natin yung project mode na nilagay ko po dyan, ay uh, ito po yung ang, ang, ang pwedeng gamitin ang iyong ginawa natin dito sa division office. Okay. Anyway, na-evaluate po ito. Dumaan po sa mahabang proseso. Okay po. Nga lang, pag may learners tayong may difficulties at may, may special needs, then that's, then that's a time na pwede tayong magbigay ng other activities na wala po doon sa sa module or kaya pwedeng yung hindi kaya ng bata doon sa module ay palitan natin ng ibang activity na kaya ng ating mga learners na may difficulties or may uh, special needs. Okay po. The same po, we have also the homeroom guidance program, one hour. And then Friday, ganun pa rin. So, this is for senior high school, STEM, uh, grade 11 STEM. Itong uh, mga subjects na ito, na, mga learning area na ay kinuha ko po doon sa, sa, sa offer nila for the first STEM sa STEM. Okay? So, or in the morning, oral communication in context, ito po yung pinakuhanan ko sa milk. Ay, ito yung kinuha kong milk. Ay, ito yung kinuha kong learning competency sa milk. Okay, for the first week, ito po yung ating uh, module. At sabi ko nga, la, yung mga nandun sa modules, ilalagay natin dito yung mga learning tasks na gagawin ng ating mga bata. Okay, so kayo na po yung mag-fill up ng mga learning tasks dyan. Basta make sure na nabasa po natin yung modules bago tayo gumawa ng, ng weekly home learning plan. Okay, and so on. Okay. Yan po yung sample natin. Okay. Meron din career guidance or guidance program. Okay. At sa Friday din po, yun na po yung pag-check, pagbigay, pagsauli, paggawa ng portfolio, pag pag sasauli ng mga modules na natapos po at pagkuha ng the next yung next mod o next lesson for the next week. Okay, this is for the owls. Binigay po ito ni Sir Terry at saka ni Ma'am Lorna Kagiwa. Uh, sample weekly home learning plan po sa owls. Uh, week 1 quarter 1. Okay? So, yan po sa umaga isang isang subject din lang. Okay, nandiyan din po yung learning task nila. Parang online, it, ayan, blended, blended po ito kasi meron. Hello, I'm back. Pasensya po ulit. Naglalag si Ma'am Mimi. Mukhang malapit na siyang matapos kaso biglang naglalag uh, ang ating connection. So, sana be patient lang po. Be patient. So, tuloy tayo sa shoutout. Our shoutout. Um, Okay, Ma'am Zinaida Camacho Cruz is still watching. Good afternoon po, Madam Mini. Good afternoon din po, in Beato, Ma'am Mini. Uh, si Ma'am Jonisha Ramos. Good afternoon po from Talang Central School. Yes, good afternoon po sa inyo. 
Kay Ma'am Julie Rosario. Good afternoon po, Madam Mini, watching from Payar ES. Thank you po. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah. I'm back. Wala pa rin. Okay na tayo, Ma'am Mini. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Pagtsagad na lang natin, konti-konti na lang. Konti-konti na lang. Sa ALS na lang tayo, ALS. Okay. So, natapos na tayo sa senior high kanina. Yung kanina, yung super pinresent kong weekly home learning plan ay for grade 11 uh, under STEM. Okay po. So, eto naman po ay sa ALS. So, kabibigil lang po po ito kanina ni Sir Terry. Pinaghirapan po ni Sir Terry at saka ni Ma'am Lord nakagiwa po itong ating weekly home learning plan. Okay, so, but I'm going to present to you yung one day lang, pero we will follow pa rin, ha, yung weekly, yung Monday, Tuesday. Basta take note, hindi po natin ilalagay lahat ng subjects sa isang araw. Hindi po kakayanin ng magulang, ha. Ma mawiwindang ang magulang, mas maski ang, ang mga bata. Okay? So, for us, sa Monday, Yan po, English muna sila. Yung learning competency din po nila, kinuha nila sa kanilang uh, MELC sa ALS. And also the learning task, nandiyan po yung mga learning task na sinulat po nila. Ayan po. Okay. And mode of delivery, send outputs to GC. Oh, my GC sila created by mobile teacher. Have the parent guardian submit the output to the teacher. Okay. So that is in the morning of Monday. For in the afternoon naman, Filipino. Okay, so the same, we have the learning competency and the learning task na gagawin ng mag natin sa us and also the mode of delivery. Okay, so we will not discuss yung other remaining days. Basta tandaan po natin na dalawang uh, subject lang for a day. Okay. But, for special education, hindi po pwede, hindi kakayanin ng bata ang dalawang subject. Ito po yung na, lalo pag sila ay severe or profound. Okay? So this is a sample weekly home learning plan for special education uh, for learners with intellectual disability, okay? ID. Okay? So, so ito yung mga naka-self-contained. So, kung mapapansin natin, the same pa rin yung routine nila, 8 to 9.30, ganyan din ang gagawin nila. Gagawin ng bata at saka yung parents, our partner. So, nag-start ng 9.30 to 11.30, ang kanilang learning area or domain. Uh, ito rin ay applicable din sa kindergarten. Okay po. Uh, kasi ang mga learning domain po ng SPED ay kinukuha din po namin sa, sa kindergarten. So, yan po yung subject pagpapunlad sa kasanayang socio-emotional. Okay? Nakikilalang pangalan at apelyedo. So, pangalan muna at saka apelyedo. Okay? So, meron po tayong, kung walang binigay ang CO, meron po tayong module sa SPED sa na ginawa dito sa ating division under project mode. So, uh, ang title po ay pagkilala ng sariling pangalan at apelyedo. Kung ilalagay po natin ang learning task dyan, pwede pong, uh, ang, ang matatandaan po po dyan, kasi ako isang, isa po ako sa nag-evaluate, nandyan, nandyan po yung pagharap sa salamin at sasabihin ang kanyang pangalan, pagkukwento ng magulang kung paano ang kasiyahan nila nung nagkaroon sila ng anak and so on. Okay, so marami pong mga learning task na isusulat ang ating SPED teacher dito under the learning task. Okay? So, yan din po yung sinabi ko kanina, i-contextualize din natin. Personal na pagsumite o pagpasa ng magulang sa guro sa paralan. So, parang yan din po yung translation. Sabi ko nga kanina, ipocommunicate ito sa ating mga magulang. Kaya, if ever na hindi po ma magaling o hindi nakakaintindi ng English ang ating mga parents, pwede po natin uh, i-contextualize yung mga nakalagay po dyan. Okay? Sa... Sa SPED, sa hapon, ay hindi na po sila mag-aaral ng other subject kung hindi uh, sila ay mamamahinga, magpapahinga. Uh, magnanap, muna, magnanap sila ang tag doon. Uh, may, may, 
pahinga sila, matutulog muna sila hapon sa hapon at saka syempre sa mga gagawain nila sa hapon, huwag kalimutang ipaalala yung kanilang pangalan at apelyedo, yung kung ano yung lesson nila kanina umaga. So, yun po. Sa next day, Tuesday, uh, the same learning area, the same domain, ito naman ay nakikilala naman ang kanyang kasarian. Okay? So, yung kasarian naman ang uh, tatalakayin natin sa Tuesday. Okay? So, yan po, pagkilala ng kasarian, yung ating title ng module at yung mga learning tasks isusulat po natin dito. Okay? Na nandun sa module. If ever, kasi po ang special education po ay may level-level din po yan. Kahit, uh, kahit spend sila may level 1, level 2, level 3 pa rin. Minsan nga, mabanggit lang ang pangalan nila at saka apelyedo, it's good for one week na. So, if ever na hindi po ito kaya ng bata, then we can have another learning task here under under this column. Okay? So, depende po yan kasi mayroon din pong individual assessment po ang mga ating mga mag-aaral. Okay po? So, yan po sa Wednesday, ganun din po. The same subject, parehas na subject, okay. isang subject lang, pero yung competency naman ay uh, may, uh, pa iba iba pero the same competency or the same domain. Okay. Dito naman sa Wednesday, nakikilala ang gulang o kapanganakan o yung edad niya. Okay. So, mayroon po tayong module dyan. Hapon, ganun din. Sa so Thursday, the same, pero naman, ito naman ay nakikilala na ang gusto at di gusto. Okay. Ang mga learning competency na ito ay napapalo po sa kindergarten uh, milk uh, at uh, imo-modify po ng mga SPED teachers natin na isusut po nila sa level ng ating mga mag-aaral sa special education. Okay po. Ayan po. Sa so Friday, ganun din po. Titingnan ng magulang kung lahat ng modules ay nagawa ng bata. Tapos pag-submit ng mga modules at saka answer sheet na ginawa ng bata for the whole week. At sa 4 o'clock na onwards, family time or oras sa pamilya. Okay, so that's, that is uh, weekly home learning plan samples. Okay, samples po yan ng mga ating weekly home learning plan na gagawin na natin. Mag-umpisa na po tayo kasi we are required to submit that. Sabi nga ni Sir, uh, as much possible, ibigay na po, i-communicate natin yung first quarter on the first meeting with our parents. Okay po. Now I will present to you the uh, sample individual monitoring plan. Okay po. Then ito po yung itsura ng o yung yung ng ating individual learning monitoring plan. Sabi nga ni Sir Alan, ibibigay o gagawa lang tayo ng plan dun sa mga learners natin na loggers o na, may mga learning competency na hindi po na uh, achieve ng learner natin o yung uh, talagang kailangan ng remedial instruction or remediation. Okay? Uh, this is included in the appendix F of memorandum Uh, DMCI 2020-00162 from Justado M. San Antonio under our undersecretary. Okay, so nilagyan ko lang po ng, ng mga uh, sample po dyan. For example, learner's name, ako po, Minerva A. Munoz, grade 7 po ako. Uh, yan po yung pangalan ko at ako ay nangangailangan ng, ng remediation. Okay. Anong learning area may, uh, kailangan uh, i-monitor? Uh, for example, science. Okay. Sa so, science. Anong needs? Ano learner learners need? Anong kailangan ko? Well, prior knowledge on the topic. Uh, for example, she has no background in performing the experiment. Ito, na-interview ko po si Ma'am Jesus sa Makam at sila po ay nagbigay po ng mga uh, sample ng learners needs in science. Okay. So, yan po yung nabanggit niya sa akin at ito po ay share ko po sa inyo. Sample po ito. Halimbawa, 
Uh, meron din po akong problema in problem-solving skills, comprehension skills, and so on. Okay, for math, for example, math naman. Mastery of basic mathematical operations. Example, she has a difficult thing adding numbers. Okay, so ito yung mga needs. Okay, problem-solving skills. Okay, for English, halimbawa sa English naman, yung aking ano, uh, hindi ako makapasapasa sa English. <laughs> Parang ganun. Uh, ano yung needs ko? Reading skills. Okay. Like for example, yung sa decoding, uh, phonological awareness, sound symbol, correspondence. comprehension. Yan po yung sample ng learning. Hello, I'm back. Presensya na po kung kailan malapit na tayong matapos saka ba nagkakaganito ang connection natin. Sige, another shoutout po from Mang Felisa Bernaldez watching from Surigao del Norte. Hashtag learn as 1PH. Thank you po sa mga taga Surigao del Norte. Again, moving forward. Ready, ready na po yata ulit si Mami. Mami. Okay, so strategy provider. Ito po yung na-mention. Okay na po. Yes, ma'am. Ano oras na ang? Okay. Hindi siya word lang. Trouble connecting, having trouble connecting. Okay, na? Okay. Ano po makikita? Hello! <laughs> Talaga naman ang ating connection. Thanks ko. Hindi na nakisama sa atin. Anyway, sige, shout out tayo ulit. Ma'am, to Ma'am Felisa Bernaldez of Surigao del Norte, thank you, thank you. As far as Surigao del Norte, uh, you're watching with us. Thank you po. Shout out again from Sir Christopher Aboy of St uh, Still Watching from Turak NHS. Uh, another po. Thank you, Mom. Mom Marites Velasco, Kabatbat, congratulations on Carlos City Division. Maraming salamat din po. Congratulations din po sa inyo, Ma. Okay na po. Okay, sir. Okay na? Hello po. Why that? Ito po yung... Okay, na nakikita nyo na po yung aking pinipresent? Okay, so a while ago, ito po yung... 
yung sample ng learners' needs natin in different learning area. Halimbawa lang po ito. Ano po. Ito po ay uh, binigay po ng ating mga butihing education, edu uh, edu education program supervisors na concern po sa mga learning areas. So ito po yung mga samples po na learners' needs na nakikita po nila. Okay. So, intervention strategies provided. Ito po yung na-mention po ni Sir Alan kanina. Example lang, extension of time in complete intense and tasks, provision of more guided activities before proceeding to independent activities, provision of sample prototype less learning outputs or models to serve as a reference to his or her own work. So, ito po yung na-mention po pa na ni Sir Alan na nakalagay po sa sa communication. Ito po yung intervention na uh, binigay po ng ating mga education program supervisors. Some suggested interventions. For uh, One is provision of supplementary materials. Okay, right now we have the activity sheets. Nawala na naman ako. Okay. <laughs> We have the activity sheets um, under the project heirs of Region 1. Uh, lahat po ng grade level, ang Region 1 po ay nag-prepare po ng activity sheets. Uh, uh, ito po ay uh, nakategorize po siya sa simple, moderate, difficult, and, and for enrichment. Okay, so... Lahat po ng level ng learners natin ay pwede nating magamit ang mga activity sheets na ito. Okay? So, lahat po yan ng grade level, meron pong uh, inihahanda ang Region 1 okay, ng activity sheets. Okay? We have also the provision of downloaded activity sheets from LRMDS or DepEd Commons and other sites na, na credited po ng DepEd. Okay? We have also the digitized IMs, enhanced digitized IMs na ginawa po ng ating uh, mga teachers using the OER applications. Okay? Meron po tayo yan. And according to Ma'am Lilibeth Magtang, meron din po tayong le leveled reading kits to be brought by teachers to community learning areas. So, yan po. We have also the facilitator's guide for reading remediation. So, outgoing po yung development facilitators guide. So, these are the sample uh, uh, intervention that we can uh, give to our learners. Okay. We have also the K2 grade 3 videos on premier lesson. Gumagawa po tayo ng ganyan uh, mga video. Some are like, hindi magbasa. And we provision of the toys, the tablets, and so on. Pwede tayo sa cards, okay? Or pwede tayo mga real objects or realia, okay? Printed materials for the learners with difficulty in seeing. And another one is uh, yung tablet with installed video lessons. In case na hindi po, hindi po siya magaling sa paggawa ng experiment, we can, uh, uh, we can ask the, the parent to, um, yung... Diyan, uh, hiramin natin yung, upunin natin yung tablet na binigay ng central office, especially sa high school na meron po silang mga tablets at naka-install po doon yung mga visual lessons at pwede po natin ibigay sa kanila para mapanood nila yung mga yun. Okay? Na makakatulong sa, na masolusyonan yung learner's needs ng bata in a specific learning area. Okay? We have also the different programs and projects in uh, schools and even the division, na yung kay Ma'am Beth, yung IRID, yung pang-aro, pwede rin po yung sa inyong schools, yung kapatid ko, turuan ko, o kapit-bahay ko, turuan ko, and so on. These are the sample uh, interventions. Okay? 
And of course, we have to establish roles with the parents and learners, and it can be done during the orientation with the parents. Okay, so yan po yung sample intervention strategies. Okay, pwede po natin ilagay dyan kung ano po yung kailangan ng bata. Okay, monitoring date. Napansin mo natin na sa pag-submit ng kanilang, ng kanilang modules o yung activity sheets, meron talagang mga bata na hindi po nagawa yung mga almost all ng mga activity sheets hindi niya nagawa. So we can uh, uh, jot down here or write the, the date kung kailan mo natuklasan na ma mahina siya or hindi niya nakuha yung learning competency. Sabi doon sa isang isa, nabanggit ni Sir Alan, pwede pong after the the periodical test or yung yung summative test or formative test. Okay? Na, ma, napansin mo na na mababa na siya at medyo hindi niya na talaga mamimit yung 75%, bigyan ka agad ng intervention. Okay? So, na-mention din po ni Sir Alan yung, insignific yung meaning ng insignificant progress, ilang percent. Pag in case na uh, hindi pa rin uh, hindi pa rin nag-improve, change the intervention. Nagbigay ka ng intervention, hindi pa rin po nag-improve yung bata, palitan po yung intervention. Baka hindi po suited sa kanya. Okay? Kapag meron nag-progress, then that's the time dito po natin lalagyan ng check. Hanggang ma-master po ng bata yung needs niya. Okay? So, yan po yung uh, yung guidelines kung paano natin ilalagay siya sa sa insignificant progress ba, significant progress, and mastery, other mastery. So, nabanggit na rin po ni Sir Alan yung mga percentage po dyan. Okay? With this, thank you so much at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Okay, congratulations, Dr. Uh, Minerva Munoz. Thank you so much. Uh, before we proceed with our Q&A portion, I would just like to greet some shout out. Uh, coming from Ma'am Adalaida Carino, happy birthday to our school head from Bulingit NHS po. Uh, from Ma'am Clarita A. Mendoza, pa shout out po, advance happy birthday to our beloved principal of Mabal Balino National High School. God bless po. Si Sir Johnny po, ang ating school head. Uh, meron po po, sabi ni Sir Fortunato de Guzman, makulimlim na po sa Mabal Balino. Nagbabadla na ang malakas na ulan po. Okay lang po yan, Sir Fortunato. At least, lalamig ang ating panahon. ba diba? Kanina, init-init. O, di ba? Next. Meron pa po dito eh. May isa pang nag-birthday. Uh, mukhang nawala. Ito po, pa-shout out. Ah, ayun na po. Si Sir, si Sir, sa Bulingit, NHS, si Sir Orlando. Happy birthday. Okay, we proceed with our Q&A portion. Ma'am Mimi, are you there? Yes, yes, Ma'am Gail. Yes. Okay. For our first question po, galing kay Miss Sasa Gallego Layakan. Paano po ang paano po ang ano po ito? <laughs> paano po ang oras ng module distribution sa Monday po? Paano po yung oras ng module distribution sa Monday po? Uh, nakalagay po doon sa weekly home learning plan na uh, mag-start na po tayo ng Monday. Ano po? Nakita po natin doon sa sample. Uh, ang sandali lang hinahanap, itinatawag ko po si Sir Alan since ito po yung topic namin dalawa at para mag-collaborate po kami. Eh, uh, Siyempre, with our CID chief, ano po. Pero doon sa oh. weekly home learning plan, meron na po tayong schedule, ano po, sample po yun. Na sa Monday po, ay meron na po tayong subject for morning, ano po. And then, hanggang sa Thursday. Yung sa Friday po, nakita natin din doon na, na pagsasauli at pagkuha na rin po ng, ng module. Nakita po natin doon sa sample po. Okay, mukhang na, natanong, okay, natanong, nasagot na po ni Ma'am Mimi yung ating first question. Next question po. 
From Sir Romel Dalisay. Naku, kapatid po ata ni Gardo Dalisay to. Hindi naman po ah. Okay. <laughs> Good PM po. As lang po. Yung code po. Ilalagay po ba? So, mami, okay. yung code po. Thank you so much for that uh, very good question. Ano, Sir Romel, uh, doon sa sample na binigay po ng CEO, wala pong code. Ano po? Uh, anyway, ito po ay communication from CEO. Naku, mukhang... Ano po ang masasabihin po ng ating um, ng high or even our CID chief and all of us here in uh, in the office. Ano po? Yun po. Yun po muna yung uh, pinreset na I sampled po from CEO. Okay. Next, for our next question, from Sir Marlito Austria. Naku, mahaba ito. Good PM po. Ask ko lang po kung kailangan bang strictly if follow ng parent or students yung nakalagay na schedule sa WHLP, what if the student prefer to start with mathematics because it is her favorite subject? Pwede po ba unahin niya yon o dapat kung kailan ang sked ng math ay dun lang niya gagawin ang math module niya? Okay ma'am, parang hindi okay. po ito sa schedule ng... Uh, I have here my partner, Sir Alan. Sir Alan, I am. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. Sir Alan. Nasasagot po dyan sa question. Hello, Sir Alan. Dok Alan. Yes, hello, Gail. Good afternoon. Yes. Can you hear me sir? loud and clear? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Tapo. So, what's the question? Kay Sir Wardito. Uh, ano yung tanong, kung kailan, kailangan bang strictly follow ng parent or students yung nakalagay sa schedule ng week home learning plan? What if the student prefer to start? Uh, okay, doon naman sa guidelines na na-discuss ko kanina, uh, if you were actually to this, asahin lang din naman doon sa guidelines na kung ano yung unang subject sa morning na nakalagay doon sa weekly home, ayun uh, ang i-follow niya. So I guess nasa parent na rin siya o nasa doon sa student, kung alin doon ang uunahin niya, Basta yung nakalagay doon na subject areas doon sa weekly home learning plan ay matapos niya within the day or within the week. Kasi tendency talaga, may ganung pwede mangyari na mas feel ng bata, yun nasagutan muna yung easiest na subject para sa kanya, tapos pag medyo mahirap, ihuhuli niya yung ano. So there's no prescribed talaga na kung ano yung nakalagay na unahin, dapat unahin. Uh, wala silent naman doon sa guidelines na pinresent ko kanina. Okay. Answer po ba? Hello, Mami. Okay. Do you have any additional? Okay. Okay. Magbibigay ba? Okay. Kay Ma'am Sasa, magbibigay ba ng copy ng work? So, learning, learning plan. plan. Okay. So, kanina na na-discuss ko, preferably, of course, di ba magbibigay tayo ng copy sa mga parents. You may or, ang nakalagay din kasi, you may give copy. Hindi naman ang sinabi, you may or may not. Ang sinabi niya is, you may give copy of the work, weekly home learning plan sa parents. Pwede po mga sa Friday at ito yung pala at same time. Okay, mamili? Uh, yes, yes po. Okay. Nakalagay po that nandun po sa weekly home learning lang na sample na kapag binalik po yung ano, module ng Friday afternoon. Pukunin na rin po niya yung text. Uh, para po iwas na rin sa Yes, yes ma'am. Ma for our next question, 
Ito po. Follow up po ang question naman po. So, ibig sabihin po, Friday retrieval at distribution for the next week. Mamini? Uh, ang retrieval po, ang pag sasauli po na ang ating activity sheets o yung modules po ay sa Friday po. Ano po? Doon sa uh, weekly, uh, sample weekly home learning plan. Po. Nandun din po yung schedule na pagkuha na rin po ng module for the next week. Okay, so parang distribution na rin po yun ng module for the next week. But be sure na yung weekly home learning plan po ay na-communicate po at na-explain po sa parents. Kung ano yung mga learning tasks, kasi yung weekly plan, di ba? Nandun yung mga different parts. At saka yung learning tasks na gagawin po ng ating mga learners for the whole week, for the, for the day, and for the whole week. Okay, question from Sir Rogelio. Dito po ba sa weekly home learning plan, ipapattern yung class schedules po? Napansin ko po na two hours lang po nakaalat per subject area po. Baka po kasi kulangin yung time sa pagbasa at pagsagot sa week 1 o module 1 with 20 pages o flexible naman po. I guess Sir Rogelio, yeah, tama po kayo, flexible naman siya. Okay, flexible naman siya kung ano. Regarding sa class schedule ng mini, ano yung sabi ni Chief Edit kanina? Uh, parang mag-uusap kayo kung ano talaga yung, ano, yung, uh, meron pa rin po yung class schedule, but uh, mag-uusap mag po kayo kung ano po yung uh, gagawin nyo, kung ano yung mauuna, and so on. Para ganun din po yung weekly home learning plan po natin. Okay, kasi yung sample na nilagay doon, pinagsama po ang English at saka science ata or math yun sa isang araw. Parang ganun, uh, mag-usap po kayo ano ba yung kung magandang gawin na para ito ay medyo madali at sa hapon naman medyo inantok na yung mga bata, baka pwedeng ito, parang ganun. So anyway, if you are not satisfied... With our answers, ano po, bosses, kung ano po yung standpoint niya dito para mas, uh, mag, mas uniform, mas malinawan po tayo. At saka in addition, baka mayroong subject area on that particular din na magkasagot sila, ay hindi naman nila matatapos ng two hours. Mali natin, baka less than two hours, di ba? Kaya flexible naman talaga sa Rohel. Mama Mini, my concern... Okay, for our last two questions. <laughs> Mamini, may concern lang po. Paano po kami makakagawa ng weekly home learning plan since wala pa po kami nare-receive na module sa ibang subjects po? Thank you po. If ever, wala pa po tayo yung modules. Meron po tayong mga modules po dyan na kino-quality assured yung ating uh, modules under the project mode uh, na ginawa po ng ating mga fellow teachers. At alam ko, isa rin po kayo doon, Ma'am Corazon, na uh, kasama po na nagsulat ng module. Okay, as a rejoinder din doon sa tanong ni Ma'am Cora, of course, it's the responsibility or the, the job of the student or, or head teacher ng school. If, for example, wala pang module yung isang learning area, do we actually coordinate uh, sa amin dito sa APS as concerned or even sa LOR, meron naman na silang na, uh, meron na silang copy ng mga module. As we call it ng doon sa module ng central office, meron po tayo ng list of available and unavailable uh, modules na pinigyan ng central office. Pero pag wala po, I think meron tayong available na modules under project model. And I am pretty sure and I believe lahat po ng learning areas sa ating project model ni modules ay kompleto po ang quarter one. Okay po? Wala kayo, sorry. Hello po. Good afternoon. Hello po. Good afternoon. So, can I just borrow? 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 
Sir Roldan, doon ako yung mga Diyos kayo. Sir Roldan, doon ako yung mga Diyos kayo. Sir Roldan, doon ako yung mga Diyos kayo. Si Ma'am Edith, sa lorong mga sasalit. Okay, we welcome the presence of our CID chief for the caring portion and let it be us. Ah, okay. Parang napikita ko kung saan ang dito na nakapost na impression ko kagayin na na Magdoria ni Magdoria. Yung wala pa pong audio. Yung wala pa pong audio. Okay. Wala pang modules. Ano ba ng modules? Wala pa ng ulit? Sige. Ano ba sa mga sabi ko ba yung mga nung nung nisa raw ang bautista? Pwede po ba ma-ang distribution AM? And retrieval PM all modules on the same day. Example, Monday AM at mga day PM retrieval. Ideally po, ang ating module ay good for a week. So, for a week siya, kaya nga po, kailangan po sana ibigay ng... Monday, it's our own, not really uh, retrieving the same material on the same day. Uh, as I have mentioned in my lecture a while back, we should give ample time for the learners to answer the module. And may I also take this opportunity na doon po sa mga gustong mag try out. Mayroon pong division memo na na-release na bawal po mag-report at mga teachers sa school. Kasi, pangalawa po, mayroon pong mga teachers and school heads na nag-request ng mojo. Alam niyo po, uh, I'm very sorry to inform you po, na hindi po namin talaga pa pwedeng ibigay yung mga modules na nandito sa atin at gamitin sa tryout. Uh, una po, kasi po, uh, If we are going to give the module now, for example, Aralim Palipunan, Grade 1, Quarter 1, Week 1, ating po nang ulit ang i-distribute mo. Ano na lang po ang sasabihin ng mga guro at ng mga bata sa atin at mga mga guro? Definitely, ang sasabihin po sa atin ay tapos na namin yan. That's why, napagkasundoon po, and po ng top management and when we speak of top management it is composed of the superintendent assistant, the chief na nakapag-meeting po kami regarding the tryout na when you do tryout you play strategy to the tryout but not really being physically present in the school so for example, kung may mga GCs po tayo at pwede po tayo magbigay ng modules na through chat, messenger at anong anong material ang pwede nating gamitin since we do not give the we do not give the modules or when you can make use of any material in your school for your tryout so very clearly in my lecture I went back but pag sinabi po module it does not exist na nang free so pwede nyo po gamitin actually po yung mga DINs natin, i-print out yun lang po yung digitize, yung mga nagawa na po natin in the previous year. What we are after for is we will ask the parents and the students to have a feel paano ba talaga ang pag-conduct ano, pag ng class that comes October 5. It's not really about the use of our module in the DO. So sana po maintindihan po natin mga kapatid that be in the schedules that we have developed. Because if we do that, then the parents may eventually question us na ito na po yung na-try out at tapos na mo ng mga anak namin. So, when we beg for your indulgence, but we would like to tell you, friends, na gamitin na lang po yung mga available resources before the school for the try-out. Again, what we are after for is the experience
experience of the learners as well as the learning facilitators, the parents, on how we carry out the learning process. So, so regarding distribution and retrieval, uh, I'm very sorry. Kung pwede po sana ay uh, i-practice po natin yung tama. Weekly po ang module, so ideally we distribute on Monday and retrieve the materials on Friday. Uh, it does not require physical presence of teachers because what you need to do is just to display boxes in your schools, label the boxes, grade one, section, and advisor, and parents will just drop the answer. Regarding it will come in due time. Pero hindi pa po natin pwede ipamigay sa kanya. Okay, thank you po. Our next question from Zaza. Okay, uh, paano po yung module para sa October 5? Yes, we are now in the process of preparing. Uh, kaya nga po, nang, mayroon po kami announcement sa CID asking for for, for uh, from the schools na magbigay po kayo ng boxes dito because we are starting to put modules in your boxes in the grade one, grade four, before October 5, we can assure you by September, the modules are in your hands. Para po ready po kayo sa October. That's the answer for your question, Ms. Layakan Sasa. Thank you. Meron pa po? Paano po sa senior high school, nangayin lang po ang subjects? Paano ikakasya ng nangayin subjects sa isang week dahil aabot na po ang last subject sa hapon ng Friday. Well, I we have already, we have already says, napag-usapan na po namin yan, and your PSDSS uh, code, so specifically for junior high school, ang PSDS ninyo si Ma'am Gemma, she will give you technical assistance kung paano po gagawin yung class program. So, and then, we have a depth and order for regarding that, so, I cannot give you a specific example right now, but Peter, I will force your uh, your question and I will give you a sample program to your PSP. Thank you. In as much as we would like to accommodate all your questions, we have to add this. So, Terry, I'm going to go to the next one. So, Terry, I'm going to go to the next one. FD. So, FD is also the power to move around. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. Yes, anyway, we would like, before we end this activity, we would like to encourage everyone to please do the evolution. Look at the look down on the screen. The online evaluation link is https colon slash findurl.com slash Please do this evaluation. What is So your uh attendance. Plus the certificate. And including your certificate. It will be the basis of your attendance as well as your certificate. So please copy or screenshot the ev online evaluation link seen under the screen. Uh, that or that is https colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash webinar dash blbm. Again, go.
<laughs> Hello. My apology, nakamit daw po ako. So, i- ulitin ko lang po ulit. One, ang mga reminders natin for to- bago tayo mag-end. I-post nyo po ng i-post ang inyong mga questions. Uh, very happy po sila pag marami po tayong mga questions na nakapost sa ating comments. They will get back to you for their, for their answers. Second po, don't forget to uh, access the online evaluation link that is https colon double slash tinyurl.com slash webinar dash dldm this will be the basis for your attendance as well as the certificate distribution okay don't forget another please subscribe to our official youtube channel sdoscp tv ulitin ko lang po ulit one i-post nyo po lahat ng ating mga inquiries, ng ating mga questions. Very happy po sila pag nag-post kayo ng mga questions nyo. Second, don't forget, or I mean, access now po. Access our online evaluation link. That is http s colon double slash tinyurl.com slash webinar dash dldm and please sus- sub- subscribe to our official YouTube channel, SDOSCCP TV. Okay, this is our technical team for this webinar, assisting you all, serving you all with all the love, with all the effort, with all much great uh, uh, thank you to everyone. I am Gail Eagle Van, your host for this webinar. Yeah. Sir, this is Martin Eden Po. Sir, next, sir. Welcome here. Welcome here. And sir, sir. Sir, Jack. Thank you. Jack. Thank you. Jack. This is uh, this is your technical team for this webinar. Uh, in behalf of us, on behalf of all the SDO officials and SDO family, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. Okay? Congratulations po hindi lang po sa inyo na sumubay-bay sa that long hours ko. So, so maraming 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 salamat po. Again, we want to end subscribe to our official YouTube channel as the OSCCP. Don't forget to access our online evaluation link with a flash on the screen, https colon slash tinyurl.com slash webinar dash dldm and of course, yung mga questions nyo po. Sobrang happy po sila na maraming marami po silang questions na kailangan nilang sagutin. Again, this is your technical team. Thank you so much and Happy weekend. Bye. Stay safe. God bless. Bye. Okay. And I am. Na tayo. Na Sa YouTube na kalagpatan. Okay, off na don. <laughs>